Oh. After hearing Luo Xian's words, Feng Gu couldn't help but have a touch of surprise under his eyes, and he turned his head to glance at the cabin door that had been closed by Anilu again, and was startled. Could it be that Emperor Tong's strength is not simple? But even himself, who had had a lot of contact with Emperor Tong, didn't notice it. Although he was a little surprised by what Luo Xian said, Bang Wu, who had already forcibly signed a domineering contract by the system, unconditionally trusted what Luo Xian said. After Luo Xian finished speaking, he didn't say much and turned around and stood aside. It's just that his eyes show a hint of doubt from time to time, and it is obvious that how much strength and whole cards Emperor Tong still has, which makes Bungu a little curious. There's a new friend. Just as Bangu was guessing in his heart how strong Luo Xian said that the Tong Emperor really was, Luo Xian, who was standing on the side, suddenly interrupted his musings. New friends? Bangu subconsciously raised his head and followed Luo Xian's gaze into the distance. After hearing Luo Xian's words, everyone on the ship also stopped what they were doing and followed Luo Xian's gaze into the distance. Who the hell is coming, who can be called a friend by his own captain? It's definitely not easy to come. As far as everyone on the boat could see, on the blue, calm sea. A fleet of navy fleets with striking blue seagull motifs printed on their white sails are majestically heading towards them. Solemn and solemn. Each one is like a hideous war beast, exuding the breath of iron and blood, declaring the justice of the navy to all the people on the sea. Naval battleships? Who will it be? At the same time that the corners of Luo Xian's mouth grinned, he couldn't help but have a trace of curiosity in his heart. Opposite side. On the deck of the naval battleship, a man in a rose-red straight suit with a gloomy face was the red dog who had just left the advancing city. At this time, he exuded a violent aura, like a powder keg, and only needed a fuse to completely detonate it. Behind him, even the naval soldiers who had been standing on the deck receiving harsh training seemed to be affected at this time, and one by one, they were desperately squeezing every trace of their body's hidden power in the deepest part of their body. But even so, in such a tired state, each of them still has a faint fear hidden under their eyes. The entire naval fleet was up and down, and there was an aura of tension. The existence of all this is the man standing on the ship in the middle of this naval fleet the Red Dog. Obviously, the news that Luo Xian and the others forcibly broke into the city, and took Anilu away from it had reached the ears of the Red Dog. When he learned that he had just left the advancing city and was attacked by someone, Akainu almost didn't burn the naval battleship under his feet. This is no longer provoking the navy, this is wanting to ride on the head of the navy and ah! How can this be called how can a red dog endure? He was preparing to go to other places to carry out the mission, without the slightest hesitation, and immediately ordered his subordinates to return the same way. Your Excellency General! There is a ship ahead. There is no pirate flag on the other party's ship, but the group on the ship seems to be Luo Xian's group that you said before forcibly broke into the city. Just when Akainu had also just spotted the ship in the distance, a naval non-commissioned officer with the rank of vice admiral on his shoulder walked up to him quickly, saluted him with extremely clean movements, and hurriedly said. This person, like the red dog believes in absolute justice and is the adjutant of the red dog. Luo Xian The red dog suddenly woke up like a beast from sleep, and his eyes bloomed with a fine light. The temperament of the whole body changed greatly in an instant, becoming extremely sharp and cold. Syllable After casually taking the monoculars handed over by the adjutant, Akainu immediately put his eyes on it and looked at it carefully. Sure enough, it's him. When he saw clearly the ship in the distance, standing on the deck facing the youth in their direction, Chi Inu's eyes narrowed, and he ordered the adjutant beside him in a low tone. Catch up with them. Yes. After the adjutant hurriedly straightened up and saluted, he quickly turned around and looked at the soldiers behind him who were holding on to various posts and shouted. Catch up with that ship in front. Yes. Under the roar of the navy. Led by the largest naval warship in the middle of the Red Dog, the speed of the ship suddenly increased, 
increasing by as much as 3%, and the fleets on the left and right wings kept up with each other all the time. Like a sharp arrow, the naval fleet rode the wind and waves, fiercely piercing the past in the direction where Luo Xian was. The Red Dog, who had already put down the binoculars in his hand, stood at the bow of the ship, standing against the wind, and he was originally a little upset, and he didn't care much about Luo Xian's ship. I never expected that it would be better to meet than to meet by chance. He hadn't had time to find this group of Luo Xian and his gang who were bold, extremely vicious and dared to break into the world's largest prison in the city. These people will automatically come to the door. Luo Xian. The red dog's gaze looked far away, his voice was low, and he muttered to himself, as if he was sighing about something. It's really troublesome. Looking at the fleet group in the distance that was increasing its horsepower and quickly approaching the ships of himself and others, Luo Xian couldn't help frowning. It seems that these people are coming at them. Has something been discovered? I thought that I had avoided the navy, but I didn't expect to meet it here, are these navy's dogs? The nose is also too smart. But Luo Xian never expected that sometimes, things are so coincidental. One wants to go to Shambord Island, and the other wants to go to Advance City. But to advance the city, you need to pass through the Gate of Justice. By mistake, they collided head-on like this. Brother Xian, what should I do? Tornado glanced at the naval battleship group of Qianyu and the others not far away, and then turned his head to look at Luo Xian and asked. Go. Luo Xian said without hesitation. This is not nonsense, of course you have to go, fighting is very physically demanding. He is too lazy to grind with the navy gang here. There is a time for a while, isn't it good to sleep for beauty, besides, the Shambord Islands are still waiting to visit by themselves. How can I have time to play games with these big lords of the navy? After receiving Luo Xian's orders, the muscles of the whole body of the tornado tightened violently. Swish. In an instant, with the enhancement of his superpower, the ship under Luo Xian's feet seemed to have drunk chicken blood, and the speed of the ship soared again, like a bullet out of the chamber, shooting towards the distance. Hey! After the red dog on the opposite side saw that Luo Xian and the others were getting farther and farther away from him, and the speed of the ship was several times faster than before, his expression sank, and his face became ugly. Why is the speed of the other party's ship so fast, you must know that what they are stepping on is the latest naval warship. In terms of speed, their navy has never been afraid of anyone. Even one piece, Roger's ship is just equal to their speed. This, this, I don't know. Seeing this, the adjutant's eyes widened sharply, and after hearing the other party's voice, a layer of fine beads of sweat suddenly oozed from his forehead and he replied in a worried tone. Chase. Like the roar of a beast, the red dog squeezed a word out of his throat, and his tone was full of anger. I feel like I've been humiliated. He never expected Luo Xian to be so in retreat without a fight. It's just not a routine. A pirate with a bounty of one billion, actually cowardly fighting? And the son of the devil, isn't it shameful, it's simple, it seems to be a vain name. Marin Fander, the headquarters of the Navy, among the offices of the Marshal. What, didn't catch it? What, half of the prisoners in the sixth-story prison are all dead? What, the director of the Advance City Prison, Magellan is dying? What, the city is leaking and about to collapse? Burst, then burst, layer by layer, one sound higher than the other. At this time, the office of the admiral was like a music classroom, and it made a tenor that made musicians unbelievable. The busy warring states was taking advantage of the little time he had taken out of the afternoon to eat lunch, and after suddenly receiving the call from the yellow ape, his heart was like jumping on the sea of fire in the knife mountain. Snap! As soon as his hand loosened, the chopsticks in his hand fell directly to the ground, and an unhealthy flush instantly appeared on the whole person's face. Advanced City, it is a top-notch prison with all kinds of facilities and personnel in the entire world. 
it is even comparable to the defense force of the Navy headquarters. Now, someone actually told him that the city was forcibly broken into by a group of pirates, the top was destroyed, and even the entire prison was about to be destroyed. Luo Xian, Uncle N. After a national curse erupted from the mouth of the warring states, his entire skin began to bloom with a faint golden light, and then his body began to expand rapidly. Thundered. Suddenly, the entire naval headquarters shook wildly. In another office in the same building as Sengoku, an old woman with grey hair and a wrinkled face put the pen in her hand on the document being corrected after hearing the movement, and closed the folder with her hand. Bang! Looking at the dust falling from the roof on the folder, the old woman frowned slightly. She quickly stood up and walked briskly out of the room, still whispering in her mouth. What's the matter, this voice should be Sengoku, why did he make such a big fire? The other side. Seeing that Luo Xian and the other's ship was about to disappear from his sight, the red dog standing at the bow of the ship had a livid face, staring at the direction where the other party's ship left without saying a word. Like the warring states in Marin Fando, even the red dog was angry by Luo Xian and couldn't help but transform. All over the body exudes a terrifying high temperature, bubbling with wisps of white gas. Unexpectedly, the water vapor suspended in the air was evaporated. Not only that, but what is even more terrifying is that even the surrounding space seems to have been burned and distorted. On the battleship, the navy who was originally standing not far behind him all subconsciously moved back a few steps at this moment, under the serious expression, their eyes hid an imperceptible fear, and one by one they all stared closely at the red dog standing motionless in the front. They knew that General Akainu was angry, and he was extremely angry. Shame, shame. As a naval admiral, he actually watched the group of pirates who had just forcibly entered the city and was about to run away under his nose. Simple, a shame to throw home. Just when everyone thought that Luo Xian and they were about to escape. Suddenly, something happened. Not far from the front of Luo Xian and the other ships, another row of naval warships emerged from the distant coastline, and also began to quickly approach Luo Xian and the others. The battleships are like rulers measured, and the distance between each ship is almost the same. If Luo Xian and them still maintain such speed, they would definitely end up with a ship wrecked and killed. Brother Su. Seeing this, the dragon scroll couldn't help but turn his head sideways to look at Luo Xian, who was also watching this group of uninvited guests in the distance, and said with an inquiring tone. Stop it. After the words of the tornado reached Luo Xian's ears, his expression did not change at all, and his voice was extremely flat. Only those clear black eyes are pregnant with emotions that people can't understand. After hearing Luo Xian's words, the dragon scroll was stunned at first, as if he didn't understand Luo Xian's decision, obviously he could leave from the sky, why stop? But for Luo Xian's absolute obedience, she didn't think much about it, and released her right fist that was clenched together without hesitation. Crash! A sound of breaking water sounded. After losing the blessing of the tornado's superpower, the hull instantly lost its support and fell back to the sea. In the end, without any more power, Luo Xian and their ship, which had already collected the sails, slowly, finally stopped. King, who was sitting on the side reading the magazine, noticed the movement for the first time, quickly closed the magazine in his hand, raised his head, and saw the row of ships that were not far in front of them, leaving a deep impression on him. Again a naval battleship group? Finally, the calm king could no longer sit still, he hurriedly got up from the chair, and walked quickly to Luo Xian's side. Sir, do you want it? He stretched out his finger and pointed to the sky and motioned to Luo Xian. No need. Luo Xian's voice was flat and a little weird. Luo Xian understood what king meant and what he wanted was for the tornado to hold the ship with his mind power again and leave from the sky. However, he did not want to. He doesn't want to be a mouse running around by a cat. With his hands behind his back, Luo Xian stood facing the wind, his eyes shining brightly under the sunlight, 
making it impossible to see what he was thinking now. Only his clenched fists could see that this time, He Luo Xian did not escape. Since he dared to break into the city, He Luo Xian had already thought about such a result. Since he can't dodge, then he is not a person who is afraid of things. Directly ahead. The yellow ape, who had just finished reporting the situation with the warring states, after hearing the noise coming from the other side of the phone worm, he decisively and wittily hung up the phone worm in his hand. He doesn't want to be a punching bag for the warring states, and at this juncture, it's better to go up with 36 plans. Moreover, after discovering that Luo Xian and the others had already left Tuajing City in advance, the yellow ape who was talking to the warring states decisively led his men to evacuate there. Since the people have already run away, only a bunch of mess remains, who wants to clean up who cleans up, anyway, he doesn't want to. Just when he just hung up the phone and was about to go back to his base camp, he didn't expect to meet Luo Xian here. I have to say that Luo Xian's luck today is a bit back. Maybe it's the reason why I just came out of prison and didn't have time to take a bath and get rid of my bad spirits. There is a yellow ape in front and a red dog in the back and without each other's knowledge, the supreme combat power of the two navies actually blocked him here. If Luo Xian knew that all this was a coincidence, he might vomit blood. After all, when summoning King, the system rewarded him with a leaky buff, was it used on this? Oh, Luo Xian, what a coincidence! The yellow ape sitting on the chair looked at Luo Xian from afar, casually took the phone worm in his hand into his arms and stood up from the rattan chair with a little distress. Just now, I was glad that I didn't take over the mess in advance city, but I didn't expect Luo Xian to appear here, and it was still right in front of their fleet. What's the matter, he just wants to take a break, how can there be so much trouble? General Yellow Ape, what should I do? Seeing this, the naval non-commissioned officer standing on the side saluted the Yellow Ape and hurriedly asked. Ah there's really no way. Attack. The yellow ape's expression was a little lazy, and he ordered casually. There is no way, so many people are watching, you can't do nothing, you have to pretend. If he let that old man of the warring states know that he met Luo Xian head on without any movement, then he would not be able to trap himself. That's an old yin. Thinking about the means of the warring states, the yellow ape felt a little hairy in his heart. Rear. Standing on the deck, the red dog who did not leave half a step saw that Luo Xian and the other's ship was about to disappear, and his heart was unwilling. Just when he was about to give up, he suddenly found Luo Xian in the distance, and the ship seemed to slowly become clear again. Well, what's going on? Don't. General Akainu, that ship seems to have stopped. Just when the red dog was a little uncertain, the adjutant next to him looked into the distance with a telescope in his hand, and said in a slightly hesitant tone. Really? After hearing the voice of his subordinates, he finally determined what was in his heart. Luo Xian's ship stopped. What that means, goes without saying. Full speed ahead. Seeing this, the red dog waved his big hand, and his tone was mixed with a few hints of imperceptible excitement. Yes. After hearing the order of the Red Dog, all the naval soldiers on the warship performed their duties and became even harder. At the same time, directly in front of Luo Xian's ship, the fleet to which the Yellow Ape belonged on the other side finally began to get busy. Fire! After the non-commissioned officer of the Navy gave an order. Bang bang bang! When he boarded, the group of naval warships belonging to the Yellow Ape, who was already close to Luo Xian and the other ships, seemed to have been arranged in advance, and in the shortest possible time, they neatly turned their ships sideways. The cannon ports on each hull were all aimed at Luo Xian and the other ships, emitting a series of roaring sounds. Opposite side. Seeing this, Luo Xian, who was standing in place, his expression finally changed. Phew. After a soft breath in his mouth, the corners of his mouth began to slowly rise, revealing a grim smile. Navy, it's really hard work for me. 
looking at the dense and countless black bombs in the sky, like an enraged bee swarm, shooting fiercely towards him, Luo Xian did not make the slightest movement, just watched quietly, like an outsider. This is not his home turf, he needs to wait. When the tornado, which had been prepared on the side, had just raised his little hand to intercept the cannonballs in the sky, suddenly, the door of the cabin was pushed open. Let me come. A slightly immature voice said in an extremely calm tone. The next moment, Emperor Tong's petite figure suddenly appeared in front of everyone's eyes and came to the deck. Carrying his familiar little school bag, he ran out again, followed by the nearly three-meter-tall Analu, who didn't say a word. Protective Umbrella Yikes! Emperor Tong casually put a little on the backpack behind his back, and everyone's eyes flickered, and a black shadow suddenly catapulted out of his backpack and flew out into the sky. Well, what is that? Just when everyone was a little puzzled by Emperor Tong's actions. Suddenly. As if the whole hull of the ship was wrapped in something, everyone felt that the salty sea breeze blowing on their cheeks seemed to be filtered out by something in an instant, and they all disappeared. At this moment, they saw that the bomb fired from the opposite side was less than 100 meters away from their hull. Just when Dragon Scroll thought that Emperor Tong's means were too late to use, she wanted to strike personally. Boom, boom. With a continuous burst, one after another roar sounded. Suddenly, the bomb exploded. Just a meter away from the hull. Like brilliant fireworks, it surrounded Luo Xian and their entire ship. Boom, boom. The surrounding sea water suffered, and after being hit by this violent vibration and falling shells, it set off waves hundreds of feet high. At this time, Luo Xian and their ships were like a flat boat that was in a stormy wind and rain, and on this stormy sea, a flat boat survived in the midst of countless waves, crumbling. Opposite side. Seeing this, the naval soldiers on the fleet field to which the yellow ape belonged all put down their hearts. They still heard about Luo Xian's notoriety, but they didn't expect that when they saw it today, it really disappointed them. Originally, I thought how powerful this group of demons under Luo Xian, the demon lord, was under him. Unexpectedly, these people could not even stop a bomb. It's really a vain name. At the rear. Akainu and the others who were quickly approaching the position of Luo Xian and the others belonged to the naval battleship. The red dog standing at the bow of the ship watched Luo Xian's ship become clearer and clearer in his field of vision, and when the distance became closer and closer, his eyes couldn't help but appear a touch of heat. Boom, boom. At this moment, suddenly, a continuous explosion sound came from Luo Xian's direction, reaching the hands of everyone on the red dog fleet. What's wrong? Everyone had question marks drawn in their hearts, and subconsciously raised their heads to look into the distance. What's going on? Luo Xian encountered an attack from other pirates. After the red dog looked at the slightly dazzling flame flowers that burst out from Luo Xian's boat, he subconsciously stood beside him, and the telescope in the adjutant's hand took it. Hey! Suddenly, the red dog suddenly let out a cry of surprise. Crossing Luo Xian and the other ships, on the other side, he found that there was also a group of naval warships that stopped Luo Xian's ships. That was... Swish! Just when the red dog was a little suspicious, suddenly, a golden light suddenly appeared in the red dog's line of sight, very dazzling, making his eyes sour, very uncomfortable. Yellow Ape After seeing the scene just now, the red dog couldn't help but blurt out. His expression was also surprised. Under the arrangement of the warring states, these two admirals who originally ran over because of Luo Xian once again got together by mistake. Although the justice he and the yellow ape believe in are different, but as admirals, they will not become enemies, at most, they will look like gods. It is time to cooperate, or to continue to cooperate. After nearly ten minutes of shelling, the explosions finally stopped. In the eyes of all navies, Luo Xian and the other ships were like dozens of smoke bombs schemed by someone, and their ships were tightly surrounded by the smoke and ash caused by the bomb explosion. 
it is impossible to see what the situation inside is like. Although he was very sure in his heart that Luo Xian and they should have crashed their ships and died at this time, they had already died. However, these curious navies still stretched their necks one by one, looking towards the thick, airtight layer of smoke grey smoke floating on the sea. Their expressions were extremely curious. Die. It should be, maybe there may not even be slag left. With so many shells hitting it, you must be dead. Listening to the speculation of his navies, the yellow ape stood in place and did not speak, but once again ordered his navy to fire three rounds of shells in a row. Although he usually likes to mess around with his salary, Luo Xian is not an ordinary person, even the yellow ape has to do his part, after all, no matter what the reason, he is still a navy after all. At this time, the smoke screen of the shell had already covered half a kilometer of the sea where Luo Xian was before and the fog made it unclear what was happening inside. Just when the yellow ape wanted to wait for the smoke screen to disperse, and then order his subordinates to drive the fleet to rush up, the red dog on the other side finally arrived over, not far from Luo Xian's position. As if they had said in advance, the naval fleets on both sides changed their formation and turned into an arc, surrounding the smoke screen in the middle, and the position of Luo Xian and the others in the middle. Yo. The red dog is also coming. Looking at the red dog standing on the opposite boat, the yellow ape was a little surprised. Just as he was about to say hello, suddenly, there was a new movement in the location where Luo Xian and the others were before. The smoke screen began to roll violently. Instantly attracted everyone's attention. No, so, none of them are dead. Seeing this, all the navies raised their heads one after another with white eyes staring closely at the short distance. Only the two generals, Yellow Ape and Red Dog, did not have the slightest surprise, and watched everything that happened in the field with extremely indifferent expressions. Those who have the courage to break into the world's largest prison are not so simple to defeat. Bang! Suddenly, the smoke screen that shrouded Luo Xian and the others in it flowed wildly, as if it had reached the extreme, and instantly exploded revealing the scene. What? Impossible. How so? Suddenly, a series of exclamations suddenly sounded around Luo Xian and the others. All the navies, including the fleet of the Red Dog who rushed behind, combined with the roar just now and the friendly troops in front, also understood that it was not the pirates who attacked Luo Xian before, but the naval fleet led by the General Yellow Ape. But it is precisely because of this that their hearts are flooded, the Navy's bombs are not those shoddy and shoddy products in the hands of pirates. One is stronger than six. It is also wrapped with iron sheets, which makes the power go to the next level. However, not only Luo Xian and their people were not harmed, but even the boat under their feet was also unscathed. It seems that the Marshal of the Warring States deserves to be called a wise general. This demon lord, Luo Xian cannot be underestimated. For a while, all the navies looked at Luo Xian and the others in the middle of the sea, and their expressions couldn't help but become solemn. Standing on the boat, Luo Xian raised his eyes and looked around at the surrounding scene, and after looking at the navy around him and the others, the corners of his mouth showed a hint of playfulness. What a big scene, issuing a demon slaughter order may not necessarily have such a big battle, it seems that I am really popular. At the same time, after the smoke screen dispersed, everyone on the ship also saw everything around them clearly for the first time. Because he had not positively felt the combat power of the Navy, Emperor Tong's performance was quite normal, but his expression was a little solemn. Only Analu, who had seen the strength of the Navy, and King, who had no strength, saw such a grand scene, and they couldn't help but be shocked and their faces instantly turned pale. There are almost hundreds of naval warships here, besieging them here. In this case, they may be finished. Could it be that I just came out of Advanced City and want to go back again? Anilu whispered sadly, at this time he was a little desperate in his heart. He hasn't learned how to defeat the Red Dog yet. Oh, that's awesome. Seeing this, the yellow ape standing in front raised his eyebrows, 
and said in an impulsive tone that still made people want to him. His expression was not the slightest surprise, obviously, there was a scene about this scene, the yellow ape had expected it in advance. The other side. Not only the yellow ape, but also the red dog also noticed the situation on Luo Xian's ship for the first time. His eyes narrowed slightly, and a sharp edge suddenly burst out from them, and his tone contained killing intent. Without unnecessary nonsense, he raised his head and glanced at the yellow ape standing on the opposite side, and waved his hand to the navy behind him without looking back. Forward, engage the battle. The action is extremely crisp, without the slightest drag. Opposite side. After the yellow ape noticed the red dog's movements, he seemed to understand the other party's thoughts in an instant, and his expression instantly became helpless. Ah, the red dog is going crazy again, I don't know if this will cause heavy damage to his soldiers. He couldn't help but complain. However, even so, he still ordered his subordinates. There is no way, since the red dog has already made a decision, he must cooperate, if not, then they will lose more. Crash. The sound of water sounded, and the battleships from the navy started again. Under the push of the navy again and again, the one-kilometer encirclement began to shrink rapidly. Time flies by, in the blink of an eye. Bang bang! With a series of collisions, all the naval warships were connected, and a special island was spliced together on this endless sea. It's just that among this all-in-one naval warships, in the middle, Luo Xian's ship looks a little out of place. It's over, this time there is really no way to go to heaven, there is no door to enter the earth, and death is certain. After Anilu saw such a scene, even the last glimmer of hope in his heart disappeared, and the whole person became desperate. On the other hand, Luo Xian, who had been standing in place without moving the slightest, still maintained his expression indifferent, even if he fell into such a dangerous situation, he could handle it calmly. It's just that only the fierceness that inadvertently shows at the corner of his mouth can make people see that he is a little unhappy in his heart at this time. Tread. At this moment, a sound of footsteps suddenly sounded in the ears of everyone on the ship. At this time, King, who was like a frightened bird, suddenly raised his head and looked at this three-meter-old man from a distance, and his heart couldn't help but beat with the footsteps of the other party. This feeling of suffocation made him extremely uncomfortable, and on both sides of his pale cheeks, two extremely unhealthy-looking flushes appeared. But even so, his pace still did not shrink by half a minute, although his eyes were already terrified to the extreme. However, like the others who were summoned by Luo Xian from the world of One Punch Man, King's trust in Luo Xian was beyond doubt. Even, he subconsciously raised his foot and took a step forward, looking at this look, obviously wanting to block the fatal blow in place of Luo Xian at a critical moment. After this move was noticed by Luo Xian, who was standing in place, his heart couldn't help but warm, and a smile couldn't help but appear on his face. In any case, even if King no longer has the strength to be able to do this, what else does he want? Opposite side. After also perceiving King's movements, the red dog who was walking towards the ship where Luo Xian was couldn't help but glance at him, and then a coldness bloomed in his eyes. Oh, very courageous. However, your courage is used in the wrong place. Luo Xian, don't underestimate the justice of the navy. Qianyu once again shifted his gaze to Luo Xian next to King, and his tone was extremely low. Bang! His arms began to expand rapidly, melting, and in the blink of an eye, those flesh and blood hands turned into lava arms. The whole person was like a hell messenger who had just crawled out of the magma, wantonly showing his fangs to Luo Xian. Tick tock, croak. Sticky magma dripped down his arm onto the deck instantly burning the wooden deck out of big holes. Canine Red Lotus. He raised his arm sharply and swung it towards Luo Xian. Whoops. The viscous magma began to flow rapidly, instantly lengthening and thickening, and the fist turned into a dog's head, spanning a distance of tens of meters towards Luo Xian fiercely biting over. Yikes. 
the intense heat actually burned through the air. The yellow ape on the other side, after seeing the red dog make a move, immediately stopped his steps before he had time to take and stood by and watched quietly. Since the red dog has already made a move, he will not be needed for the time being. For the yellow ape, it is better to save trouble than anything. Aboard. Feeling the oncoming attack of the red dog, Luo Xian's eyes couldn't help but flash a trace of fierceness. I can't let you destroy my ship. After he muttered, everyone only felt their eyes brighten. Bang! Sword, unsheathed. Like a silver dragon going to sea, the afterimage sword was once again held in Luo Xian's hand. Feeling the trembling of the tip of the sword, Luo Xian's mind was faint, as if he understood something, and it seemed that he didn't understand anything. What's going on? Broke through? This time, it was rare for the system to come out and answer Luo Xian's question. Ding, this is the ability extracted by the host from the S-class hero, Tong Di, the strongest brain. Because the brain area is more complex, the transformation of the system is a little slower, and now the first step has just begun. Oh? After Luo Xian heard this, he couldn't help but be surprised, he also thought that this time he would extract a useless ghost ability to pick up leaky buffs like King did before. Unexpectedly, this time the ability turned out to be so powerful. Although it came a little slowly. But. Suddenly, Luo Xian's clear eyes burst out with a touch of essence. He looked up at the red dog in the distance, and his heart became faintly calm, and the killing aura he had before was briefly calmed down. It's just right now, just in time to test the water with you. As soon as Luo Xian's words fell, his right hand had already been raised, and with the afterimage sword he was holding in his palm, he drew an inexplicable trajectory in the air. This is... Solon who had been waiting on the side, felt this inexplicable sword intent emanating from Luo Xian's body, and goosebumps rose all over his body. His eyes flashed with a touch of suppressed excitement, and he clenched his teeth tightly, not allowing himself to make a little sound, for fear of disturbing Luo Xian. Sensing Solon's excitement on the side, Luo Xian smiled at the corner of his mouth, still looked at the red dog on the opposite side without squinting, and said lightly, Solon, remember, this is the second realm of my comprehension, with the sword in my heart. Swish. As soon as his voice fell, it was like a fairy sword descending to the world, the wind and clouds changed color, and this heaven and earth turned into a sword realm without any vitality. There are amazing murderous intentions everywhere, which makes the skin of those who are in it cold. The creatures within a radius of several kilometers, as if they had been frightened by something, whined one after another, and quickly turned their heads and fled into the distance. One by one, they panicked. At this moment, all kinds of different species of fish are mixed together, not caring at all whether it is its own food or its own natural enemies swimming past it. And what caused all this was nothing more than a few meters wide white sword chi that had just burst out from the tip of Luo Xian's sword. This power. It's terrible. Feeling the lingering emanating from Luo Xian's ship. The two supreme generals of the navy shrank their pupils sharply, and quickly raised their heads to look at Luo Xian, who was standing alone on the ship, and their faces couldn't help but show a rare solemnity. Even at such a distance, they could still feel the stinging sensation of cutting coming from their cheeks. This kind of power can be imagined. Stepping on the boat. After hearing Luo Xian's instructions, Solon widened his eyes the whole time, paying attention to Luo Xian's every subtle movement. Trying to learn something from it that would work for him. This feeling is like honey falling into the hands of a bear, greedily sucking every drop of sweetness from it. Burst. With a faint undetectable sound sounded. Finally, the sword chi released by Luo Xian slashed at the magma dog beast ejected by the red dog. In an instant, like a knife cutting tofu, Luo Xian's sword qi easily slashed through the middle and split into two halves. Moreover, the remaining strength continued to slash towards the red dog on the opposite side without any loss. The attack of the red dog became powerless, and the fierce dog beast turned into a cloud of magma when it landed, 
and landed on the deck of the ship where the red dog was. A roaring flame was lit, and bursts of smoke were emitted. Oh, it looks like the red dog is in trouble. Seeing this, the yellow ape on the other side picked the corner of his mouth and revealed a smug smile. Typical of the mentality of watching the excitement is not too big. Even now, the yellow ape still believes that in front of the two admirals, Luo Xian still can't escape their palms. Under such a favorable situation, he was still happy to see the red dog suffer losses. At the same time, the sword Qi inspired by that Luo Xian finally crossed the space and descended in front of the red dog. Feeling the sharpness of the sword Qi, Qi Yanyu's eyes narrowed, and a fierce color appeared in his eyes. Block me! Zhang! Under the low roar of the red dog, his hand, which had turned into a lava arm, once again surged with a different kind of breath. In an instant, the arm that emitted a dark red light was dyed black again. Bang! The attacks of the two finally converged. A huge roar sounded in response. At this moment, the red dog's expression suddenly changed greatly, his whole face instantly became red, and the blue tendons on his forehead burst out. Click, click. His eyes widened, and the whole person involuntarily slipped backwards, and his tight feet left two deep marks on the solid wooden deck. Burst. When he boarded, after a mouthful of blood gushed out from the mouth of the red dog, the whole person seemed to become languishing in an instant. Bang! That sword mark actually bounced the red dog's arm abruptly, slammed into his chest, and shot him backwards. Bang! With a loud sound, the red dog's body continued to crash backwards without reducing its strength after breaking the mast behind him. Bang! Bang! After crashing through dozens of naval warships one after another, this stopped, and there was no movement. This series of actions seems to be a long time, but it is actually just a moment. So that all the navies present did not react. Obviously, one second, their military idol, the supreme combat power of the navy, was still standing there steadily, like a peerless martial god, and the next second it disappeared in place. Listening to the huge movement that sounded at this scene, all the navies were stunned in place with white eyes. Even the yellow ape also lost his concentration for a short time after seeing this scene, and even the sunglasses he had on the bridge of his nose slipped down, revealing his lewd eyes behind him. Red Dog Defeated With just one move? On this sea, thousands of people gathered together, and they strangely fell into a state of quiet out of the sound of the sea breeze blowing through the waves, and nothing else. Long. I don't know who was the first to react. I only heard someone shout a red dog general, and after that, everyone on the field was instantly awakened. One by one, with a terrified expression, they quickly ran towards the hole left by the impact of the red dog. General Akainu. Quickly save the red INU general. Where is it? Find it. For a while, the navy all fell into a panic. Call. The yellow ape, who was also awakened by the navy, exhaled softly, stretched out the sunglasses that were about to fall off from the new one, and then turned his gaze to the other side. After the shot, I don't know when he sat back on the chair, Luo Xian's body. He originally thought that he had paid enough attention to Luo Xian. But, unexpectedly, it's not just him. Even the Red Dog, and even the Marshal of the Warring States, underestimated this young man who did not frighten. Today's battle will be very difficult to fight. The Yellow Ape's face was extremely solemn, and even a fine layer of sweat appeared on his forehead without him caring. Luo Xian on board. Not only the Navy, but even Anilu, who had just been pushed out of the city by Luo Xian and them, instantly turned into a statue after seeing this scene and his eyes looked at the direction where the red dog disappeared. As a person who has fought with Akainu, he has the most say in this moment. He originally thought that this young captain, Luo Xian, could have the same strength as the other party. However, he never imagined that the red dog who had abused him thousands of times would be regarded by the navy as his biggest enemy. It turned out to be so vulnerable, 
so useless to be knocked down by Luo Xian's move? Thinking of this, Analo's eyes suddenly widened, a drop of bean-sized sweat slipped from his sideburns, a sea breeze blew through, and his entire back was cold. Involuntarily, he looked slightly sideways and glanced at Luo Xian, who was sitting on the chair drinking tea without anyone else, and couldn't help but feel a touch of happiness in his heart. Call. He slapped himself on the chest. Young and ignorant. It's so frivolous. It's not easy to live until now. Luo Xian. At this moment, an angry roar suddenly came from a distance, and the voice contained endless anger. Oh, not dead. Life is really big. After Luo Xian casually put the teacup in his hand into the same, he raised his head a little unexpectedly and looked into the distance. His forehead frowned slightly, as if he was a little dissatisfied with such a result. On the other hand, look at the navel side. After hearing the voice of the red dog, all of their expressions were excited. Even the yellow ape's expression was slightly relaxed. Obviously, Luo Xian brought him a lot of pressure. Rumble. At this moment, the pile of ruins that buried the red dog below suddenly spontaneously combusted. In the blink of an eye, the entire battleship turned into a sea of fire. Snap! Dull footsteps sounded, and a figure walked out from the depths of the sea of fire. Slowly, the figure began to become clear. Luo Xian, you are dead. After letting out another roar, the figure of the red dog finally appeared in front of everyone's eyes. In this roaring sea of fire, the entire body is a red dog composed of hot fiery red magma, like an abyss demon god. All over his body, there was not the slightest trace of blood, only a dry crack on his chest, a hideous wound, like a huge mouth wantonly showing his fangs to people. His expression was distorted, like an angry lion, his usually unfazed face, even a smile was very stiff, at this moment, it became extremely terrifying. Bang bang! The red dog walked across one naval battleship after another, his scarlet eyes kept staring at Luo Xian, and the whole person was like an enraged titan beast, madly crashing into the past. Worthy of being an admiral, encountering such a powerful attack is not a little nothing, it is simply too powerful. The representative of the highest combat power of the navy, Admiral Akainu. Anyone who dares to defy the justice of the navy will be burned by the wrath of Admiral Akainu. When all the naval soldiers saw the red dog who was alive, they were extremely excited. Seeing this, even the yellow ape on the side couldn't help but shake his head and said with a helpless expression. Ah, so urgent, it seems that it's time for me to play. Yikes! As soon as the words fell, the yellow ape's body turned into a bunch of light spots scattered and disappeared in place. There is no way, if he is alone, he is not sure that he will be able to leave Luo Xian behind. Oh! After noticing the movements of the two admirals, Luo Xian's eyebrows were raised, and his face was slightly surprised. These two people are going to play group picking. He originally thought that admirals like to single out. Luo Xian couldn't help but feel funny. This is strength. Even in the original work, he has almost never seen a scene where two generals join forces to deal with one person. In that case, Dragon Scroll, Bong Wu, you two play with them. Yes, sir. Got it, Brother Xian. After the two answered in unison, they turned around and left very crisply. In the sky. Suddenly, Countless golden points of light appeared, and quickly gathered together, forming a human shape. In the blink of an eye, he turned into a figure, which was the yellow ape that disappeared before. Standing with his feet in the air, he raised his arms and crossed them over his chest, his hands were pinched into orchids, and when he landed, it was like two meteors were pinched by him, and instantly bloomed with a dazzling yellow light. The yellow ape looked down at Luo Xian, who was still sitting peacefully in place below, his narrow eyes narrowed slightly, revealing an unhappy expression. It's really arrogant. Eight-foot Kyan Guyu. Yikes! The two golden flashes that he held in his hands burst into flames, and golden spots shot out from them, 
as if crossing space, wrapped in extremely powerful energy, and instantly appeared less than a hundred meters away from Luo Xian. Just when the yellow ape thought that his attack was effective, suddenly, a petite figure blocked the path of the attack. Well, that is. The yellow ape, who looked surprised, couldn't help frowning, and carefully looked down. Your opponent, it's me. Below, the tornado who received Luo Xian's order looked up at the yellow ape in the sky, and his white face was extremely solemn. Covered in green fluorescence, he suddenly raised his palm and stood in front of him from a distance. Oh, it's a little self-sufficient, when, Luo Xian's subordinates don't have anyone. After seeing the figure below, the yellow ape's face showed a trace of disdain. As an admiral, he still has his own arrogance. The other side. The red dog that has been rushing all the way towards Luo Xian, under the accumulation of time, the momentum of the whole person has reached the peak. Just when he was wrapped in an indomitable momentum and attacked Luo Xian. Suddenly. Out of thin air appeared on his right side, an upright man in the prime of life. Fuck off, trash fish. After seeing that the other party was a crew member of Luo Xian's ship, Chi Yu gritted his teeth, quickly raised his lava fist, and smashed it towards Bangu with a high temperature that was so hot that it could transpire air. Young man, it's not good to be too angry. Bangu drew a circle under his feet, his body was like a flexible fish, and a sideways body appeared directly in front of the red dog. After discovering that his attack was dodged, the red dog did not say a word, the killing intent in his eyes flashed, and he simply stopped attacking, and the strength under his feet increased a little. He wanted to use the inertia and high temperature of his body to directly burn this person who did not know the height of the sky and the earth directly to ashes. Knowing that he is a magma fruit, and daring to get so close, it is simply looking for death. Boom, boom. Bang bang. Sitting on the boat, Luo Xian looked at the performance of his two crew members calmly, and couldn't help nodding with satisfaction, did he pick up the teacup from the side and take a sip. Turning a blind eye to the navy that surrounded him, as if what was in front of him was not a battle between you and me, but a drama singing on a stage. Luo Xian looked at it with relish, and this look was almost a handful of melon seeds. On the other hand, the surrounding navies, looking at the two battlefields one by one, swallowed a mouthful of spit, and smashed their lips a few times. Originally thought that Luo Xian was powerful enough, and it only took one blow to repel his red dog general. At that time, when they saw this scene, they naively thought that it was caused by the carelessness of General Akainu. However, reality once again slapped them hard in the face. Not to mention the Captain Luo Xian, even the crew has the strength of the general level. This TMD is simply not doing business, you have such a strong strength to say ah, do something bad, you have to be a pirate. If you don't eat well, sleep badly, there's something wrong. This is not the most excessive, even more excessive is the little girl who fought against the yellow ape over there. How old is it, the yellow ape generals have fallen in front of her. This strength looks like a pervert than that old man over there. It's just too much. Ten minutes later. Just when all the navy looked at the neck a little stiff. Luo Xian was also a little impatient. He looked at the two battlefields that were still inextricable, and couldn't help but say out loud. Okay, Tornado, Bung Wu, you two come back. After hearing Luo Xian's words, the green light in the eyes of the tornado was instantly generous, and after repelling the yellow ape with a strong mental power, his figure turned and fluttered back to Luo Xian's side. On the other side, Bangu crossed his hands across his chest, and with the attack of the red dog, he flipped upside down and also retreated behind Luo Xian. After seeing that all the two generals under him had returned, Luo Xian looked up at the two admirals in the distance and chuckled. Admiral, is there only this level? In an instant, the faces of the yellow ape and the red dog sank, and their faces were much ugly. Okay, look at this, your mission is doomed to fail, get out of the way, I'm in a hurry. Luo Xian waved his hand indifferently and signaled. 
As soon as this sentence was finished, it was as if it was poured on a fire, which instantly angered the two admirals. After the yellow ape and the red dog looked at each other, they both seemed to see anger in each other's eyes. The two of them pushed a little harder under their feet, and their bodies disappeared in unison and shot towards Luo Xian. Seeing this, Bangu and Dragon Scroll, who were standing next to Luo Xian, subconsciously stretched out their feet and took a step forward, just when they were ready to move. Luo Xian stopped them in a loud voice, OK, let me come, solve it quickly, I'm still waiting to go to the Chambordi Islands to have a look. When the two heard this, after looking at each other, they all retreated. Carrying the sword casually, Luo Xian looked at the two admirals who were facing him, and the corners of his mouth showed a trace of coldness. It's really a shame. If you don't show a little strength, I really think I'm afraid of you. Gay. Suddenly, Luo Xian's right arm holding the sword instantly became muscular, and the green tendons burst out, and the hole swelled in a large circle. Broken, empty. His body twisted violently. Zhang. The afterimage sword suddenly let out a soft groan. An inexplicable momentum emanated from Luo Xian's body, and this momentum was full of dead silence, as if it had extinguished all life. Let the two people behind Luo Xian and Bangu instantly stand up, and a shuddering feeling was born. Swish! The next moment. In the horrified eyes of everyone, a white sword across the sky appeared. This is Luo Xian's second strike here, and compared to the first time, this time the power has increased by more than dozens of times. The sword light flashed away, and in a blink of an eye, it had already appeared in front of the two red dogs. In an instant, the brains of the two people were frantically tingling, and the picture from the hearing was frantically warning them. Not good. As if feeling the breath of death, the pupils of the two people shrank sharply, subconsciously wanting to dodge. There was no way. The yellow ape pushed a red dog for the first time, and then the whole person elementalized and disappeared in place. Burst. At the next moment when the yellow ape disappeared, the sword light flashed, and with the help of the yellow ape, although the red dog lying down on the ground did not worry about his life, he still did not completely escape this calamity. At the moment when the sword light swept over, a bright red flower bloomed in the air when it landed. Along with it, a broken magma arm, after losing the support of the red INU fruit ability, instantly reduced to an arm full of tattoos. At the same time, a few meters away from the red dog, a golden color suddenly appeared, and quickly converged into a figure. Burst. Just as this figure condensed into an entity, a stream of blood suddenly gushed from his mouth, and the blood red liquid was scattered on the slightly dull yellow wooden deck under the erosion of the years which was particularly dazzling. Poof! After a mouthful of blood gushed out, the yellow ape covered his stomach with a painful face, where there was a wound that almost split him into two parts. The warm liquid had stained his entire yellow and white striped suit red. Poof! A sound of falling to the ground sounded. The yellow ape finally couldn't support it, his body was like a broken sack, and he fainted on the ground, unconscious. Yikes! The sword radiance that Luo Xian had just seriously injured the two admirals with all his strength was still slashing towards the rear unabated, and all the way down, all the buildings of the naval warships in this direction that exceeded one meter and five meters on the deck could not be spared, and were cut off from the middle. In the face of the sword radiance with such a strong destruction, all the navies in this direction were frightened and stupid, and their expressions were extremely panicked. Poof! Poof! Everyone scrambled to aim at the warship and the gap between the warship, and frantically jumped towards the sea below, trying to avoid this killing disaster. However, even so, there were still many people who did not have time to dodge, which came from Luo Xian's anger. Luo Xian's anger has always needed blood to baptize, and there is no exception. Ah! Help! Let me jump first! In an instant, this sea surface seemed to turn into an azure hell, and countless wails and screams sounded here, making everyone who had heard or seen it shudder. In the face of death, 
the deepest ugliness of human nature is vividly displayed. Poof, poof. Not long after the sword, under the witness of this white sail and the blue seagull pattern symbolizing naval justice, one blood-colored flower after another bloomed one after another, enchanting like roses, telling bloody violence. Wow! After disposing of the two naval awards, Luo Xian looked at the scene in front of him, calmly flipped it casually, and the afterimage sword in his hand disappeared in his hand when he landed, and was received by him into the system space. At the same time that the sword disappeared, the silent aura that his whole person exuded also disappeared. At this moment, Luo Xian once again returned to that good young man who looked harmless to humans and animals. Centipede Elder, open the way. Bang! As soon as Luo Xian's voice fell, a hideous huge head turned the top of a naval battleship in front of their ship on its side, and the Centipede Elder appeared. He first arched his body towards Luo Xian and then turned around. Poof, poof. The centipede elder's body lurking beneath the sea began to rage wildly on the sea. In a moment's effort, Luo Xian's eyes suddenly brightened, and all the naval warships blocking in front were capsized by the centipede elder. Even the two admirals who were injured by Luo Xian before were also flicked by the centipede elder, and even the people with the ship all sank into the sea. Seeing this, Luo Xian no longer paid more attention to these two generals, there were dozens of naval warships overturned by the centipede elder, and thousands of navies fell into the sea like dumplings, so he Luo Xian did not have the energy to find them one by one. These two are both devil fruit powers, and if they can not die under such circumstances, they can also count their lives. Moreover, for Luo Xian now, they are just an existence that can be killed at will, two ants, and it is not worth letting Luo Xian spend so much mental effort. Without waiting for Luo Xian's order, the little hand of the tornado was raised, and the ship under their feet suddenly floated into the air, and the bottom of the boat broke away from the sea surface and was suspended half a meter above it. Shout! Without any stopping, under the manipulation of the tornado, Luo Xian and the others finally set sail again, leaving this bloody sea, gradually moving away into the distance, and gradually disappearing from everyone's sight. At the scene, there was silence. After a long time, these naval soldiers finally reacted, running around one by one, looking terrified to the extreme. Quick, quickly inform the Navy headquarters. General Red Dog and General Yellow Ape, who saw it? The two generals are in the water, hurry up and go down to find it. They couldn't believe that as the supreme combat power of the navy, the general was defeated, even if it was the joint efforts of the two admirals, they were still defeated by a demon named Luo Xian. After this battle, Luo Xian became completely famous, and the navy also received an unprecedented blow, and morale was low to the extreme. This year was also a deserted year for naval recruitment, and the people recruited did not even reach the usual 30%. The navy in the eyes of all, is no longer a symbol of justice. Weak, incompetent, these are the labels that the people on the sea put on the navy. After One Piece King Roger, Luo Xian once again set off a boom on this sea, allowing the tide of the pirate era to sweep the entire pirate world again. After all, in the eyes of ordinary people, even the One Piece King Roger did not also fall into the hands of the navy, but Luo Xian was different directly taking down the top combat power of the two navies. What? The joint efforts of the two admirals were not left behind by Luo Xian, and the other party was seriously injured, until now, life and death, whereabouts, all unknown. Navy Headquarters, inside Marshal Marin Fander's office. After hearing the urgent news from the deputy, the Sengoku sitting in the office opened his eyes angrily, and his whole face instantly turned white. Because of the rank, except for the General General of the Navy Headquarters who can directly contact the warring states, the rest of the Navy can only transmit news to the highest commander of the Navy through the deputy of the warring states. This also led to the fact that it was not until more than an hour after Luo Xian and them left that the warring states learned about this situation. Even he didn't expect that these two admirals very cleverly encountered Luo Xian and the others who had just run out of advanced city and it stuck him in the middle. 
However, what made him most unbelievable was that the supreme combat power of the two navies could not block Luo Xian's blow, and when he thought that the three admirals under him had all been beaten by Luo Xian, how could the sulking breath of the Marshal of the Warring States be unable to be revealed? Standing in front of the desk of the Marshal of the Warring States, the sharp-eyed deputy suddenly found that there was something wrong with the face of the Marshal of the Warring States, it was white just now, but now it has become extremely rosy, this look is a little abnormal. Opposite side As soon as the Warring States thought that this Luo Xian had entered his field of vision from the beginning, he had obviously attached great importance to him. However, he never expected that he still underestimated Luo Xian's growth ability. It is simply a demon, even Robin, the son of the devil, is not so terrible. But now it's late, Luo Xian has grown up, not a simple figure left to the hands of the navy, now he at least has the strength of the first person under the four emperors. As soon as he thought of this, the eyes of the marshal of the warring states suddenly widened. Poof! I only felt a sweetness in my throat, and a warm current surged up and erupted from his mouth. In an instant, all the white documents on the desk were instantly dyed a layer of bright red. Seeing this, the deputy standing opposite the warring states suddenly gasped, and his brain instantly became blank, having been the adjutant of the warring states marshal for so many years, it was the first time he saw this extremely cultivated and unfazed first person in the navy, and he was so angry. After a while, Marshal of the Warring States, the deputy shouted in panic. The deputy who finally reacted hurriedly turned around and bypassed the desk, walked to the side of the Warring States, and hurriedly supported the Warring States who were already earth-colored at this time, looking at each other with a worried face. And quickly took out a phone worm from his arms, just when he was about to call the medical department of the Navy headquarters, suddenly, Sengoku spoke. He pressed his deputy's hand that was grasping the phone worm, and he said intermittently with a weak face. First, don't worry, hurry, now, the most important thing, the matter is first, send rescue forces, to the Red Dogs, they, where they are, the place, support. Will you, who, must, maximum, maximize the existing combat power of the Navy? After taking a breath, Sengoku continued to order. Okay, I know the marshal, I'll arrange it now. The deputy hurriedly promised. After getting a satisfactory answer, Sengoku finally put down the hand that was placed on the deputy phone worm. Seeing this, the deputy just hurriedly dialed the phone in his hand and began to arrange specific matters. Hey, medical team. Now let you rush to the office of the Marshal of the Warring States as quickly as possible. Hey, Lieutenant General Karp. Yes, the Marshal of the Warring States vomited blood, really, didn't lie to you. Probably, no one expected that the Marshal of the Warring States, who was the highest commander of the Navy, was so angry that he vomited blood by a young man, and even the whole person could not move. However, when you hear that all the right-hand men under your command have been almost completely killed by one person, you may not be able to bear such torture even if you are a hard-hitting man, unless you have a heart like Luffy. But the warring states are different, the smarter the person, the easier it is to be true. Just when the entire navy was busy with a mess, all this was the initiator, but Luo Xian did not know about it, and now he was in a very good mood. Because, the system prompts him that he can summon a new character again. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully completing the mission to escape the naval pursuit, and now the system rewards the host with 2,000 summoning points and high-level armed color domineering. Swish. The next moment after the sound of the system, Luo Xian, who was sitting on the deck, felt his heart stop violently, and then beat hard again. A warm current emerged from it flowing towards Luo Xian's limbs, which was extremely comfortable. Feeling the energy filled in his body, the corners of Luo Xian's mouth couldn't help but show a touch of joy. How strong is the high-level armed color domineering? Swish! Luo Xian's eyes froze, and in the next instant, a black energy suddenly spread from his body, and in the blink of an eye, it had already covered his whole body. 
feeling the extremely thick defense coming from the body surface, at this moment, Luo Xian even had an illusion. His current body seemed to have instantly become the strongest thing in the entire world, and no matter what level of attack could not hurt him in the slightest. Of course, this is just the sequelae brought about by the rapid growth of strength, and now he can only say that he can run rampant in the pirate world with physical skills alone, but it is not enough for him to dominate. You know, everything in the pirate world needs to be supported by physical strength, and every time the system rewards Luo Xian's domineering, it will also raise his physique to the minimum that can support the current stage of armed continuous combat. P.S. In the world of One Piece, Although there is no clear rating of domineering, there is indeed a difference between strong and weak. Luo Xian initially possessed only the most rudimentary armed color, and then upgraded to the intermediate level, and now he has been upgraded to the advanced level. Just when Luo Xian wanted to test how strong the advanced armed color was, suddenly, the system's prompt sounded again, interrupting his next thoughts. Ding, the current host has 6,000 summon points. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully accumulating 6,000 summoning points, the current host has a chance to summon S-level heroes and Dragon-level weirdos, whether the host uses it. It's not nonsense, use. As soon as Luo Xian's voice fell, on the deck in front of them, a faint purple appeared when he boarded. Meanwhile, less than a kilometer in front of Luo Xian's ship, there was a strange island made of 79 Yarkaman mangrove trees. On this island, where even the ground is made of tree roots, it is full of dreamy colors, like a fairy tale, one bubble after another emerges from the green grass and slowly floats upwards. Numerous. And this place is exactly the Chambordi Islands that Luo Xian has been nagging about wanting to come here to see. It is called an archipelago because every tree here is an island with towns and facilities all on it. And the area division here is also based on the 79 mangrove trees that have been marked with numbers. Near mangrove number 13, there is a black male bar named Siachi. Although it looks extremely shabby on the surface, the reputation is great. Almost most of those who have lived in the Shambord Islands for some time have heard of such a place. Especially some pirates who don't know the height of the sky, when it comes to this place, they all change color and it is obvious that this place has caused many such people to suffer losses. Even so, it's still just the most superficial thing in this humble-looking bar. However, who could have known that the man who was once known as One Piece, the deputy captain of Roger's ship, and Hades really lived in seclusion in this place? Inside the bar, an old man with silver hair was half-leaning in front of the counter of the bar, holding a goblet in his hand drinking the liquor inside, and on his face full of vicissitudes, he could vaguely recognize that this person was definitely a handsome talent when he was young. The young people today are really amazing. After putting down the wine glass in his hand, Renly looked at a wanted warrant for a naval bounty placed on the counter and said in a stunned tone. It seems to be lamenting the lost years of his youth. Yes. I just got the news that this young man single-handedly knocked out all two admirals of the navy into serious injuries, and his whereabouts are still unknown. Inside the counter, a woman wearing a black coat who could not see her age slowly spit out a smoke ring from her mouth, extinguished the cigarette butt that was about to burn out in her hand in the ashtray, and said slowly, the action was extremely elegant. Her tone was very flat, as if she was indifferent to everything but only from her slightly trembling fingers when she pinched the cigarette could subtly detect that the other party's heart was extremely uncalm. As soon as she finished speaking, this bar suddenly fell into a dead silence, without a trace of popularity, only a wisp of burning smoke wafting out of the ashtray made this place have a different fireworks. Long. A sigh sounded again in the room. Two Navy top combat powers. The current Navy must be in chaos. Even when Captain Roger was alive, it didn't cause such a big turmoil in the Navy. The man from before spoke again, in a rather admiring tone. These two people are the right hand of One Piece Roger, Hades Renly, and the operator of this bar, Xia Chi. The eyes of the two people were simultaneously focused on the wanted ticket placed on the counter, 
on which a handsome young man standing in front of the fruit stall with his face sideways and the corners of his mouth slightly raised. It was the photo that Luo Xian was secretly photographed by the Navy's lurkers when he was in Rogue Town before. Obviously, this thing that happened not long ago, just a few hours ago has been known to Rayleigh. It is worthy of being a sea pirate with infinite deterrent power in the pirate world, and they can always be the first to know about this news. Brew brew brew. At this moment, suddenly a ringing of a telephone bug sounded in the room, instantly interrupting the contemplation of the two. Hey! After hearing the voice coming from his arms, Renly was a little puzzled, who was looking for him, and there were not many people who could know his phone worm number. It won't be your little lover again. After Xia Qi on the side laughed teasingly, he slowly pulled out another cigarette box from the cigarette box on the counter. Snap! Lit, took a deep breath, exuded a seductive breath, and looked at Renly with a provocative face. Haha, how is it possible, what little lover do I have? Riley sneered, quickly took out the phone worm from his arms, connected it, and ended this deadly topic. Hey, I'm Rayleigh. Well, okay, I'll go over now. Gay. After hanging up the phone worm, Renly kicked it back in his arms with great agility, raised his head, and said hello to Xia Qi dryly. There is an urgent matter on Nine Snake Island that needs to go over now, I will go first. After speaking, Riley drained the wine in the goblet on the table in one sip, then turned around and lifted his feet and left. Be careful on the road. Looking at the back of Renly disappearing outside the door, Xiaqi responded positively. Got it. At the same time, just as Renly was preparing to leave the Shambord Islands and head to the windless Nine Snake Island, a group of uninvited guests were once again welcomed here. It was the Luoxian that Renly and Xiaqi talked about before. Syllable. At this moment, Luoxian, who had just jumped off the boat, his face was extremely gloomy, and the whole person exuded an aura that was not close to people, which was diametrically opposed to him who usually smiled indifferently in the face of everything. Even here, the Shambord Islands, which he had been looking forward to, could not mention the slightest interest in him. Seeing this, the crew members who followed behind him all jumped down from the ship one after another, and one by one they all carefully looked at Luo Xian's back standing in the front, looking at each other. Sir, what's wrong? How do you feel that you have become unhappy in an instant since just now, who provoked him? Bangu gently moved his body to the top of Emperor Tong, and asked with a curious look. Rip and pull. Emperor Tong casually took out a lollipop from behind, tore the wrapper on it, put it into his mouth and licked it a few times, then tilted his head. He gestured to Bungwu to a newcomer standing on the side whose muscles exploded, but who were wearing tight blue and white striped prisoner clothes. It should be because of him, after all, since he was summoned just now, Brother Xian's face has changed. Oh, is that so? When Bungwu heard this, he suddenly looked at the muscular newcomer who had been drawing eye shadow since the beginning. No wonder, sexy prisoners like this, it is estimated that any man is a little unbearable. Under Bungu's gaze, the sexy prisoner on the other side seemed to notice it, put down the eyeliner in his hand, and suddenly raised his head and threw a wink at Bungu. Bungu shook violently, a coolness rushed straight to the brain, and goosebumps fell instantly. Depend. How come I didn't find such a strange flower in the S-Class hero before? After stretching out his hand and rubbing his two arms, he hurriedly took his gaze back and walked quickly towards the front. Distance. Riley, who had just come out of Siaki Bar, was about to leave, when he found Luo Xian and his group coming out of the boat. After he looked at the black-haired and black-eyed man walking in the front, his eyes narrowed, and his expression instantly became solemn. Luo Xian? Why did he come here too? Do you also want to challenge this great shipping lane? At the same time, Luo Xian Zheng, who was walking in front, looked unhappy, and suddenly there was a strange look in his body. Well? Who is it? Subconsciously, Luo Xian turned his head and looked in one direction. 
Hades Renly. He whispered, a look of surprise on his face. In an instant, these two strong men of the old and new eras, their eyes facing each other, their eyes like electricity, collided together. The surrounding air instantly became dignified. Brew brew brew. At this moment, suddenly, the phone worm in Renly's arms rang again, instantly interrupting the emotions of the two, and the surrounding atmosphere returned to normal again. Hey, I'm Rayleigh. Siachi, what's wrong? Renly quickly took out the phone worm from his arms and answered. Xiao Bie was injured by Draco, and he was also caught. Listening to Xia Qi voice from the other side of the phone worm, Hades Rayleigh's already white eyebrows instantly frowned slightly. Draco. This is trouble. After casually hanging up the phone, he sighed lightly, and his tone was extremely low. The Nine Snake Island side is anxious, but Xiao Ba's side can't be ignored. It was really eventful, and it suddenly put Renly in a dilemma. If something else happens, Renly can quickly deal with the matter here in a short time, and then rush to Nine Snake Island. However, when it comes to the Draco, there will be no way to deal with it for a while, and the Nine Snake Island side is also very anxious. The other side. Just after Riley picked up the phone worm, Luo Xian also withdrew his gaze, and his face was still very gloomy and turned away. If this had been placed before, he might have been somewhat interested in Renly, the deputy captain of the One Piece ship, but now, he was not interested in the slightest. His mind is now full of scenes from when he was summoned on the ship before. That scene, he simply didn't want to see the second time, if it weren't for the fact that he summoned it himself, Luo Xian would have the heart to hack this girl to death with a sword. What do TMD summon? King is it, at least buy one get one free. Sexy prisoner, how did this cargo also be summoned? The most spicy eye is that the whole goods came over with a bare ass, if it weren't for the system sending his clothes together very intimately, Luo Xian wouldn't know how to deal with this pervert. That's it, it's not the most excessive. The most excessive thing is that this product actually drooled at him Luo Xian. At that time, it disgusted Luo Xian, and he almost didn't pull out the afterimage sword and split this girl. If it weren't for the system speaking out in time to stop Luo Xian, the sexy prisoner might have become the first S-class hero in the One Punch Man world to be hacked to death. Just as Luo Xian was striding forward, suddenly, a figure very presumptuously stopped in front of him. When he boarded, Luo Xian's eyes showed a touch of killing intent, and his whole face became cold, and his mood was just unhappy, but he didn't expect that someone would dare to send it to the door. Just as he was about to strike, the figure on the opposite side suddenly spoke. Ouch, young man, wait, you are Luo Xian, I want to ask you for a favor, how about you see? Help? Luo Xian's movements suddenly paused, and then he raised his eyes to look at the person with a puzzled expression. Are you, Hades Renly? Luo Xian said unexpectedly. Unexpectedly, Hades Renly actually found him and said that he wanted him to help and the two of them should meet on the first day today. Oh, no me. Hearing Luo Xian calling his name, Hades suddenly came to his senses and said with some surprise. Before, the moment he just stopped Luo Xian, a fierce, heavy momentum suddenly burst out from the body of this very young-looking young man in front of him, almost suffocating. Even he, a weather-beaten old man, fell into a brief loss of concentration before he didn't check for a while. What's the matter with me? Without being polite with Rilado, Luo Xian went straight to the topic. Haha, it's really an amazing young man, he speaks very directly. Hades said with a laugh. After seeing that Luo Xian had no reaction, Riley did not feel embarrassed, and hurriedly continued to explain, it's just that a friend of mine is in some trouble, just caught by the Draco, and is about to take it away. However, this matter can't be handled for a while, just in time for me to go out in an emergency, this is not to let you help. After all, Luo Xian, who was made the demon lord by the navy, you are now the first person under the four emperors. At the end of the words, 
Riley held Luo Xian without leaving a trace, he thought that after all, Luo Xian is still young, and the roots of his ears are still relatively soft, and he can't listen to good words. Ding, the system has released a new mission, Hades Riley, the deputy captain of the One Piece ship, asks the host to rescue the octopus man Zioba from the hands of the Draco. Option 1, accept the task and promise Hades Renly to successfully rescue Xiao Bia and gain the favor of Hades Renly. Mission completed, the system rewards the host with 1500 summon points. Option 2, rejection, as the top existence in this world, for the sake of a favor, it is not worth the host's hand. Mission completed, the system rewards the host with 1000 summoning points. Option 3, as a transaction, the host puts forward more conditions for Hades Renly and successfully robs him. Mission completed, the system rewards the host with 2500 summoning points. Well? After hearing the third option, Luo Xian's heart instantly cleared. Oh, Draco. That's a world nobleman, I don't dare to provoke it, I can't afford to provoke it. The corner of his eyes lightly picked and the corners of his mouth showed a touch of cunning, and then he hurriedly waved his hand at Riley and refused. The muscles near the corners of Renly's eyes twitched unconsciously after Luo Xian finished speaking, if he was dozens of years younger, he would definitely beat the person in front of him who was laughing so cheaply. Not long ago, he beat all three top combat forces of the Navy, and there are still two missing, and now you tell me that you can't afford to provoke? Just because of you, the whole navy is in chaos, and you dare not mess with me? Compared to the admirals, those wasteful Draco are a little better to deal with? Do you dare to be more perfunctory? Riley glanced at Luo Xian, who was still standing in place and nodding and smiling at himself, and couldn't help but feel helpless, this look is also a master who doesn't see rabbits and doesn't spread eagles. I can promise you a condition. Time was urgent, and in desperation, he had to throw out his conditions first. 2. Luo Xian said simply. Boy, don't go too far, you can't be too greedy. As soon as Luo Xian's words were finished, Lei Li instantly became angry, didn't he say just now that he didn't dare to provoke the Draco? 2. Luo Xian was still standing in place, looking like oil and salt were not entering, and said. Discerning people can see at once that the difference between mission option 1 and option 3 is obviously nearly a thousand summoning points. Even if it's not for Renly's favor, he has to save up some summoning points. After all, the landlord has no food left at home, besides, a thousand summoning points is a lot, if it is placed in the first summoning, it only needs two thousand points. Luo Xian, since you have already beaten all the admirals of the navy once, now you don't care about snatching a person from the hands of the Draco, two conditions are too many. In desperation, this deputy captain of the One Piece ship, the man known as Hades Rayleigh, actually spoke softly to Luo Xian. Hard ones don't work, you can only try soft ones. After all, who knows what Luo Xian can do with such a troublemaker, and he still wants to enjoy his old age. One condition is enough, if this is one more, he even has a kind of disagreement, he is likely to be planted in Luo Xian's hands, and the late festival is not guaranteed. This time, Luo Xian didn't speak more, his steps were wrong, and he let go directly from Riley's side, ready to leave. Ouch, wait, wait, wait. At this moment, Riley was instantly anxious, and hurriedly reached out to stop Luo Xian, and said with a smile on his face, too. Just two, I promised. Oh, promised. After Luo Xian heard this, he looked at Lei Li Dao beside him playfully. Promised, promised. Renly said with a look of grievance. There is no way, human life is at stake. Besides, Zioba is his lifesaver. He is just an old man, isn't it just two conditions, just agree to people. Okay, now. Let me make my first request. After getting an accurate answer, Luo Xian hurriedly turned around and said to Hades with a smile. What requirements? Unexpectedly, 
after Luo Xian put forward his request so quickly, Hades frowned and asked a little nervously. There is no way not to be nervous, this Luo Xian is really too difficult to deal with, who knows what weird requirements he will make for himself. Little boy, tell Mr. Renly all the materials we need for shipbuilding in the future, this is our god of wealth. Luo Xian lowered his head and said to Emperor Tong, who was fiddling with the computer on the side. Well, okay, Brother Xian. After getting Luo Xian's order, Emperor Tong quickly put his hand into the special backpack behind his back, took out a neatly folded white paper from it, walked in front of Riley, and handed it to him. Here you go. Oh good. After Lei Li casually took the note handed to him by Emperor Tong, he opened it casually with some carelessness. When he heard that Luo Xian needed to build a ship, his expression had already relaxed, isn't it shipbuilding, if you want the Atom Treasure Tree, you can get it for you, that's not a matter at all. It doesn't take much effort. Although that kind of thing is said to be somewhat precious, for him who has travelled south and north with Roger for so many years, it is just a more valuable and troublesome thing. Not to mention how precious it is. However, nine times out of ten, life is not as simple as Rayleigh thinks. The moment he opened it, he regretted it a little. Iron, copper, aluminum, tin. Some of the others are all metal, he has seen the first few, as for the latter, he has never heard of it. What are they, and the amount required is particularly large, a few tons less, tens and hundreds of tons more. Dude, are you going to build ships? How do you feel that you are a little out of business? It won't be munitions. I believe that these should not be a big deal for Mr. Riley. Luo Xian, who ignored the wry smile on Renly's face, said something to himself, and then led his crew to the location provided by Renly to prepare to rush. If he didn't leave, he was worried that Zioba would be killed by the Draco. At that time, Renly promised him Luo Xian's two conditions, wouldn't it be yellow? This Luo Xian is really difficult. Riley looked at the back of Luo Xian and the others leaving, and after casually putting the note handed to him by Emperor Tong into his pocket, he shook his head and sighed lowly. By the way, I will be waiting for you here in the next few days, remember to quickly help me collect all the materials we need. At this moment, Luo Xian, who was already walking in the distance, reminded Riley without looking back, and disappeared into Riley's sight with his crew. It seems that the world government is going to have a headache, this Luo Xian is a much more difficult figure than Roger. After staying for a while in the direction Luo Xian and the others left, Riley shook his head and also turned and left. The Nine Snake Island side is urgent, he is going to leave quickly. As for Xiao Ba's affairs, in the previous conversation with Luo Xian, he was still relatively at ease with Luo Xian. Besides, even if Luo Xian doesn't care in the end, isn't there still Xia Qi staring at him, although it may not solve the problem, but after so many years of wandering in the Shambord Islands, there is still no problem in saving Zioba's life. Mangrove Island No. 31, an alley mouth near Civilian Street. On the not very flat ground, a strange figure in appearance, like the fish people of the pirate world, he knelt on the ground, the corners of his mouth oozed blood, and his expression was very painful and crawled forward. On his back, sitting cross-legged was a fat Draco wearing a bubble hood, and on the other party's extremely greasy fat face, a pair of green bean-sized eyes exuded an emotion called excitement. Hurry up, lowly slave, let's go as if he was a little dissatisfied with the crawling speed of the slave sitting under him, this Draco pulled out one of his feet with difficulty, and suddenly kicked the other party's head with the hardest part of the sole, and the heel of the shoe. One, one, another. Under Draco's fierce kick, the injuries on this slave's body became more and more serious, and the bright red liquid was like beads with broken threads. The tick fell to the ground, leaving a little bit of rose, dazzling. But even so, the slave still did not arouse any resistance, and he continued to crawl forward without complaint, even if his clothes were stained by the blood mixed with dust on the ground. The Draco sitting on him didn't know if he was tired or how, but he stopped attacking, 
continued to dress roughly, and let the slave carry him forward. For a while, the dead silence on this street returned again, and the air was full of oppression. The people around them all knelt on the ground with their heads bowed, trembling one by one, closing their eyes tightly, not daring to make the slightest extra movement. This treatment was like a true god walking in front of them, but even a true god did not have such a big pomp and circumstance. Only a few soft-hearted women and men with a very strong sense of justice gritted their teeth and opened their eyes, staring at the ground, and tears dripped from their eyes to the ground, shattering. Of course, they can only go so far. The weak are powerless, this is the truest portrayal here. Poof! At this moment, suddenly there was a sound of falling to the ground in front of them. It was accompanied by a scream, and a few voices of flustered concern. Ouch! Anyone who hears such a scene will raise their heads curiously and take a look, but on this street, the people kneeling on the ground still maintain their original posture, and even their bodies do not shake in the slightest. Obviously, the fear of the Draco people has been deeply planted in them, in everyone's heart, in their bones. It takes root and sprouts, and in the end, bears a fruit called fear. Damn slaves, dare to throw me to the ground, damn it. Following the prestige, I saw that the Draco who had been carried by a slave like a fishman before actually fell to the ground, and beside him were all bodyguards in black suits. One by one, they were all in a hurry, and they looked extremely terrified and helped the Draco who fell to the ground. Okay, my lord. Don't get hurt. This damn slave is so useless. Finally, with the help of many bodyguards, that Draco finally got up from the ground. Looking at the slave who had fallen unconscious on the ground not far away, this Draco did not have the slightest pity, but immediately took out a golden pistol from his arms and pointed it at the other party from a distance. That ugly face was full of disgust and disgust, mixed with a little hideousness and madness. Damn it, go die. Draco stared closely at the slave on the ground, and pulled the trigger on his index finger without the slightest hesitation. Bang! With a gunshot, the bodies of all the residents lying on the ground on this street followed for a while, and a sense of sorrow could not help but rise in their hearts. They are worried that when they will and may have this day. Untouchables, looking for death. Just when everyone thought that with the loss of a life, this matter would end here, suddenly, the previous Draco spoke up again. The voice was extremely sharp, as if it came out of the voice of a male duck, which made everyone's hearts tighten. What happened again? Could it be that the newcomer who didn't have long eyes and crashed into Draco again? Street Center Draco stood on the ground, holding a golden pistol in one hand, and wisps of smoke were still rising from the muzzle. He looked at a middle-aged man who suddenly blocked in front of him, first stunned, and then the whole person became annoyed, and this was the sentence before. After discovering this sudden uninvited guest, the bodyguard in a black suit beside him immediately surrounded the Draco, looked at the opposite side with a vigilant expression, and guarded the Draco strictly. If the Draco received damage, then these poor bodyguards of theirs would all be blamed, and if one was counted as one, they would all have to die. On the contrary, if the Draco are okay, even if there is only one left in the end of their death, it will be earned. Go and die. After Draco, who was surrounded by these bodyguards in the middle, saw that the other party did not respond to his words, he raised his hand again and wanted to shoot. Suddenly, in the distance of this quiet street, there was a series of sparse footsteps. In an instant, the attention of the Draco and his bodyguards who were present were all attracted to the past. At this time, who is so kind? In the face of this sudden change, the people lying on the ground were all a little curious and wanted to look up. If I am killed by you like this, I will be in trouble. At this moment, in the group of people who came, the young man with black hair and black eyes at the head suddenly spoke. With a smile on his lips, he took a careless step under his feet, leading his people towards the center of the street. Swish! At this moment, Draco felt a flash in front of his eyes, and the figure that suddenly blocked in front of him suddenly disappeared, 
followed by the one on the ground who was preparing to be executed, and the newly received slave also disappeared. A pool of dazzling blood was left on the ground, stimulating Draco's heart. The other sighed. Sir, I brought him, but he was a little badly injured. The man who had disappeared from Draco before reappeared, and with the slave in Draco's hands, he came to the side of the young man who had also just come here and spoke before, frowning and a little worried. Oh, well done, Bung Wu. Just rescue people, the rest has nothing to do with us. After glancing at the slave in Bung Wu's hand, the young man waved his hand casually and said. As soon as the words fell, he turned around and walked in the direction he came. This person is Luo Xian who made a deal with Hades Renly before, and as for the slave in Bung Gu's hands, it is the condition of Hades Renly, Zioba. Oh, good. Seeing this, everyone behind Luo Xian silently followed Luo Xian one by one and prepared to leave. Cheap things, dirty mongrels, do you know who I am? Dare to offend me, go to death. Seeing this, the Draco who was still surrounded by bodyguards saw this, and his two eyeballs were instantly flushed, and he suddenly lifted the gun in his hand again, and shot directly at the back of Luo Xian and the others without the slightest hesitation. Bang bang! Click! Several shots were fired in succession, until finally, after the bullets in the magazine were all vented by him, he was still a little unsatisfied, his index finger frantically pulled the trigger, and the sound of machine impact after machine sounded in the chamber. Yikes! After Draco pulled the trigger, several yellow-orange-orange bullets penetrated the air with rapid power and quickly shot towards Luo Xian and the others. Seeing that it was about to crash into everyone's body and burrow into the flesh of Tornado and others. Suddenly, the tornado on the side moved, and the green hair was windless and automatic suspended in the air and emitting a green-silver light. Invisible fluctuations suddenly spread from her body. Dang dang! At this moment, with a crisp sound, the yellow bullets with the aura of death suddenly stopped out of thin air and suspended in midair. Snap, snap! Luo Xian, who was walking in the front, suddenly stopped, and everyone who followed behind him also stopped. Slowly. Luo Xian turned around slowly, looking at the Draco who was still standing in the center of this street, still frantically pulling the trigger in his hand. The corners of his mouth rose slightly and he smiled. There was a lingering and killing intent in the smile. You, good. As soon as the words fell, Luo Xian disappeared in place, as if crossing space. Draco only felt a flash in front of his eyes, and suddenly, a figure suddenly appeared in front of his eyes. He and Luo Xian looked at each other, and the Draco's pupils suddenly dilated, and his expression became frightened. From Luo Xian's pair of clear eyes, he felt unprecedented fear. Without waiting for him to shout, nor waiting for the bodyguards around the Draco to react, Luo Xian's body suddenly moved. He jerked to one side, his speed was extremely fast, and he even left an afterimage in the air and his right foot was also raised. Bang! Accompanied by a popping sound of air. Luo Xian's whip leg slammed into the bodies of the black-clothed bodyguards and Draco who were gathered in a circle. Poof! When boarding, blood floats in the air like a fountain, and under the sunlight, it exudes a faint luster. The blood had not yet landed, and the figure of Draco and his bodyguards standing in place had long since disappeared. Next second. With a muffled bang, the building on the left side of the street collapsed and turned into ruins. Standing in place, Luo Xian put down his feet, his hands in his pockets, and looked at the ruins as if sensing something. In the next instant, the coldness at the corner of his mouth disappeared. Call. After exhaling lightly, Luo Xian's face became normal again, as if he had returned to his previous state. Not bad, finally vented. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully completing the mission of rescuing the octopus man Zioba from the Draco and robbing Renly. The system rewards the host with 2,000 summon points and intermediate overlord color domineering. Ding, the current host has summon points, 2,000 points. 
Instantly, Luo Xian felt a warm current flowing out of thin air in his head. After the warm current, his brain emitted a faint fluorescence. Luo Xian felt the fluorescence in the brain, and had a feeling that he seemed to be able to freely manipulate and stimulate the fluorescence, so as to be able to control the size and direction of a mysterious energy in the brain. This should be the mid-level overlord color, the domineering ability to control the direction freely, and the degree of mastery that Luffy mastered on Fishman Island at that time after the top war. I just don't know how much strength my overlord color is, so I have to try it when I have time. After tilting his head, it was only now that Luo Xian was finally satisfied, and even the depression when he summoned the sexy prisoner before disappeared. After nodding, he turned around with his feet up and walked towards the distance, leaving the street that was silent although full of people. Leaving with him were Tornado and the others. Once again, silence returned to the streets. On the other side of the street, on the roof of the tallest building here, a woman wearing a black coat was supporting the ground with one hand, watching the backs of Luo Xian and the others disappear from sight with a dull expression. Subsequently, she returned to normal, but there was still a deep imprint of horror under her eyes. It is the backhand of Lei Lilia before, Xiaqi operator of the bamboo bar Xiaqi. So strong. For a long time, an exclamation came from her mouth. You know, she is a character who has been chased by carp, and her own strength cannot be underestimated. But even so, Xiaqi still didn't see Luo Xian's previous movements clearly. Seeing that Luo Xian and the others had successfully rescued Xiao Bie, Xiaqi also turned and left. A few minutes later, having noticed that there was no movement, the people lying on the ground finally plucked up the courage to raise their heads and look around. Looking at the already empty street, these people who didn't know anything didn't have too much curiosity about what happened before, and they all dispersed with their children and the daily necessities they just bought. In a moment's effort, this street turned into an empty alley, very lonely. But in an instant, the street became lively again. The sound of clanging footsteps sounded one after another, like an army marching here. It was after receiving the news that I don't know which enthusiastic masses reported that Draco was offended here, and the navy rushed here. After they turned over the pile of ruins that had been kicked and shattered by Luo Xian on the side of the street, the scene instantly resounded with a series of disgusting sounds. Even a vice admiral who has experienced countless wars and is stationed here, the supreme commander of the navy, can't help but frown a little when he sees this scene. Under this ruin, there was only a slimy red flesh mud and a few white bones exposed outside, such a form could not make them identify who the deceased was. It is even difficult to tell if it is a person who died here. Meanwhile, not long after Luo Xian and the others left from here, because the warring states were stunned, the world government, which finally got the news through the spies hidden inside the navy, had already set off an uproar inside. At the top of the Red Earth continent, lies above the clouds of the world's sacred place, Mary Joa, inside the meeting hall of the highest power. There are five old men with different shapes sitting here, one by one, their faces are livid, and the air is very depressing. It is these five old men who control the largest power institution in the entire pirate world, the five old stars of the world government. They hadn't gotten together like this for a long time, the last time was because of when Roger became one piece. And today, they are also because of one person, Luo Xian. Dang dang. A slightly urgent and abrupt knock on the door suddenly sounded. After hearing the movement, the five old stars present looked at each other, and their expressions instantly became serious. Among them, an old man with a black beanie spoke, and said in a low tone. Come in. Squeak. After the sound of opening the door, it was accompanied by a somewhat messy, and hurried footsteps slowly became louder, and in the end, the person finally stood in front of the five old stars. This person's face was slightly pale, without the slightest trace of blood, and the whole person looked extremely weak. It was the warring states who were so angry that they vomited blood before, looking at the other party's face. Obviously, 
the injuries on the warring states were not well and were pulled over by the five old stars. Just as he was about to say hello, suddenly, one of the five old stars, holding an old man holding a sword, directly raised his hand to stop him. Well, don't say it's useless, what's going on, how did you hear that the entire navy is in chaos, and even the undersea prison has been forcibly broken in? I underestimated Luo Xian's growth rate. I thought that he had the potential to become the Four Emperors, but what I didn't expect was that in just one year, he had reached such a point. As soon as he heard about Luo Xian, the face of the Warring States instantly became the same as the five old stars, very ugly. Bang! The old man holding the long sword in his arms slammed the scabbard on the ground, stared at the Warring States standing in front of him, and said with a sharp face. It's really waste. So much military spending is allocated to the navy every year, is it all used to eat shit? Being so embarrassed by an unknown emerging pirate. Click. The eyes of the warring states standing below instantly turned scarlet, and the clenched fists sounded a rattling sound, and the knuckles were pinched white. Holding back, he wanted to get angry, but there was no way, after all, this was caused by his poor work. The blonde old man on the side watched the warring states behave like this, his eyes narrowed, and a sharp glow overflowed from it. It's really an unfamiliar dog, and it even has an anti-lord heart. Okay, be quiet, don't be so angry, the bareheaded old man said as he made peace on the side, for now, how to deal with this Luo Xian and the negative impact caused by him. After all, time, the longer it drags on the more unfavorable the form is for us. Brew brew brew. Brew brew brew. The bald five old stars had just finished speaking, and suddenly the voices of two telephone worms sounded one after another in the conference room. Well? In the room, everyone followed the prestige, and their expressions instantly became solemn. One was placed on the conference table, and the other was sounded on the Sengoku body. These two are all emergency calls, and generally these two phones will not ring if there is nothing special. Shamboard Islands After letting Xiao Bia be sent to the bamboo bar opened by Xia Qi, Luo Xian took the crew to the hotel of No. 71 Mangrove and stayed here, waiting for Riley's return. The next day, night. The entire Shamboard Islands fell silent, except for the soap bubble park in the center with the lights of Shan Shan making every corner of the place look less gloomy. However, just tonight, Luo Xian and the others welcomed some uninvited guests outside the hotel. One by one, almost a thousand figures slowly approached here, surrounding the hotel. Are you sure, is that name talking about this place? After only about a hundred meters away from the target in front of them, the leader suddenly stopped, waved his hand, and then turned to look at a figure not far behind him. I have confirmed Lord Lieutenant General, but I am a little worried, and I received news that the demon Lord Luo Xian has also come to the Shambord Islands, do you say it will be? When that person said this, his body couldn't help but shake, as if he thought of something terrifying. Syllable. The Lieutenant General slapped the speaker on the head and cursed in a low voice. Less of his crow mouth. Can he say something nice in a day, how can it be that he made such a big move, just to save a fishman slave from under the Draco? But that person may be. The person who spoke before was a little dissatisfied, and just wanted to explain, but after seeing his dear lieutenant general hanging the two-foot-long slap again, his voice instantly lowered, until finally he couldn't hear what was said next. Okay, don't talk nonsense, prepare for a rest. Seeing this, the lieutenant general couldn't help but put down his palm, and he didn't have the heart to teach him a lesson, so he said something angrily. Somehow, perhaps under the influence of his subordinates, the lieutenant general's heart couldn't help but feel a little uneasy. If it were in peacetime, this little one dared to affect the morale of the army sergeant in the mission, he would have already begun to educate him with his two-foot-long big slap to open the bow left and right. Just as these people were about to rush into the room and capture the target. Inside the rooms of the hotel. At this time, Luo Xian, who was originally lying on his clothes, had long disappeared, 
and he was already dressed neatly, and opened the door of the hotel with a smile on his face. There are so many guests on the big night, it's really welcoming. Along with Luo Xian came Dragon Scroll and Bung Gwen Solon, as well as the four robins, who had been vigilant since childhood. As for the rest, those who are still lying in the dark and sleeping do not know anything. Navy Nicole Robin, who was standing on the very side, vaguely distinguished from these wearing the same white uniform by the faint light, and exclaimed in surprise. Wow! Seeing this, the many navies who had just raised their feet and were ready to sprint quickly stopped, although they looked a little flustered, but the movements on their hands were very stable. Thousands of navy members raised their guns and aimed them at Luo Xian and the others standing at the door. The expression was extremely cold, and an iron-blooded aura rushed to his face. On the contrary, their lieutenant general, at this moment, his expression was a little sluggish, and his reaction was more than a beat slower. Followed, there was also an adjutant standing beside him, the navy he had beaten before, and his expression was even more exaggerated than his commander. Luo, Luo, Luo Xian. Pointing at Luo Xian with one hand, the adjutant shouted with a panicked expression. This sound sounded piercing the clouds and cracking stones, like thunder, and in an instant the navies on the scene all had a chain reaction. One by one, their hands were trembling, as if the flintlock spear in their hands was weighing a thousand pounds. Snap! Smashed to the ground one after another. There was a lot of movement, and it instantly woke up the innkeeper who slept downstairs with his arms around Mei Jia Anyang. After raising his hand and pushing open the window hard, just when he opened his mouth and was about to scold, suddenly, the black figure standing below instantly filled his pupils. He was stunned, and the whole person was shocked. This is going to be done. Without the slightest hesitation, he closed the window again very quickly, lay on the bed with a quilt covering his head like an ostrich, shivering. Even the beautiful girl who was woken up by him called him, he didn't pay attention to it. In front of the store, Luo Xian did not care about the episode brought by the previous innkeeper, but watched with interest the spears dropped by many naval soldiers on the ground. His eyes narrowed, and his gaze stared at the one standing in the middle, the only person on the scene who hung a justice shawl, that is, the lieutenant general before, the meaning was a little unclear. You guys! Are you here to get me? No, no, ah! The lieutenant general on the opposite side saw Luo Xian looking at him, and suddenly felt that his throat was a little dry, and his tongue became stiff, and even, even he didn't know what to say. Brew brew brew. At this moment, the phone worm in Luo Xian's arms suddenly screamed, and he couldn't help but have some doubts. Who the hell called him at night? Not many people can know his phone, could it be that Clock Dar is in trouble? After taking out the phone worm from his arms, Luo Xian simply pressed the answer button and picked up the phone in front of thousands of navies. As for the previous lieutenant general, he directly ignored it. Hey, I'm Luo Xian. Riley. You're back. And collected all the materials we wanted. Okay, I know, go right away. After speaking, Luo Xian simply hung up the phone and a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Even looking around, the dense navy couldn't help but be a little pleasant. His steel behemoth finally has hope. After coming here for such a long time, I don't know how long it took to repair the ship and change ships, and there was no equipment on this ship, which made Luo Xian hold back for a long time. Wi-Fi, games, cell phones, nothing. He is a young man from the new century. He can endure until now, all thanks to the system that has brought him all kinds of surprises. Okay, let's go. In a good mood, he didn't have much mind to deal with the navy who disturbed his dreams. It is rare to be generous once, and decided to let these ignorant people go. Luo Xian's voice just fell. Yikes! In an instant, the navy that was still densely packed just now, wearing a uniform uniform, all disappeared in the blink of an eye. Only one person remained in place, his body trembling slightly, 
it was the adjutant who had been beaten by the lieutenant general before and the many flintlock muskets left on the ground near him that were too late to be taken away. There is no way, not to say that these navies are timid, from the moment the warring states learned that Luo Xian directly killed the two generals, they immediately ordered their deputies to quickly issue several orders about Luo Xian. After any navy sees Luo Xian, no matter what he is doing, he must turn a blind eye and must not interfere. Where Luo Xian is there, all navies must avoid. These two orders were given by the five old men of the warring states carrying the world government behind their backs. Compared to the four emperors, Luo Xian is really too iron-headed, and everyone understands the rules of convention. Don't look at the naval pirates fighting fiercely, in fact, because everyone has a sense of proportion. As long as no weakness is pinched, whether it is the four emperors or the admirals, they can all pass. The most offended are those pirates who have no strength, no power, and do not understand anything. The navy caught them, there is no way, so many taxpayers are watching, you always have to make some moves, make a show. Who is like Luo Xian, who is stunned, no matter what, he will go up and punish you to death, who can stand this? Like a flat-headed brother, anyone dares to scare and do not discuss it in advance. Oh, why aren't you leaving? Luo Xian looked at the adjutant standing in place and asked with interest. Even the dragon scroll and others standing behind Luo Xian couldn't help but be a little curious when they saw this, is this buddy so daring, not afraid of death? Legs, my legs are numb, the adjutant cried, looking at Luo Xian with some grievances, I, I'll leave now. After that, he clenched his fist hard and hammered his leg twice, and then he was ready to turn and leave. On the opposite side, Bangu and the others, who were standing beside Luo Xian, after hearing the adjutant's answer, their expressions were first startled, and then a little stoic. This guy is also a second man. Even the tornado on the side, the little face couldn't help but fly up with two red halos, looking delicate. It's just that this scene is not very obvious under the shadow of night, which makes Luo Xian miss a good opportunity. Hey, you wait. The adjutant had just walked a few steps not far when suddenly, Luo Xian's voice came from behind him. The frightened adjutant was instantly shocked, the whole clothes were instantly wet, a night wind blew through, and his back was cold and fluttering, he would not be going to regret it, kill himself. At this moment, he hated his two indisputable legs, and when it came to the critical moment, he dropped the chain, and this time it could cause a disaster, and even his own little life could not be saved. Standing in front of the shop, Luo Xian did not care about the already desperate adjutant, he turned to the tornado standing behind him and ordered. Go and get out that pervert who just came not long ago, didn't he keep yelling that there is no prison here? Send him now. Well. Got it, Brother Xian. After answering Luo Xian's words, the dragon scroll stood in place, without any movement, but his eyes flashed, and a green light appeared. The next moment, only a loud boom was heard, and a big man with a bare ass fell next to the adjutant who was still in place and was desperate, and appeared in front of everyone's eyes. Seeing this scene, Luo Xian was full of black lines, stretched out his hand to support his forehead and covered his vision. Even the sight and smell were reduced to the smallest range, clinging to his own body, deeply afraid of sensing something bad. There is no way, two spicy eyes, he is worried that he has needle eyes. As for the tornado standing beside Luo Xian, he had foresight and closed his eyes in advance. Well, what's wrong, what's going on? The sexy prisoner who was dragged out of the room and fell heavily on the ground finally woke up. He raised his head, opened his slightly misty eyes, and looked around. Suddenly, his gaze stopped, and his gaze fell on Luo Xian's body standing in front of the door, and his eyes couldn't help but show a touch of joy. Brother Xian! Shut up! Without waiting for the sexy prisoner to finish speaking, Luo Xian felt that the sweaty hairs all over his body instantly stood up, and he no longer had the calmness of the past. After stopping the sexy prisoner for the first time, he continued to maintain a posture of covering his eyes, 
forcibly endured the discomfort, and continued to instruct the tornado behind him without turning his head. Tornado, get his clothes out. There is no way, he is worried that as soon as he moves, he will accidentally see something that should not be seen. It's not that he Luoxian is pretentious, and it's not the kind of public bathhouse that he hasn't been to in his previous life. But I can't stand the strong picture that my brain makes. Thinking of the scene of his spicy eyes when he saw the sexy prisoner for the first time, Luo Xian even had the illusion that he was not clean and his eyes were polluted. And this time, it strengthened the thoughts in his heart. Since the system has a rule that killing is not allowed, then throw him far away, until he cannot see it. After hearing Luo Xian's words, the tornado standing in place didn't even open his eyes this time. Bang! Another loud noise resounded in the night sky, dispelling the tranquility of the Shambord Islands. Boom! Ah! The roar mixed with a scream echoed in the ears of Luo Xian and the others. Can't help it, Luo Xian had a trace of curiosity in his heart, what's going on, isn't it to let the tornado take two clothes? How did you make such a big movement, and still hear the screams of that pervert just now? Subconsciously, Luo Xian raised his hand slightly, carefully looking out through his fingers. Well? Luo Xian's eyes widened slightly, and then he lowered the hand that was blocking his eyes. Then, he shifted his gaze to the body of the tornado behind him, who still had his eyes closed, and a trace of stunned expression appeared on his face. Isn't that a bit exaggerated? Looking closely, the two people who were still standing in place just now and the sexy prisoner have disappeared. Instead, it was piled up with a pile of debris. Beds, cabinets, tables, chairs, and benches. Everything and so on, as long as everything in the room was cleaned up by the tornado, it was thrown over. Press two people underneath. Tornado, what are you doing? This pile of debris suddenly began to tremble slightly, and a human voice reached everyone's ears from it. Without waiting for the dragon scroll to speak, Luo Xian on the side spoke. Seeing that the ruins were stretched open and the sexy prisoners inside were about to come out, he spoke. Sexy prisoner, you wait first. What's wrong, brother Xian? After hearing Luo Xian's orders, the sexy prisoner stopped his movements. Don't you dislike the little brother who doesn't have any good looks here and want to go back to prison? There's the world's largest prison, full of all kinds of handsome men, and you can enter it with the navy who was next to you before. Luo Xian said. Really, brother Xian? The sexy prisoner's tone was a little puzzled. Whether it's true or not, I need you to go inside, got it? After hearing the questioning voice of the sexy prisoner, Luo Xian's tone couldn't help but aggravate a lot. Brother Xian, I know. Luo Xian's order, under the influence of the contract, the sexy prisoner agreed without the slightest hesitation. In an instant, Luo Xian's expression relaxed. In this way, the sad sexy prisoner was about to be thrown into the undersea prison not long after being summoned by Luo Xian. The screen turns. After dealing with the matter of the sexy prisoner, Luo Xian and the others immediately rushed to the dock where their ship docked before. They don't want to spend more time with sexy prisoners for a moment, and they are ready to leave the Shambord Islands overnight. Here, in addition to Luo Xian and their ship, there is another ship that is about the same size as Luo Xian, and I don't know where Riley got so many materials in such a short time. Luo Xian stood on the shore and quietly watched as Dragon Scroll and Bung Gu took the rest of the crew to transfer the materials brought by Riley to their own ship, without speaking. Behind him, there were still two people standing who did not go to help and go forward to carry the materials. Nicole Robin, I said, how did you think about it? Suddenly, Luo Xian withdrew his gaze from a distance and turned to one of the people standing behind him. I, Robin, who was standing behind Luo Xian, had a hesitant expression when he heard this. One thing, I want you to know, that is, the main body of history that I have is not just the location of those two pieces of the Kingdom of Arbistan. Luo Xian turned around, looked at Nicole Robin standing behind him, showed an unknown smile, and continued. 
Also, your life is mine now, I don't have time to discuss with you. His tone instantly aggravated, with a chill of Sensen, which made Nicole Robin, who was standing in place, couldn't help but shiver. After seeing Robin silent, Luo Xian did not say more nonsense, but looked at Solon who was standing on the side, and after his expression eased slightly, he instructed. Solon, I have handed over all the things that should teach you, and the rest is not something that can be learned just by looking at it. Go, take Robin back to the East China Sea, send her to the Kingdom of Alabaston, after Clock Dar's side, go find your own way. Master, I... Suddenly hearing the parting, Solon was a little confused, just when he had to say something. Go back to Siaki Bar in advance, where Hades Riley is coming again. Luo Xian, thank you. Riley, who came from a distance, greeted Luo Xian with a smile. Renly, it's nothing, aren't we trading? Luo Xian was noncommittal. Riley smiled and stopped talking, but in his heart he admired Luo Xian. Just now, he already knew from Xia Qi that Luo Xian had actually killed the Draco, and he knew that he had just made the chicken dog that the navy was making a fuss about. Now that he offended the world government because of such an uneconomical transaction, Riley couldn't help but be curious about Luo Xian instantly, he couldn't figure out what was going on in this young man's heart. After Roger, Luo Xian is the second young man he can't see through. However, how did he know that although all this does not seem very cost-effective on the surface, in fact, this is just his personal opinion. For Luo Xian, since the navy had been offended by him, it was only a matter of time before the world government was a matter of time. Since they had already made trouble at this point, he Luo Xian might as well take the opportunity to get some benefits from Rayleigh, after all, it was still very difficult for him to collect these things. Besides. These things are a big killer when used well. It's just that progress can be a little slow. Luo Xian, although we are just a transaction, after all, Xiao Bie is my lifesaver, and you saved Xiao Bie, I will definitely pay back the favor I owe you, on call. Riley said again. Oh yes, that's good. Luo Xian said a little surprised. He didn't expect that Hades Riley would tell himself again because of a little eight, so solemnly, you must know that he is Hades Riley's. In this pirate world, a person who seems to have a good temper, but has a very high spirit. What is represented behind this is not a simple sentence, but a deeper layer means that even if he Luo Xian takes Hades to assassinate the Draco, such outrageous conditions may be agreed. Ten minutes later. With the superpower of the tornado and the cooperation of everyone, the materials brought to them by Hades Rayleigh were finally successfully transferred to the ship. Gone. Seeing that everyone had been packed up and the personnel were in place, Luo Xian turned around and Renly and Solon who was standing in place, Robin said hello, his toes were a little on the ground, his figure flashed, and he appeared on the bow of the ship. Driven by the ability of the tornado, this ship, in this Luo Xian and the others, left here and set sail again. Solon and Robin were left alone. Not long after Luo Xian and the others left, Solon, Riley and the others had just left, several figures appeared on the edge of the pier again. Lieutenant General Karp, what if they leave? In the night, a naval non-commissioned officer glanced at Luo Xian's ship, which was gradually blurring and about to disappear from sight and looked up at the old man standing in front of him with silver hair and a justice shawl on his back fluttering in the wind. Haha, <laughs> Luo Xian, this little devil is really fast. Forget it, since we can't catch it anymore, then let's go back. After looking up at the ship that Luo Xian and the others had disappeared from his sight, Karp laughed loudly and was ready to turn and leave. But, Draco's side. The naval non-commissioned officer who spoke before was immediately anxious and hurriedly said. So what, just tell the truth, just say that I haven't seen anyone since I came here. Karp said casually with his adjutant without looking back. Ah, how does that work? After hearing such a perfunctory answer from his superior, adjutant Kairu became even more anxious, with a bitter face. 
The boss of his own family is good at everything, but at this point, he really likes to be perfunctory and indifferent to anything. Seeing that Karp's footsteps did not stop because of his own advice, he continued to walk towards the distance without hesitation. Kairu gave up, and just as he was about to follow, suddenly, he was pleasantly surprised to find that his superior, Lt. Gen. Karp, had stopped walking. What's going on? Could it be that Lt. Gen. Karp suddenly repented and thought of some good idea? Just as he was about to open his mouth, Kairu suddenly found that directly in front of Lt. Gen. Karp, several strangely dressed, strangely shaped and extremely tall people suddenly appeared, walking towards them with a mask. Kairu was a little puzzled, who is this and what are they doing here? CP0, why don't you protect your master, the world nobles, the Draco, why are you running here? Karp spoke, and the smile on his face disappeared a lot, and he said a little unpleasantly. What about Luo Xian? The one at the head did not answer Karp's question head on, wearing a mask for the reason, and spoke with an urn. He looked at Karp who stopped and asked condescendingly. Oh, I came to find Luo Xian. Just unfortunately, people have already run away on the boat. You're late. After a moment of abruptness, Karp replied with a slightly playful tone, then raised his foot again and prepared to leave. Obviously, Karp's answer, the masked man at the head was very dissatisfied, the brow under the mask twisted, and then he looked at Karp, who was about to lead his navy to walk away from him, and his tone instantly increased, and he shouted. Karp, pay attention to your identity, you dare to let go of Luo Xian, who killed the world noble, the Draco. A big hat instantly covered Karp's head. Instantly, after hearing these words, the adjutant Kairu who was following behind Karp, his expression instantly became panicked. For a moment, the air froze and the atmosphere became tense. The other side. The forces to which Whitebeard belongs in the waters where the fleet stays. Dad, the latest news, Luo Xian, who just killed the Draco, left the Shambord Islands with Ace. On the deck of the Moby Dick, a punk-headed man opened the cabin door and walked out quickly, shouting as he walked. In less than a minute, he had already crossed a distance of hundreds of meters and arrived in front of the largest chair on the deck. Luo Xian. Hearing the latest news reported by Marco, the white-bearded man sitting on this specially made huge chair narrowed his eyes, his eyes shimmered, and his tone was slightly dull, not knowing what he was thinking. Instead, standing on the deck, the sons of Whitebeard's men were all anxious after hearing Marco's words. They all ran over, grabbing Marco's arm and asking. If there is anything else you haven't said, talk about it quickly. Yes, Navy, they always like to wipe Draco's ass. Do you know where Luo Xian are going to go? In an instant, the originally quiet deck changed in a blink of an eye, and it was very lively. Now Luo Xian is a hot person, plus, Ace is still on his ship, and these sons of Whitebeard have no way not to care. Break into the city. Lian Yi, the three admirals of the navy. Now there is one more, and he has killed the nobles of the world, Draco. These things but none of them dared to imagine. Even if they are part of the four emperors. However, it was precisely because of this identity that while they enjoyed the incomparable power and security that the four emperors brought them, they were also restricted. No matter what it is, as long as you become bigger and stronger, you will eventually have the same path, and the navy, which symbolizes justice, is doing more evil things than pirates. The vicious pirates, but the substitute justice, manages the peace of this sea. Not only Whitebeard, but the four sea emperors of the New World are not like that, but each of them has different methods and methods. It's just a convention for everyone's benefit. Marco, who was a little beaten on the head by the noise of the people around him, grabbed a few handfuls on his head hard, and after making the originally neat punk hairstyle like a chicken nest, he stretched out his hand and raised his voice to the people around him and said. Okay. Everyone be quiet, don't disturb daddy thinking about things, if you want to know Luo Xian's news, I'll talk about it later. 
As soon as the words came out, the people around them instantly stopped, and the entire ship instantly became extremely quiet, and the drop of needles could be heard. One by one, their eyes stared at Marco tightly, their eyes full of hope and longing, and they stared at him with goosebumps and panic. Although Marco lost to Luo Xian in a previous one, and also left Ace behind and returned alone. But it still didn't matter, his position on this ship. Still the number two person on Whitebeard's ship, Whitebeard's right wrist. Standing in the middle of everyone, Marco was very satisfied to see everyone so cooperative, and then he stood silently in place, waiting for Whitebeard's decision. As if feeling the gaze from his many sons, Whitebeard smiled. Guru. Luo Xian, it's really a different little ghost, in that case, let's get ready and go out and bring my son, your brother, Ace, back. Got it, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. The quiet Moby Dick became lively again. The next morning. Lying in the cabin, Luo Xian slept soundly. Boom. Suddenly, a roar suddenly sounded, waking him up. With a sudden, Luo Xian, who was lying on the bed, suddenly opened his eyes, and his clear eyes did not have the slightest blur, and a sharp color emanated from them. Which thing is not long-eyed? Boom, boom, boom. The sound of shells bursting came from all around the ship, and everyone on board was awakened. Listening to the sound of dense shells roaring around, but none of them fell on his ship, Luo Xian, who had just dressed and came out of the cabin, raised his head and looked at Analu, who was on duty outside, and asked suspiciously. What's going on? Captain, the other party seems to be demonstrating against us, firing many shells, but none of them fell on the ship. Demonstration Luo Xian raised his head and looked at the three pirate ships with pirate flags blocking in front of them by the light that had just risen from the sea, and his face was a little gloomy. Originally, I left the Chambordi Islands overnight last night and was not slept until the early hours of the morning, but now someone dares to disturb his sleep, which is simply looking for death. I've been in this world for so long, it's the first time I've seen such a rampant person. Luo Xian looked at the pirate flag that made him a little familiar on the other party's ship from a distance, and his eyes released a sharp light. Bang bang! At this moment, on the middle ship on the opposite side, there was a sudden sound of dull footsteps, as if some behemoth came out of it. Luo Xian fixed his eyes and looked, and an extremely tall figure gradually walked to the bow of the opposite boat, revealing a figure, with a metal jaw on his mouth. Four Emperors Kaido, Drought. He looked at the two long bone white beast horns on the other party's head, and said with some surprise. No wonder he looks so familiar with the pirate flag with a horn skeleton hanging on the opposite ship. He doesn't remember the people who beat Kaido, why did Kaido's people find it? You are Luo Xian, our boss values you very much, come with me. Suddenly, the drought on the opposite side spoke, and he looked at Luo Xian standing on the boat from a distance, with a blank face, raised his chin, and said in a low and arrogant tone. A gesture of charity. Ding, the system released a new task, drought, as one of the three major kanban under Kaido, the four emperors of the new world, because of the importance of the beast emperor, specially came to recruit the host, whether to agree. Option 1, become the fourth kanban under the beast emperor Kaido. Mission completion rewards host summon points, 1500 points. Option 2, the four emperors Kaido, Moody. The host tried everything to make him cry. Mission completed, the system rewards the host with summon points, 2,500 points. Option 3, let this unknown drought feel the fear from the demon lord, the task is completed, and the system rewards the host with summoning points, 2,000 points. Ha, ha, ha. After listening to the meaning of the drought, Luo Xian directly ignored the prompt of the system in his mind first startled, and suddenly directly laughed angrily. Don't sleep in the morning, call him up just to show his nobility. Are the people of the hundred beast pirates all crazy? Boy, what are you laughing at? 
Listening to Luo Xian's laughter from afar, his expression instantly became unhappy, and his gloomy face flashed with killing intent. He now considered whether he wanted to kill Luo Xian directly here, after all, his appearance made him very unhappy. Do you value me, Kaido? Suddenly, Luo Xian's laughter suddenly stopped, his eyes were like two ice balls, exuding a chill, staring closely at the drought on the opposite side. He was in a very unhappy mood today, and he was woken up from his sleep twice in a row, and no one felt comfortable in his heart. What? There was an uproar on the other side. The many younger disciples standing behind the drought were all stunned when they heard Luo Xian's voice, and some even stretched out their hands and buttoned their ears, wondering if they had heard wrong. He, just, said, What? Did we hear you right? That person actually looks down on our boss. One by one, their voices were dry, and their voices were a little stuttered, trying to see something from each other's faces. Luo Xian, dare to be disrespectful to adults, you, you are dead. Standing in the front, ignoring the emotions of the younger brothers behind him, the drought at this time was as heavy as water, and his eyes stared directly at Luo Xian standing on the opposite side like a beast ready to attack terrifying. As soon as he finished speaking, his knees sank sharply, and his legs directly and frantically accumulated strength. Click, click. The wooden deck that had been trampled under the drought instantly let out a burst of screams, and spider web-like cracks instantly spread half of the deck. However, the drought did not care about everything at all, and his scarlet eyes kept staring at Luo Xian on the opposite side as if he wanted to swallow the other party into his stomach. Die! With the heaven-shaking roar, a sound wave that seemed to be substantial spread out to all around, and even the calm sea under the ship shook the waves of half a meter. The little brothers standing behind him had extremely painful expressions, desperately covering the position of their ears, and their faces were red, white, and earthy, just like characters in a play. There were even traces of blood oozing from the ear holes, along the fingers, lying on the arms, staining the placket. Most of them fell to the ground and rolled wildly, except for a few stronger people, whose faces were flushed and forcibly insisted on standing in place. And all this, standing in the front of the drought is all invisible, accompanied by the roar, the drought feet slammed on the boat. Bang! The bow of the ship shattered in half. Crash! The stern of the ship was jerked up and all the people on the same boat as the drought were affected, and one by one rolled towards the bow like a rolling gourd. At this time, the ship that was originally on the sea was stepped on by the drought, and it almost formed an angle of 80 or 90 degrees with the sea surface. On the other side, seeing the huge body of the drought rapidly approaching him, Luo Xian's brows frowned, it's really noisy. Zhang he held the afterimage sword taken out of the system space in his palm, and pointed at the drought in midair and slashed sharply. Without looking at the result, Luo Xian casually withdrew the sword in his hand, the coldness at the corner of his mouth had not yet dissipated, turned around and walked towards the cabin, and said a sentence halfway. These people, I don't want them to live. Bang! After that, with the closure of the cabin door, Luo Xian's figure had disappeared behind the door. At the same time, he was rushing towards Luo Xian and the other's boat, and the drought in midair saw Luo Xian holding a sword in his hand, and after casually pulling it towards himself, he turned and left, and his eyes shone fiercely. Pretend to be a ghost. When he gets on the boat, he must smash this Luo Xian's head into meat sauce. Not only him but even the rest of the fleet to which the drought belonged were relatively strong and could barely support standing in place, and several real fighters were almost amused after seeing this scene. Is this guy playing monkey tricks? Just as a smile appeared on their faces, the next time, all of their expressions froze. This, this, impossible. How so, how so? It shouldn't be, it's definitely fake. One by one, they looked madly at the drought in midair, and their faces were incredible. Follow their gaze. In midair, just now, he was still fierce and killing Ling Ran's drought, 
and his expression suddenly froze, and a blood line appeared on his forehead and extended downward. Burst. Then, before everyone could react, under the pressure of the heart, blood gushed out from the blood line on the drought body. Until the end, even the entire body of the drought was lifted, divided into two halves that were very symmetrical and average, fell into the sea, and disappeared in the eyes of everyone. The vein left a blinding bloody color, floating on the sea. This right-hand man under the four emperors Kaido, one of the three major Kanban droughts, was forever silent in this sea. Glory no more! At the same time that the drought fell into the water, behind him, the boat he had been riding on also had problems. Poof! In the stern of the ship finally fell from the air and smashed on the sea. Bang! After a muffled sound, the hull was also divided into two halves from top to bottom. Got it, Brother Xian. Got it, Captain. At the same time, the ship to which Luo Xian belonged. The tornado people standing on the deck watched Luo Xian's back disappear behind the door, and they all answered in unison in the direction of the cabin. After that, Dragon Scroll and the others looked at each other, and a killing intent appeared in their eyes. Wow! Just when the body of the tornado suddenly bloomed with a faint green fluorescence, Bung Guan the side suddenly spoke. As soon as he stretched out his hand, after stopping the tornado, he said with a smile, This time, let's come. The tornado did not speak, but the fluorescence on the body surface dissipated, and the hair that was half floating in the air also relaxed again. Opposite side. Just as Bung Guan and the others were attacking them, at this time, the people under the drought were still in the scene where their boss was knocked down by a move. Yikes! Facing Bang Gu, a group of ruthless people summoned from another world by Luo Xian, these fierce generals under the command of the four emperors Kaido were like lambs waiting to be slaughtered. What can be done is not to resist, but to tremble. In an instant, this sea area was once again dyed red, who would have thought that the fuse that caused all this was just a most inconspicuous reason? They disturbed Luo Xian to sleep. In this wail, Luo Xian was really like a peerless demon, sleeping soundly in this red-dyed, bloody sea. Meanwhile, deep above the clouds at the top of the Red Earth continent, the holy land of Mary Joa. It was the same place as last time, the meeting room that represented the highest power. It's the morning, and because the top architects have designed it, all the light transmission here is excellent. But even so, the warm sunlight could not dispel the cold atmosphere in this room. It's still the same place, and of course it's the same people. However, this time, the five old stars were not as calm as last time, and one by one, on their serious faces, they were once again a little more sad. They had been sitting here all night, and everyone's faces were full of tiredness. You know, such a situation generally does not happen to them although some are older, but the physique is there after all, not to mention that it is not sleeping for a night, or not sleeping for a week, and it will not be in such a state. The only explanation was the two figures who had not slept all night with them, but stood across from them. One tall and one short, one with a mask, one with a grin on his mouth, as if he didn't care about anything. It was the Chambordi Islands that missed the capture of Luo Xian's almost Kapu and the leader of CP0. It is very rare that Carp has not slept today. Let's talk about it, why did those navies who besieged Luo Xian on the Chambordi Islands retreat without a fight? One of them, an old man with a black beanie, said in a somewhat hoarse voice and a tired face. Ah, it's been said all night, and I didn't retreat without a fight it's just because Luo Xian's movements are fast and he didn't go head to head with the navy. The navy saw that the people had run away, there was no way, they could only retreat. Karp said nonchalantly, his right hand unconsciously lifted up, and then put it down, shrugged his nose, and then frowned, with an unnatural face. After carefully noticing Karp's movements, the bald five old stars couldn't help but frown slightly, and asked with an unpleasant face, Carp, what's wrong with you, is there something wrong? Oh, my nose is a little itchy, I want to pick my nostrils. Carp replied very directly, 
and even raised his right arm and stretched out the thick little finger to insert it, and his expression was refreshed. Comfortable. Finally dug it, they all endured all night, the warring states said not to sleep, and did not say not to pick their noses. He thought comfortably as he dug. Bang! Carp, where are you here? Slamming the table, the unbearable blonde and bearded five old stars stood up from the chair, looked at Carp who was unmanned next to him with a sharp face, and roared. One night, he endured the whole night. This Carp has always been like this, but it's just a dog they own, it's too arrogant and too unsightly. If not, with the identity of a naval hero, he would have found an opportunity to kill this unfamiliar white-eyed wolf. Not only him, but even the other old men sitting beside him, after hearing Carp's answer, looked at Carp's eyes much more dangerously. I've said a lot very clearly, you don't believe it, what can I do? Looking at the strange expressions of the five old stars in front of him, Carp still maintained the spirit that the dead pig was not afraid of boiling water and replied. Okay, I'll calm down, every time. Like what? Taking the lead in forcibly holding back the anger in his heart, the white straight-haired old man glanced at the blonde old man and Carp, and his expression once again returned to calm, easing the somewhat tense atmosphere at the scene. After seeing the blonde old man sit down unwillingly, he continued with a straight face. Now, the most important thing is how do we deal with Luo Xian's time bomb that may explode at any time. Everyone expressed their opinions, which should have been agreed upon at the last meeting, and the policy should be soft. But now, just last night, he actually killed the world nobles, and this time we need to change our opinion of him. Everyone, what do you think? The old man with long white straight hair swept his gaze towards everyone, including CP0 and Carp who were standing there, trying to see something under this face with different expressions. Just when the five old stars were painstakingly discussing ways to deal with Luo Xian. Our protagonist has just woken up and is sitting on the deck, fiddling with a suspected barbecue-like object on the deck, but with a somewhat different appearance, his surface is made of many boards of special materials. It seems that the size of the oven can be adjusted according to the needs of the owner. This was specially made by Luo Xian for Emperor Tong today, he has been in this world for so long, although he has eaten a lot of barbecue, but the taste is not right, and it is not at all the taste of barbecue that Luo Xian wants. One by one, it was so bad that Luo Xian decided to go into battle himself. Just as Luo Xian and everyone were eating a mouthful of oil, suddenly, the cabin door opened, and a petite figure ran out of it, it was Tong Di who stayed in his cabin all day and night blindly researched. Why, little boy, smell the fragrance. Luo Xian teased. No, brother Xian, how delicious the food made by the nanny robot I invented is, why do you have to make it yourself? Watching Luo Xian stretch out his hand from time to time and flip the barbecue placed on the grill, Emperor Tong asked suspiciously. Your nanny robot can't do this effect of mine, and it certainly doesn't taste good as mine. Luo Xian replied confidently. As a parent who has been around the barbecue chain since he was a child, he has already received the true legend of his parents, and he raised his mouth at a young age, and it is really a little difficult for him to come here and eat so much food that is difficult to swallow on the boat. No wonder Luffy wants to find a good cook, after coming here for so long. Luo Xian feels that he has lost weight. Can I make up for it in a hurry? That is, after Tong Di got out the nanny robot, this is better. How is it possible, my nanny robot is proficient in the cuisine of the whole world, even the best restaurant in the world, the Michelin chef is the highest level. Emperor Tong was a little unconvinced, saying that he could do anything, but he just couldn't underestimate the robot he made. Oh yes. Then don't eat it later. Luo Xian's eyes rolled and said with a smile. If you don't eat, you won't eat, I asked my nanny robot to do this too. Emperor Tong gambled on the air. Hey, hey. Looking at sitting on the side, waiting for the operation of the nanny robot, Luo Xian chuckled and stopped talking. Don't you dare to say in other aspects, on the barbecue, 
he grew up in the fire and is afraid that you are a broken copper and iron that has been artificially made? Fifteen minutes later. Emperor Tong was already about to eat, but when he saw that there were so many meats roasted by the nanny robot in front of him, his face showed difficulty. On the contrary, the roasted meat baked by Luo Xian on the side, even twice as much as the nanny robot, was now all divided by everyone. One by one, they held four or five skewers in their hands, and their mouths were full of oil. Emperor Tong couldn't help but pout, and muttered a little sourly, at first glance, it is fawning over Brother Xian, and what Brother Xian baked is delicious as my robot. Immediately, he set his gaze on Bangu and the others not far away, and said with a hopeful expression, Mr. Bangu, the tornado, you can eat some of my here. My babysitter robot baked it, it's delicious. After hearing Emperor Tong's words, everyone said in unison that they had almost eaten, and their stomachs could not hold it. After hearing this, Emperor Tong looked disgusted and despised, a bunch of licking dogs. But his mouth was very pitying, ah, then it seems that you have no mouth. Yours is too unpalatable, far worse than Brother Xian. The tornado that just swallowed the food in her mouth was a little unbearable to Emperor Tong's narcissism, and she who didn't have time to speak just now made up for it directly. How is it possible, absolutely impossible? My nanny robot, making each dish has a strict calculation formula for the length of time, the control of the heat, and even the amount of ingredients. Make sure that every dish and every ingredient can achieve the best taste and nutrition. Emperor Tong was not angry. Maybe Bung Guan the side really couldn't stand it, he was a little reluctant to pick and choose from the barbecue he grabbed a handful in his hand for a long time, and finally found a place with the least meat on it. He walked in front of Emperor Tong, and with some reluctance, he handed the barbecue in his hand to Emperor Tong's hand very reluctantly, and said, N.A., whether it is delicious or not, you have to eat it first to be qualified to evaluate, you can taste it first. I. Looking at the barbecue that was stuffed into his hands by Bang Wu, Emperor Tong said that he would not eat it, but looking at the tempting color on it, every piece of meat was thick with red sauce which made people watch the index finger move. The ghost made a difference, and Emperor Tong shrugged his nose slightly. Grunt. He couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva, and his mouth secreted saliva madly. Ah. Without any hesitation, he left the words of not eating Luo Xian's barbecue before, and directly stuffed the barbecue in his hand into his mouth and chewed it. One word, fragrant. Two words, so fragrant. Three words, so fragrant. Feeling the thick gravy secreted by the roast meat in his mouth under the squeeze of his teeth, Emperor Tong was intoxicated. Although it is a barbecue, it is not greasy at all, fat and lean, and its flavor is endless. Everyone on the ship looked at Emperor Tong's intoxicated little appearance, and they all smiled one by one, they all remembered what Emperor Tong said before. Soon, the string was finished, looking at the empty skewer in his hand, Emperor Tong was a little unfinished, he couldn't help licking the corner of his mouth, looking at the barbecue meat in the hands of others who had not yet had time to eat, and his eyes lit up. He felt his stomach hungry again. It was as if he hadn't eaten it just baked by the babysitter robot. That, Mr. Bung, are you, can't eat, or else, give it to me, don't waste it. Emperor Tong walked to Bangu Duo's side, stared intently at the roast meat in the other party's hand, and licked his face. No, I haven't eaten enough, don't you have a robot baked there, if you haven't eaten, eat that, your robot baked can still eat, it's not poisonous. Bung Gu didn't want to think about it, and directly refused. Seeing that it didn't work here, Emperor Tong stared at the tornado on the side, it was said that girls generally couldn't eat much. He had just found that the tornado had eaten a lot, and now it should be almost full, than the one in her hand. Grunt. Emperor Tong couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva. Get out. Without waiting for Emperor Tong to speak, after noticing his gaze, Dragon Scroll directly sent him a word, and then turned his head to the other side. Brother Xian. 
Emperor Tong looked at the barbecue in the hands of several people around him, and after finding that there were not many left, he couldn't help but cry with a small face, looking at Luo Xian, who was busy with a large piece of barbecue in front of the barbecue stall, with a pitiful look, and begged. Until this time, in the eyes of people, Tong Di was like a real child, and he was no longer a genius teenager of S-class heroes. Syllable After Luo Xian finished grilling the last handful of barbecue in his hand, he picked it up and turned off the oven casually, still maintaining the same expression as before, looking at Emperor Tong with a smile, and said playfully, I remember that you seem to have said just now that you don't eat the barbecue I made. I, Emperor Tong was a little unreasonable, and after pursing his lips a few times, he stared at the grill that had been extinguished for a long time with some reluctance, and then lowered his little head. It seems that today I don't have the barbecue meat of Shang Xian brother who almost eats. Looking at Emperor Tong's appearance, Luo Xian couldn't help but shake his head, bypassing the grill and walking towards Emperor Tong, no matter how high your IQ is, after all, you are just a child, and the people take food as the sky. No matter who it is, they can't resist the temptation of food. Okay, eat, this is baked for you. Luo Xian walked in front of Emperor Tong, and handed the barbecue in his hand with a smile to Emperor Tong, who lowered his head. Hey! Hearing Luo Xian's words, Emperor Tong suddenly found that there was suddenly a big barbecue in front of him, and he subconsciously took it. Then he seemed to have thought of something, quickly raised his head, looked up at Luo Xian, handed the barbecue in his hand back to Luo Xian without hesitation and said, Brother Xian, you eat, I was full just now. Seeing this scene, Luo Xian smiled, stretched out his hand and rubbed Emperor Tong's head a few times, and said, You eat, this is baked for you, I have already eaten it just now. We can't starve our scientists anymore. Ha ha ha. After seeing this scene, the people around all laughed in unison. Emperor Tong's little face couldn't help but turn a little red, and it seemed that he was shy. By the way, Xiao Tong, did you have something to do with me before? Luo Xian looked at Tong Di, who was throwing off his cheeks and eating with a mouth full of oil, thinking that the other party seemed to have something to say before looking for him, and asked. Hmm, Gollum. Hearing Luo Xian's question, Emperor Tong rubbed his neck, fiercely swallowed the roast meat in his mouth, and after swallowing it with some difficulty, he stretched out his hand and wiped a few handfuls on his mouth casually, then quickly raised his head and quickly said to Luo Xian. The space on the ship is so small that to build a big ship, you need a large warehouse and a laboratory for making precision parts for engines. Lab Luo Xian frowned slightly after hearing this. This kind of place is rare in the pirate world. Naval Scientific Experimental Base in Vegapunk? Mobile base of Germa 66 in the West Sea? Still is. Suddenly, Luo Xian's mind flashed, and he thought of a good place. Not only was the place big, but it was also rarely disturbed. Then he lowered his head and looked at Tong Di, who was still frantically exporting the large handful of barbecue in his hand, and said with some joy, I know where there is a place that meets your needs. Well, really, Brother Xian. Emperor Tong was also a little happy, and looked at Luo Suandeo with a hopeful expression. Really? After Luo Xian looked at Emperor Tong and responded seriously, he turned to look at the people sitting on the side against the barbecue in their hands, and continued to order, after everyone has eaten, arrange to start the boat. Well, got it, Brother Xian. Got it, Captain. Everyone hurriedly responded. The tornado on the side quickly threw the last barbecue in his hand in his mouth and stuffed it with a bulge. After wiping her fingers, the barbecue she chewed in her mouth, and a burst of green bloomed on her body, ready to activate her superpowers. Tornado, don't worry, now the ship has been equipped with the temporary engine that Emperor Tong gave for research, just try it, just pass slowly, you can also rest. After seeing the action of the tornado, Luo Xian knew that the tornado would be wrong, and he hurriedly stopped the other party. Oh, good. 
The tornado was startled for a moment, then lowered his hands, and the green glow in his whole body disappeared, and he sat back again, concentrating on the food in his mouth. Seeing this, Luo Xian couldn't help but smile, he didn't expect that this tornado still has such a cute side, it seems to be a big foodie. A few minutes later. After everyone had eaten and cleaned up. The ship under their feet finally started again, starting another and different journey. Just when Luo Xian and the others finished eating the delicious barbecue and happily heading towards the unknown destination, the Beast Emperor on the other side was grief-stricken, and the entire room was full of his crying. In front of Wayno country, in a rough sea, there is an island shaped like a skeleton with horns. The whole island is pitch black, without a trace of green, even in the daytime, it is still a little eerie, coupled with the sound of ghosts crying wolves from it, which adds a bit of chill to the place. Everyone, discouraged. Deep in the dark hole at the mouth of the skull on the island, there is an extremely wide hall, because of the dim light here, the temperature here is not very high, and it is even a little cool. The entire hall seemed empty, appearing extremely empty. At the highest part of the hall, there was a chair-like thing, on which sat a tall burly man with two black beards like dragon whiskers pulled down casually under his nose. His whole body was tied with muscles, and his black hair and shawl, like a peerless beast, were full of fierce aura and bloomed. Even the air is backlogged. However, it was such a domineering man who looked domineering today, crying loudly at a body lying in front of him that was a little white with water. Heartbroken. People can't help but think of some bad pictures. It's so incongruous. My poor brother, did you just die? It's so pitiful, even the body is split in half. Kaido choked up and looked at the drought in front of him, who was salvaged by his subordinates and sent back and said with a sad face. It was because his heart was hot and he gave birth to a heart of love that he let the drought go to recruit Luo Xian, he never thought that he would lose a love general after going out like this. Luo Xian, yes, it's him, Luo Xian. Suddenly, Kaido, who was sitting in the seat, seemed to have thought of something, and his expression slowly became more firm, and even his voice slowly became louder. His expression began to become fierce, and his scarlet eyes chose to eat. Luo Xian. With a low roar, Kaido's eyes instantly changed drastically, turning into a pair, ruthless, blooming fierce vertical pupils. I'm going to avenge my brother. A wave of substantial sound emanated from his mouth, and the light appeared, as if a holy beast had been born. Kaido's whole person was shrouded in colorful light, forming a giant egg. Roar. Suddenly, there was a roar from within the light curtain, like a dragon's groan. The next moment, I didn't wait for a reaction. Bang. The light curtain exploded, and a scarlet beam suddenly burst out of it, which was the light emitted by Kaido. Immediately afterwards, Kaido, who was like the giant before, disappeared, like the dragon in ancient mythology, covered in scale armor and revealed. Like the king who controls the sea in the pirate world, he does not wait to react. Yikes! The dragon that Kaido transformed disappeared in place, flew into the distance, and gradually disappeared into the sky. Luo Xian, wait for me! A roar resounded over the country of Wano, startling everyone here. He wanted to find Luo Xian to avenge his brother. That's the chief. What's wrong with him, who is Luo Xian? I've never heard of anyone who can make the leader so angry. You still don't know that Lord Drought died and was killed by that Luo Xian, and the reason why the leader made such a big movement this time was because he wanted to avenge Lord Drought. Standing on the side, an insider who was also Kaido's subordinates, who had returned with them from the Drought, heard the discussion of these people, and some couldn't help but tease the latest information they knew. What? Lord Drought is dead. Or was it killed by a person named Luo Xian? For a while, the entire country of Wano shook. Just because of the words Kaido said when he left, it was also because of Luo Xian's sword. The other side. Just as Kaido left the country of Wano in an imposing manner to find Luo Xian and prepare for revenge, 
our master Justin lay on the ship and read the latest newspaper. Of course, every protagonist cannot lack the presence of a woman by his side. Behind Luo Xian, because Emperor Tong installed a power engine for the ship, the idle tornado once again took up his old business, took out more than twenty years of experience, and was massaging Luo Xian's shoulders and head. Oh, why is it news about me again? Feeling the special touch of the soft fingers of the tornado sliding around his temples, while receiving the prompt that the system sounded in his mind that the task was completed, Luo Xian felt very comfortable. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully completing the task that made Kaido cry. The system rewards the host with 2,500 summon points and a one-level increase in physical strength. Ding! The summoning points that the current host has are, 4,500 points. Feeling the crispy numbness coming from every inch of his body's muscles, and the fullness of his strength, Luo Xian's mood was very satisfied. But when he saw the cover of the newspaper in his hand, his expression instantly became bored. Shock, two admirals of the navy were seriously injured, the reason is unknown. Looking at the headline on the front page above, Luo Xian couldn't help but laugh. Sure enough, it is this plausible thing again, I don't know how many times it has been reported, or this non-nutritious thing. I really don't know how those pirates floating on the sea can stand it and watch this kind of thing every day. Almost all of the top combat power on the surface of the navy has been rounded by itself, except for the older generation who have not confronted themselves head on. In the last battle, Luo Xian didn't need to think carefully, he could calculate how much mid and high level combat power the navy had lost. When his strength was at the lowest level, he didn't mention it first, let's talk about the lieutenant general, and he saw about four or five people who were accidentally injured in that battle, and two or three who died. Plus two admirals. Gee. The world government is really still that world government, and it always puts face first, especially the five stubborn old rotten people at the top. Luo Xian does not believe that the boss of the news agency, Morgans, will not know that it is he who caused the disruption of the navy? I definitely received a warning from those five old men. Originally, when reading the original work, Luo Xian was still a little puzzled, how powerful the boss of the newspaper was backstage, even the scandal made by Big Mom and the group of the four emperors dared to record and take photos directly in front of each other. In the end, it was reported directly. Unexpectedly, after all, his status is limited, and he still can't touch something like this that is related to the face of the world government. He can imagine it now, and those five old men of the world government don't know what the rush is like. Just when Luo Xian felt amused in his heart about the handling of the world government, suddenly, his eyes froze, as if he saw something. Directly in front of the ship. There is a place where the clouds are thick, as if a storm is coming, which makes people look at it, and they can't help but feel a lot more depressed in their hearts. Under the suppression of this thick black cloud, there is a small island shrouded in fog, looming, like a mirage. The purple unknown gas exuded an ominous aura, as if a demon was hiding in it, waiting for the opportunity to reach his mouth. That is. Behind Luo Xian, a voice with a puzzled tone suddenly sounded, it was Emperor Tong who rarely took the time to relax on the deck. Our destination, kid your lab. Looking at the island in the distance that exuded a thick and ominous aura, Luo Xian did not have the slightest disgust, but instead showed a faint joy on his face, and replied extremely easily to Emperor Tong who was standing behind him without turning his head. Oh, really? Emperor Tong who had always had a large research room in the Hero Guild and belonged to him, suffered after being summoned here by Luo Xian. At the beginning, there was not even energy, but in the end, after Luo Xian took Analu, this biggest problem was solved. Then there was his research room, which could only be aggrieved to stay in a cabin that was short and small, the size of a firewood box. In the past few days, Emperor Tong has been wronged. There is no equipment, which simply affects his performance. Now, when he heard his brother Xian say that he had found an entire island for himself to use as his own laboratory, he directly made Emperor Tong happy. 
In the past few days, even his favorite research has not been in the mood to do, just running vigorously to the deck, ostensibly to relax, but in fact, to see how far away he is from his laboratory and when he will arrive. For him, as long as the place is large, it doesn't matter what the conditions are. Time passed quickly, and as time passed, Luo Xian and the other's ship finally approached the island that Emperor Tong had been waiting for for a long time and came to the shore. Brother Xian, why is there so many harmful substances in the air here? Just after disembarking from the ship, Emperor Tong listened to the strong warning sound from the computer, his face was a little surprised, what kind of crazy things were the people here studying to turn this good island into a dead place? Hehe, he, don't care so much, have you done the gas mask that you made in advance before? Luo Xian looked at the tattered gate in the distance and asked with a smile. Well, it's already done, give. Emperor Tong pulled out a frog-like mask from behind his backpack and handed it to Luo Xian. Hey, I don't have to, you give the gas mask to everyone. Luo Xian waved his hand and refused. But... Just when Emperor Tong wanted to say something, Bang Wu, who was also looking at the situation here, spoke. Emperor Tong, Mr. Captain, you don't have to worry, his body is very strong, and he is not afraid of toxins that are even more powerful than this. Hurry up, take out the mask. Okay, I see. After listening to Bang Gu's words, Emperor Tong had to give up. Since Mr. Bung Gu has already said it, it means that Brother Xian does not need to worry about him at all. Then, he turned his head and looked at Anilu, who had just disembarked from the ship, and ordered, Anilu, you give everyone the gas mask in your bag. Hmm. Anilu nodded very crisply and took off the package on his back. Now he has obviously been sent by Luo Xian to Emperor Tong as a helper and the generator that is self-propelled can of course be placed by Emperor Tong's side to exert its greatest effect. After everyone was wearing gas masks, Bangu was just about to step forward and open the gate of the island, when suddenly, the radar on Tong Di on the side sounded. Di di di. Well, what's wrong? Bangu stopped the movement in his hand, turned back to look at Emperor Tong and asked. Some people are thinking that we are approaching in this direction, and the number of other parties is quite a lot, it can be said that there are many, and the dense crowd is innumerable. Looking at the red dot on the radar, Emperor Tong raised his head and looked at everyone, with a solemn expression. Hey! Emperor Tong's words made Luo Xian's brow slightly locked, at this time, how could there be so many people in this place suddenly come here? Could it be the Navy? Shouldn't he, shouldn't he have already given up here? Still is. Da Flamingo? Involuntarily, Luo Xian cast his gaze in the direction pointed by Tong Delay and looked over. Suddenly. In the field of vision of Luo Xian and others, one, two, three. Dense, countless ships suddenly jumped in their sight. Like ten thousand horses galloping on the grassland, the momentum is magnificent and unstoppable. As time passed, the other party's ships got closer and closer to them, and Luo Xian and the others finally saw the full picture of the other party. When he saw the familiar sign painted on the sails of the other party, his face couldn't help but show a touch of surprise. This is... Whitebeard? Looking at the other party's appearance, he came specifically to find himself. It's really spoiled for his son. Luo Xian's eyes couldn't help but show a faint fighting intent, and the corners of his mouth also hung a chuckle. After all, how can the other party also be called the strongest man on the sea, Luo Xian still wants to compete with the other party to see where his strength is. The two admirals in the navy are too weak. Anilu, go and call Ace out of the ship, just say that his beloved daddy is coming to pick him up today. Seeing that Whitebeard had arrived, Luo Xian ordered Ani Road, who was standing not far away. Got it, Captain. Anilu answered very obediently, and then his body flashed abruptly, turned into an arc of electricity and disappeared from the place, and in a blink of an eye, he appeared on the deck, opened the cabin door and walked in. When the dragon scroll boarded, 
he obediently withdrew the superpower he was about to launch, and obediently stood in place waiting for Luo Xian's orders. On the opposite side, on the fleet to which Whitebeard belonged, from the moment Whitebeard held a pheasant knife and disappeared in place, the expressions of these crew members all subconsciously relaxed, standing quietly in place, watching their father's performance. Four Emperors The strongest man on the sea. This is Father Ace's fleet. Sure enough, what I said to him, I don't know, his white-bearded daddy is just as domineering and powerful as he said to him. Seeing that the speed of the other party's ship began to slowly decrease, it directly surrounded them and even the people and boats on the island, and even, the largest ship led by them had stopped in place. Bung Wu said with some curiosity. Like Luo Xian, his eyes also flashed with a strong fighting intent, and he really wanted to see the man who was both domineering and gentle in Ace's mouth. I believe that they should also have a common language as old men. Bang, bang, bang. At this moment, in the eyes of Luo Xian and the others, accompanied by a dull and loud sound of footsteps, a tall figure walked to the bow of the ship with his head held high. Behind him, there were some dwarfs who looked like him, filling the first half of the hull. You are Luo Xian. Suddenly, standing in front of the bow of the ship, a white beard with a white shawl, suddenly spoke. His voice was very thick and powerful, not like an old man with a full body at all, but like a middle-aged man in the prime of life, his eyes calmly stared at Luo Xian standing below, Gu Jing Wubo. People can't see what is hidden under these eyes. Good. Luo Xian, who was standing in place, had a smile at the corner of his mouth, without the slightest retreat, and also turned his gaze to the other party, not humble or arrogant. A pair of black eyes exude a faint light, which is breathtaking. After this simple conversation ended, the air instantly became depressed, making everyone in the field feel a little heavy, and their expressions became serious. Slowly. I don't know how long it took, and suddenly, the white-bearded man standing in front of the bow smiled. Without warning. Gu la la la, Luo Xian, you are very good. Whitebeard said with admiration. The laughter was heaven-shaking, and it spread far away, as if it had a strong infectious power. Whether it was Bangu behind Luo Xian, Emperor Tong, or the subordinates and sons belonging to Whitebeard, his heart couldn't help but relax, and his clenched hands all relaxed. But... Immediately afterwards, he spoke again, causing the hearts of everyone present to instantly jerk, as if they were being clenched into a ball. This relaxation feels extremely uncomfortable. He is worthy of being called the strongest man on the sea, showing domineering between words and deeds, so that the people around him can't help but follow each other's rhythm. Everyone will be weaker. Since you dare to blackmail my white beard, you must be ready to accept the wrath of my white beard. Zhang. A soft groan sounded, and the white beard suddenly reached out and flicked the pheasant in his hand, and stepped on the ground on his tiptoes. Yikes! At the same time as the thick voice sounded, his figure jumped out and appeared in midair. The white shawl was blown by the wind, and the white beard raised the pheasant knife in his hand with both hands, and directly slashed down at Luo Xian below. Under this extreme power, the pheasant knife in Whitebeard's hand directly split the air and brought a burst of screams, and after reaching everyone's ears, the piercing eardrums hurt. Bangu standing behind Luo Xian felt the power coming from Whitebeard's body, and the speed of his heartbeat increased a lot, and the battle intent rose in his eyes, like a raging fire. He clenched his fists, a little unable to hold back. At this moment, the eyes of the other half of the tornado suddenly bloomed green, Looking at this look, he wanted to personally help Luo Xian block the attack. Tornado, stop! Feeling the movement coming from the tornado behind him, Luo Xian looked at the pheasant knife in Whitebeard's hand without squinting, which had reached the top of his head. With an indifferent smile on the corner of his mouth, he said to the tornado in an unheard tone. He also wanted to see for himself how powerful this legendary man, the Emperor of the Sea who carried the will of the old times. Yes, Brother Xian. When the Dragon Scroll boarded, 
he obediently withdrew the superpower he was about to launch, and obediently stood in place waiting for Luo Xian's orders. On the opposite side, on the fleet to which Whitebeard belonged, from the moment Whitebeard held a pheasant knife and disappeared in place, the expressions of these crew members all subconsciously relaxed, standing quietly in place, watching their father's performance. Four Emperors The strongest man on the sea. As long as the shot is made, the opponent will definitely fall at the feet of their father, and there is absolutely no second result. Even if he was Luo Xian, Luo Xian, who forcibly broke into the city, defeated Luo Xian who defeated the two admirals alone. They still believe that the other party is not their father's opponent. Maybe this is the love from daddy. Let these children who grew up under the shade of white beards and have not suffered much wind and frost all have a blind self-confidence. Luo Xian is going to suffer a loss. There is no way, who let him kidnap Ace and still think of blackmailing daddy. Alas, in fact, I still adore him, after all. Only he dares to do such a fierce thing as breaking into the city and killing the Draco. In everyone's gaze, the knife in Whitebeard's hand was finally about to cut at Luo Xian's body. This scene mobilized the hearts of everyone present. Compared to the calmness of the crew standing behind Luo Xian, the crew on the white-bearded side were all making noise. No, why is Luo Xian still standing still, does he have to wait for death? Those who can defeat the generals should not only have this little strength. Not to mention that you can block daddy's move, can't you even react to the move? At this moment, on the white-bearded boat, outside of Marco, everyone looked at the scene in front of them, and their eyebrows couldn't help but wrinkle. The people who can make daddy and them fancy shouldn't be so weak. Only Marco had an extremely serious expression, standing motionless in place his eyes staring at Luo Xian's expression tightly. It seemed that he wanted to see from Luo Xian's indifferent cheek that the other party was not at all wrong, so as to find out what Luo Xian would do next. Only after fighting with Luo Xian like him can he truly understand the horror and perversion of Luo Xian. Especially every time Luo Xian showed an expression like this, then his enemies should pay attention. Ding, the system releases a new task, Whitebeard, like an emperor in the second half of the Great Voyage, the New World, known as the Emperor of the Sea, one of the four emperors, in order to recover his life, wants to use all his strength to protect one of his sons, Ace, who was forcibly left on his ship by the host, finally set out to find it. Option 1, without any room for negotiation, directly force Whitebeard to hand over the ransom and redeem Ace. Mission completed, System Rewards Host Summon points, 2,000 points. Option 2, there is no title of the strongest man on the sea, this is just a dying hero, want to find his son, the host unconditionally released Ace, the task is completed, the system rewards the host summoning points, 1,500 points. Option 3, the highest state of blackmail kidnapping, the host makes Whitebeard willingly pay the ransom, and also wants the other party to have a good impression of the host. Mission completed, the system rewards the host, summons 3,500 points. Opposite side. Listening to the prompt sound of the system in his ears, Luo Xian, who was very calm, finally moved and while a smile of unknown meaning appeared at the corner of his mouth, his fighting spirit rose. The black shirt on the body, no wind automatically. Suddenly. A silver light flashed in Luo Xian's starry eyes. A murderous aura instantly rose out of thin air around them. The will to fight, the sword is ready. Luo Xian held the afterimage sword in one hand, like a sword fairy in the world, waving his arm, and on the surface, he seemed to flutter lightly towards the white bearded on the opposite side. These two, one domineering, the other ethereal and free, two completely different momentums like needles against Mai Mang. The nervous hearts that affected everyone present finally collided together. Oh! First, a sharp sound of sword clashing sounded, so that everyone's hearts couldn't help but tug together, all the people who heard this sound, all the organs in the body seemed to stop working in an instant, even the blood flowing throughout the body, all over the body, all over the body in the blood vessels appeared a brief stagnation. 
The next moment, without waiting for everyone to react, the moment of climax came. Airplanes. Suddenly, a white point of light appeared from the very center of the collision between the two and rapidly expanded. In a circular shape, a substantial white air pressure instantly spread around, accompanied by a roar that was extremely loud, so that everyone's ears were once again destroyed. Thundered. The surface under the feet of Luo Xian and Whitebeard instantly cracked, layer after layer of land was directly plowed, and even the rock layer more than 10 meters below was scraped up several layers, turning into pieces, with extremely strong inertia, the shells that had just come out of the chamber raged around. Bang bang! At this moment, all the people not only could not open their eyes, but even their ears could not hear clearly, except for those who had seen and heard. They all became a plant person with an independent consciousness who could not accept any external information. At this time, the people on the Whitebeard ship were unlucky, except for a few relatively strong captains, the rest of the team members were all under this strong momentum, as if they had suffered a heavy blow, and they all slid out backwards towards the rear. Ping Pong, what's more, was suddenly hit by the stones flying up under the feet of Luo Xian and Whitebeard, causing a small injury. The air was instantly filled with the smell of blood. On the contrary, Bangu and Tongdi and the others who were standing behind Luo Xian did not receive much influence, and they were safe and sound under the protection of the superpower barrier used by the prescient tornado earlier. It's just that their ships are unlucky, and they are riddled with stones, as if they have been humiliated by a dense cannonball. A crisp bang sounded in this huge roar. The anchor with thick chains that held Luo Xian and their ship was overwhelmed and broken from the source, and at this moment, the ship began to float towards the distance of the island like a wild horse that had lost its reins. In the cabin, the two people of Anilu, who were just about to go out with Ace, who was handcuffed with Halo Stone, were greatly affected by this huge movement, and their steps stumbled, and they almost fell to the ground. From afar, this small island that has been suppressed by black clouds for many years and covered by purple unknown fog at this moment, under the blowing of this rapid air pressure, the line of sight finally began to become clear. The whole picture of the entire island finally began to slowly appear in the public's sight. Island Center Inside an abandoned building that looks very dilapidated on the surface. A man with long dark purple-blue hair on his back and a bunch of horns on his head, wearing a gasified coat, was standing in front of a suspected test bench operating a huge instrument, carefully spraying an extremely special color gas against an apple placed on the instrument table. His expression was nervous, and his eyes were fixed on the stage motionlessly, just as his finger on the start button was about to be pressed. Suddenly, a violent tremor came from a distance, and the entire laboratory shook violently. Snap, bones. In an instant, in the man's unexpected eyes, the apple that was placed on the test table slammed into the table, jumped out of the platform, fell to the ground, and rolled into the corner. Hey! What's going on, is there an earthquake? Why didn't the machine give warning? Ignoring Apple, who no longer knew where to go, this strangely dressed man let go of the machine in his hand in a little panic and began to look around quickly. After identifying the direction, he opened a door and ran towards another room. The edge of the island, where Luo Xian and the others were. After being ravaged by a strong barometric storm, the island has finally returned to calm again. However, at this time, the position of Luo Xian and Whitebeard had already changed greatly. The ground that had been shrouded in poisonous gas for many years, and the erosion, which had begun to have some purple tones, had disappeared, and a large pit tens of meters deep had appeared. At the bottom of the big pit, Luo Xian and Whitebeard stood opposite each other at a distance of about 10 meters. The faces of the two were rosy, and their clothes were not messy in the slightest, only Luo Xian's hairstyle and the iconic crescent-shaped white beard under the white beard's nose were blown away a little. Obviously, the previous collision did not affect the two in the slightest. Gu la la la! Luo Xian boy, your strength surprised me. Suddenly, the white beard man standing on the other side spoke. He first let out a signature laugh from his mouth, and then, 
he looked at Luo Xian with his eyes level, and his expression was slightly surprised to fall on Luo Xian's white face, without any traces of years left on it, full of vitality, extremely handsome face. From the first glance when he saw Luo Xian before, he couldn't help but feel a little surprised in his heart that this young man who had turned the navy upside down was even younger than what he had seen on the bounty order. After galloping on the sea for so many years, until now, he has firmly sat on the throne of the four emperors and has become a person who makes countless people dream. He had experienced countless experiences with his white beard but he had never seen someone with such terrifying strength at such a young age. Even the redhead that surprised him last time, leading a group of brothers to become the youngest four emperors, did not have Luo Xian's influence at this time, which shocked him. Until he really fought with the other party just now, this gentlest and most domineering man on the sea was finally surprised. With the blow just now, Whitebeard was already able to conclude that Luo Xian's strength now was no less than that of the four emperors. Although, in the previous blow, he had spare strength, just to teach this young man who did not know the height of the sky. However, what he really didn't expect was that Luo Xian actually caught it head on, even at the last moment, he used all his strength, but still unsuccessful, and did not succeed in making Luo Xian take half a step back. It's not just white beards. Even after the air pressure generated by the previous collision between Luo Xian and Whitebeard blew all of Whitebeard's fleet back hundreds of meters, he finally eased up and propped up everyone from the deck. After seeing Luo Xian, who was still firmly in place without the slightest defeat, everyone to whom Whitebeard belonged, from top to bottom, whether it was the captains of each team and the crew under his command, all of them unconsciously gasped after seeing this scene. One by one, their eyes were a little dull, staring at the Whitebeard and Luo Xian who were in the field, and their faces were full of incredible expressions. This, this, can't be a dream, right? Seeing this, one of the crew members said in a somewhat stammering tone. Yes, it shouldn't be, could it be that Luo Xian really caught daddy's blow? At this moment, the world view of the crew members on the Whitebeard ship was directly subverted by the scene in front of them. They never thought that in this world, in addition to those strong figures of the older generation, there were still people who could catch the blow with full force head on. Distance In the sea area a kilometer away from the shore where Luo Xian and the others were, a ship full of holes and devastation was slowly beginning to sink. Bubbles began to bubble up on the sea around the hull. Bang! At this moment, with a muffled sound, the ship, the already twisted and deformed cabin door was suddenly kicked into the sky from the inside, dragged a graceful arc, landed on the sea hundreds of meters away, and sank. The next moment, two figures appeared, one after the other jumped out of it, one of them pulled and hit the other person stepped on the moon step and left the place, spanning thousands of meters and then falling back to the previous coast again. I'll go, it's too dangerous, I almost drowned. With his hands on his knees, Ace bent over, panting and looking in the direction of the ship they had been on on the surface of the sea that had disappeared, his eyes full of happiness. Analu, who put him down, did not say much, but turned to look at one of the two figures standing at the bottom of the pit in the distance. Captain, I brought Ace here. Oh yes. Luo Xian raised his head and followed the voice to look at Ace, who was standing beside Analu, and seemed to have completely forgotten to stand opposite him, with whom Whitebeard had just fought. Obviously, he is still very comfortable with Whitebeard's character. Not only Luo Xian, but even the white-bearded man on the opposite side raised his head after hearing Analu's voice and looked towards Ace, who was half squatting outside the pit. Ace. Hey. Who is calling himself, Ace followed the voice with some doubt, turned his head and looked towards the tall figure standing under the pit. Daddy. Why are you here? Looking at that familiar face, Ace shouted with a look of surprise. From the attack of the fleet led by Whitebeard, and then the confrontation with Luo Xian, and finally the destruction of Luo Xian and the other ships. This series of things happened, and Ace, who had been staying on the ship, did not see it. Even the moment he came out of Analu, 
he was glad that he was not dead and did not have time to pay attention to the surrounding environment. Only now, when he heard Whitebeard call him, did he react. Whitebeard glanced up and down, and after finding that Ace had not received any harm, his expression became even more relaxed. For a while, the fierce intense atmosphere before instantly eased a lot. After retracting his gaze from Ace's body, Whitebeard once again focused his gaze on Luo Xian, who was standing 10 meters in front of him. Listen to Marco, you want 120 million Bailey. Whitebeard raised his eyebrows slightly and asked with a smile. There is no way, your dear son Ace destroyed my ship. Luo Xian, who was standing opposite, said with a chuckle. The two people seem to be family-like, completely without the tension before, their demeanor is extremely casual, not a hostile relationship at all, but like an old friend who has not seen each other for many years. Ace on the side was a little red after hearing Whitebeard's words, and lowered his head in shame. There is no way, he broke into trouble himself, and it was too shameful to trouble the white-bearded daddy to personally run so far to wipe his ass. Distance also blown out of a distance, on the deck of the somewhat embarrassed Moby Dick, Marco, who had already prepared, and was the first to react, couldn't help but shake his head after seeing the scene of Whitebeard and Luo Xian talking and laughing. He felt that his father's problem was about to be committed again. After casually picking up a large black leather bag that had been prepared long ago from under his feet, he tiptoed a little on the ground and the whole person instantly left the place and rushed in the direction of Bai Baybeard. This fight could not be fought anymore, and even, it would cost money to redeem Ace from Luo Xian. Bang! While Whitebeard and Luo Xian were chatting, Marco had already appeared on the edge of the deep pit behind Whitebeard with the black leather bag. Sensing the movement behind him through seeing and hearing the color, Whitebeard glanced back at Marco, who was carrying a black leather bag in one hand and said without the slightest surprise. Marco, give them the money. Got it, daddy. The god Marco nodded meaninglessly, and threw the black leather bag in his hand towards Anilu, who was standing opposite. There is no mud and water, and the action is extremely crisp. Obviously, they were very confident about their strength, and they were not worried at all that Luo Xian would regret it. Syllable after casually taking the bag thrown by Marco on the other side, under Luo Xian's signal, Anilu also took out the key of the handcuffs of Halo Stone, ready to open the shackles hanging on Anilu's wrist. Seeing that Luo Xian was very trustworthy, Whitebeard looked Luo Xian who was still standing opposite him very reassuringly, and couldn't help but feel a little more appreciative in his eyes. Even on his face, which was not very recognizable by age, there was a hint of kindness and gratification. As if feeling the special emotions contained in the eyes of the white beard, Luo Xian's brows couldn't help but slowly lock, and even the eyes looking at the white beard slowly became a little wrong. What does this old guy want to do? How does this gaze feel so perverted? Luo Xian, come and be my son. Suddenly, the white beard on the opposite side spoke, very abruptly, making everyone who heard it startled. Running out of a person for no reason, wanting you to be his son, are you uncomfortable in your heart? Whitebeard, such a joke is not funny. Luo Xian's eyes looked a little dangerously at the white-bearded man standing on the opposite side, with an expectant look on his face. Gula, don't want to, then forget it. After feeling Luo Xian's strong resistance, Whitebeard laughed loudly and stopped forcing it. After all, he already has such strong strength at a young age, how can he not have his own arrogance? Reading the countless white beards of people, you can see at a glance that Luo Xian is definitely not the kind of lord who is willing to succumb to people. Especially those black eyes, although they seem clear and calm, the whole person looks harmless to humans and animals. But in fact, under this darkness, there is a kind of arrogance and unruliness. If Ace is a loyal family dog, then Luo Xian is definitely a wolf, or the kind of head wolf that can dominate the entire wolf pack. The other side. Just as the transaction between Whitebeard and Luo Xian had reached its end, 
the person who had just experimented on Apple ran out of the laboratory and entered another room. There is no other equipment in this room, except for monitors on the walls that play various pictures. At this time, this person stared at the dazzling pile of screens in front of him, as if looking for something. Suddenly. Ha! Huh. His gaze suddenly stopped, and his whole body stood stiffly in place, his eyes staring at a screen in the corner, and he let out an exclamation. And this screen plays the picture of the location of Whitebeard and Luo Xian and others, and it looks like the angle is not bad, not only Whitebeard and Luo Xian, but even the huge group of battleships behind Whitebeard is also included. White, White, Whitebeard. Looking at the clear figure on the screen, his throat was dry. After coming here for such a long time, he was originally a little worried that there would be a navy here to receive here. As time went on, after finding that no one was interested in this place, his heart finally slowly relaxed. However, today's scene was fiercely stimulated to his heart. None of the navies he had been worried about came, but he waited for one of the four emperors, the strongest man on the sea, Whitebeard. How did he come here? Could it be that the deal with Kaido was discovered? Slowly, after discovering that Whitebeard was just standing there chatting with a person, his heart relaxed, and he leaned in front of the screen and began to look at the person standing opposite Whitebeard. Who is this person? What's the relationship with Whitebeard? A newly acquired son. He focused his gaze on the dark-haired, dark-eyed young man who was chatting with the Whitebeard. Because staying here all year round, the gate does not go out of the door, except for understanding the white-bearded man who has long become famous on this sea. He didn't know anything about Luo Xian, who had only recently risen to prominence on the sea, especially when he saw that Whitebeard and Luo Xian were chatting happily, he immediately mistook Luo Xian's white beard for a gang. It was even speculated based on Luo Xian's age that Luo Xian was likely to be the newly acquired son of Whitebeard. Standing in front of the screen and watching the situation, he was overjoyed, and when he saw Whitebeard and the others leave, his mind began to relax a little. In the next moment, his heart tugged again. From the monitor monitor, he clearly noticed that the young man opposite Whitebeard who had never met before did not follow the other party away, but a person standing behind him opened the door outside. Bastards, are they coming in? He looked at the figure of Luo Xian and the others who had disappeared under the monitor in front of the gate with a panicked expression, and hurriedly screamed. He had some doubts that Whitebeard might have discovered this. And the person who stayed here was Whitebeard's recently acquired son, the one who was ready to help Whitebeard with things. No, you can't sit still. After Luo Xian and the others had disappeared into the blind spot of his line of sight, he suddenly seemed to think of something at once hurriedly put his hand deep into his arms, hurriedly took out a phone worm from it, and quickly dialed it according to the number in his memory. Phone worm on the other side. An island surrounded by food and music, filled with the aromatic smell of flowers. It is an island known as love and passion. On this resort island stands an extremely prosperous country. It is called the Kingdom of Dress Rosa. However, under this seemingly beautiful building, there is an underground factory and transit station that spreads black transactions throughout the pirate world. Arms, artificial devil fruits, human trafficking, and everything else you can think of is a dirty trade. Presiding over all this is the king of the country, Doflamingo. Nanabukai. A sea thief who forcibly robbed the country of the former king, recognized by the world government. He is also the underground evil leader Joker. The highest building in the kingdom, inside the resplendent royal palace. Doflamingo was leaning on a sofa with a pink feather coat, and a red sunglasses was faking sleep, and behind him a good-looking woman was leaning softly beside him. Next to her was an extremely immature girl, that is, a little girl of eleven or twelve, who was stretching out her little pink tongue and licking the corners of her mouth, with a salivating expression carefully counting the purple grapes in the fruit bowl placed in front of her. Bulua Brew Brew. Right now. A telephone bug on the arm of the sofa next to Doflamingo with the same model of red sunglasses as he suddenly rang. Hey. Suddenly, 
the shrill call of the telephone worm reached Da Flamingo's ears, instantly waking him up. Seeing this, the woman standing behind him couldn't help but stand up, casually picked up the shouting phone worm from the sofa and handed it to Da Flamingo, who was sitting in place. Hey, I'm Dover. Sa Flamingo, who was woken up, although his face was a little unpleasant, he still patiently picked up the phone worm and answered. Hey, Dover, I'm Caesar, come and save me, Whitebeard is attacking here. Suddenly, an extremely urgent, crying voice suddenly came from the other side of the earpiece and fell into Da Flamingo's ears. What? After hearing the words from the other side, Da Flamingo sat up sharply from the sofa, his face gloomy as water. Whitebeard, his son has entered the island. Whitebeard. Da Flamingo listened to the message coming through the telephone worm's earpiece and got up from the sofa in disbelief. He wondered if it hurt why Whitebeard let his subordinates, Punk Hassid, go. It has obviously been abandoned by the Navy, and it has been shrouded in a poisonous fog all year round, and if there is no special equipment, ordinary people are simply impossible to approach. Could it be that the other party already knows about their cooperation with Kaido, and wants to come and get a piece of the pie, or to snatch the fruits of their victory? No, with his knowledge of Whitebeard, that man would not do such a thing to make him drop his price. Besides, the research on artificial devil fruits is just beginning, and not many people know the news at all. How does Whitebeard know? Just as Da Flamingo racked his brain to analyze the information that came out of Caesar's mouth, suddenly Caesar on the other side was anxious. When he saw Da Flamingo and did not respond for a long time, he thought that the other party was going to give up on him, and he hurriedly said, Hey, Dover, hey, can you hear me? Don't think so much about it first, come and save me quickly. Caesar on the other side was anxious to die. Because he saw Luo Xian and the others again from the display of another monitor, at this time, they had already crossed the central lake and walked all the way to the laboratory where he was, as if they had known his existence in advance. Time moved forward to the moment when Luo Xian and Whitebeard had just separated. Seeing Whitebeard and the others leave, Luo Xian was also ready to lead everyone to leave and go to the laboratory found for Emperor Tong. Although he successfully extorted Whitebeard's money, Luo Xian at this moment did not have the slightest pleasure on his face, as if he had eaten a fly, and his face was uncomfortable. When he raised his head and noticed that Dragon Scroll and Bung Gu standing behind him, and even Tong Di and Analu, their faces were flushed, their lips were tightly pursed, and they wanted to laugh but did not dare to laugh, the gloom on his face became a little more. Immediately, Luo Xian suppressed the unhappiness in his heart, and a gentle smile was hung on his face again, looking at the people around him with a smile, and said very considerately. Laugh if you want to, don't hold back. Everyone still didn't make a sound, just their lips, pursed tighter, and even Tong Di on the side directly covered his mouth with his hands, and the crimson on his face became more and more obvious, looking very hard. But even so, they still tried very hard to control their emotions and not let him explode. Seeing this, Luo Xian's brows inadvertently frowned slightly, and he seemed to be a little dissatisfied with the performance of these people. Poof, yasha ha ha ha. Just when Luo Xian was a little disappointed, thinking that he had no chance to find fault, suddenly, Analu on the side finally couldn't hold back, and directly squirted out, clutching his stomach and laughing loudly. After hearing such an abrupt laugh, Luo Xian's face was not angry, but the smile on his face became more and more obvious. Ship. Captain, I, I really, endure, endure, stay. Mainly, that, that old man, really, is so funny. Unexpectedly, unexpectedly, I still want to accept you and be a son. Yeah ha 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 ha. Analu, who couldn't bear it, clutched his stomach, lowered his head, and looked very painful with a smile, and tears were about to flow out. Although it felt a little out of place, he really couldn't help it. After staying in the same boat with Luo Xian for so long, Analu thought that he still knew Luo Xian well, except for the enemy, as long as he was considered a friend by Luo Xian, 
he was very generous. Oh yes. It's okay, if you want to laugh, you have to laugh, how uncomfortable it is, right? Luo Xian smiled and comforted. Then, he turned to look at Dragon Scroll and the others, and asked with a smile. What about you? Don't hold back, laugh if you want to, has anyone forced you? Uh huh. After Bangu and the others greeted Luo Xian's eyes full of smiles, they couldn't help but feel a little cold in their backs, and quickly shook their heads in unison, and directly refused without hesitation. In that case, then I won't say it, don't say that I forced you at that time. Luo Suanyu added. Uh huh. Everyone shook their heads in unison, and their attitude was very resolute. After seeing everyone's attitude, Luo Xian also knew that it was no longer possible to make them laugh now. He then looked down at Tong Di, who was standing on the side, covering his mouth with both hands, and ordered with a smile. Little boy, I remember you have a machine called Tickle, right? Uh-huh, yes, Brother Xian. After Emperor Tong took his little hand, he hurriedly responded to Luo Xian's words, and quickly covered it again. Well, that's good, take him out and put Analu in his pants, doesn't he like to laugh, let him laugh a little longer. Luo Xian looked up at Analu, who was still laughing on the side, and said gently. Yeah ha 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 ha. Even now, Analu continues to laugh, as if he can't get over this terrier. For Luo Xian and Emperor Tong's words, he didn't hear a word in his ears, and if he did, perhaps, he might not be so rampant. Instantly, everyone present couldn't help but show a trace of pity when they looked at Analu's expression. Mr. Captain, Brother Xian, you dare to laugh, you really don't know how to die. This buddy's head won't be blistering, will it? After such a long time, have you not comprehended the demonic smile of the captain? It's really bad, after being on a ship with the captain for so long, how come you don't even have such a little eyesight? It's even a navy that doesn't know as much about captains. Haven't you seen the captain's wanted warrant demon lord? Is that a white bark? The other side. Yeah ha 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 ha. Anilu was still standing in place and laughing vigorously, and he didn't even notice that Emperor Tong threw the itchy bug into his pants. Yeah ha 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 ha. After a few seconds, Anilu finally sensed that something was wrong, and he quickly looked down at something squirming somewhere under his trouser leg. Yes, yes, Captain, what is this thing? While smiling hard, Anilu reached for his pants, trying to catch the unknown object inside. Oh! After noticing Anilu's movements, Luo Xian's expression instantly became a little dangerous, and he turned his head to look at the tornado on the side and ordered. It seems that Anilu is sick with some itchy disease, Dragon Scroll, control him, put him in the handcuffs of the Silu stone that was taken from Ace before, but you can't let him move. Remember to tie it tightly, a ninja with a disease like this, you can't scratch and scratch. Well, got it, Brother Xian. The tornado hurriedly answered, and with a rare trace of pity in his eyes, he cooperated with Emperor Tong to put Anilu's hands behind his back and tied them firmly to death. Seeing Anilu paralyzed on the ground, looking detached, Luo Xian finally nodded with satisfaction. At the same time, the sound of the system prompting that the task was completed finally sounded in his mind. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully completing the task of making Whitebeard willingly hand over the ransom, and the system rewards the host with 3500 summoning points in high-level overlord color domineering. Boom! Suddenly, a scarlet lightning bolt passed through Luo Xian's eyes, revealing a faint, palpitating aura around his body. A chill instantly rose from the hearts of Tornado and the others, and even Anilu was also affected, and subconsciously stopped laughing. Everyone knew each other one after another, and saw surprise in each other's eyes, Brother Xian's, Mr. Captain's, strength became stronger again, and his momentum became even more terrifying. Moment. The creatures swimming in the sea near the island they were on seemed to feel some kind of crisis, their bodies froze at first, 
and then quickly turned around, turned around, and swam in the direction of the island far away from where Luo Xian and the others were. Ding, the current summon points that the host has are, 8000 points. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully accumulating 7000 summoning points, now reward the host with the opportunity to summon S-class heroes and dragon level weirdos once, whether to use it now. On the other side, in the highest room in the palace of King Dress Rosa. Da Flamingo, who was pulled back to his heart by Caesar's voice, casually said to the other side of the phone worm, OK, I know. After speaking, Da Flamingo quickly hung up the phone worm. Then, he stood in place, looking out the window with a gloomy face, not knowing what he was thinking, and the atmosphere in the room instantly became depressed. Even the good-looking woman on the side stood obediently in place, trembling, and staring at her feet without saying a word. Similarly, the little girl on the side no longer counted how many grapes were on the plate in front of her, but just tilted her head, her immature little face, and looked solemnly at Da Flamingo, who was standing in place and standing tall. The appearance of an adult makes people look unconsciously compassionate. It feels like a long time has passed but it's actually only a few seconds. Just when the air in the room was already heavy to the extreme, and everyone felt that a boulder was pressed against their bodies. Suddenly, Da Flamingo, who was standing in place, moved, he turned his head, and after casually glancing at the woman standing in place with her head bowed, his eyes inadvertently showed a hint of killing intent. This woman can't stay, there is no way who told her to hear something she shouldn't have heard. Then, he looked at the 11-12-year-old girl who put her feet in the air and sat on the sofa again, and said, Sugar, I need to go out, you talk to the others. After speaking, Da Flamingo, without looking back, turned around and followed the window that had been opened, jumped out, and the whole person disappeared in front of the window, facing the distance stepping on the transparent thin line invisible to the naked eye, as if walking in the air, and the figure gradually began to become blurred. Well, I see. After answering Da Flamingo's back, the little girl named Sugar jumped sharply. Snap! His feet were on the ground. Her gaze was not on the specially cultivated, large, sweet purple grapes in the fruit bowl on the sofa. Instead, his eyes exuded childlike cuteness and his face looked innocently at the graceful girl who was standing on the side in the shape of an ostrich. Sister, can you come over? I want you to help me with something. Sugar's voice said softly. Ah, me. Hearing someone calling herself, the girl raised her head a little unexpectedly and scanned the surroundings without finding Da Flamingo's figure, her nervous heart instantly relaxed, and she looked at Sugar standing in place very relaxed while responding and walked towards the other party. Obviously, in her opinion, she should have escaped. As for this little girl, she just has a good relationship with Lord Dover, and there should be no danger to her. Well, yes. Sugar's smile was still very sweet, but in places that the girl could not notice, a strange coldness appeared under her eyes. After a few tens of seconds. Ah! With a sharp cry, the room once again returned to calm, and the girl from before disappeared, only Sugar still looked the same. It's just that at her feet, I don't know when there is a puppet toy that looks similar to the girl before. And at this moment, the innocence in his eyes disappeared, but instead looked at the puppet toy lying on the ground, and his face became strange. I know too much, but it's not good. The muffled murmur of granulated sugar sounded in the room. The atmosphere is very spooky. The other side. Just after Da Flamingo, who was in dress Rosa, hung up the phone, Caesar here finally decided not to sit still and wait for Luo Xian and them to come to the door automatically. After casually placing the phone worm in his arms, Caesar's gaze was fixed on the display screen of the monitor on the other side, and Luo Xian and the others flashed by. Afterwards, the panic in his eyes gradually disappeared and he turned to reveal a gloomy gaze. Whitebeard, he he. I want to see if you, the strong people on the sea, can withstand my poison gas attack. 
Behind the back is also supported by Kaido, who is the same four emperors as Whitebeard, Caesar is not afraid of the other party, but is a little afraid of the strength of the other party. Immediately, Caesar did not turn his head, turned and walked out of the monitoring room, towards the door of the laboratory. He had already thought of what to use to greet Luo Xian and these uninvited guests. Meanwhile, after dozens of minutes of trekking, Luo Xian and the others finally arrived at the destination of their trip. Caesar is in this lab. Phew! It's finally here. Luo Xian raised his head and looked at the dilapidated building in front of him, exhaled a turbid breath, and said with some expectation. Finally, the first successful step was taken, and everything was about to be ready, waiting for Emperor Tong to become powerful. Yay, yasha ha ha ha. Behind him, Analu, who was put on a robot with tickling bugs, was still smiling as before. It's just that the laughter is no longer so cheerful, and it begins to become weak, and there is even a trace of pain mixed in it. On the nose, the face was a mess everywhere, and I don't know if it was tears or snot. Brother Xian, is this my future research room? Ignoring Analu, who was half squatting on the side and smiling very hard, Emperor Tong looked at the huge building in front of him, and asked with hope in his eyes. Well, yes. After confirming the other party's doubts in Emperor Tong's heart, Luo Xian raised his foot and walked first towards the door of this dilapidated building. Yay, yes, ha ha ha, Captain, yasha ha ha, let me go, I can't do it. At this moment, Analo's somewhat weak voice came from behind Luo Xian and into his ears, and Luo Xian stopped at the right time. Turning around, the corners of Luo Xian's mouth rose slightly, with an unknown smile at the corners of his mouth, looking at Analu, who was walking at the end and half squatting his body, he asked unknowingly. What's wrong, Analu? Everyone also stopped and looked at the embarrassed Analu, wanting to hear what Luo Xian was going to do with Analu. Yes, yes, Captain, I really can't, let me go, yes, yes. On the other side, Analu's face turned a little pale. His whole face was full of weak and painful smiles, and his voice begged Luo Xian with some faintness. Why, tired of laughing? Luo Xian looked at Analu, who was tied with two arms on the opposite side and had a painful face, and laughed. Yay, yes, Captain, I really can't do it. No longer the same spirited look as before, Analu said in a low voice. Hey, say it early, little boy. Go and untie Analu. Luo Xian said with a reproachful look. Thank you, thank you, Captain. After Analu heard this, he didn't wait for Emperor Tong to untie all the Si Lu stones tied to his hand, so he hurriedly saluted. Hee hee, you don't have to worry, I still have something for you to do, if it is not done well, you may have to wear this halo stone handcuff for a few days. Luo Xian looked at Analu with deep meaning in his eyes and said with a smile. Dare to mock Luo Xian, don't toss your half-life. You really don't know what the majesty of the captain is. Click. After Emperor Tong removed the handcuffs from the halo stone on his body, Analu didn't have time to move his wrists, and hurriedly responded to Luo Xian's words, and his expression began to become calm. Just before Emperor Tong uncuffed Halo Xi for him, he had stopped the miniature robot that was placed in his pants by the way. That's why Analu can become so calm at the moment. Despite this, he felt the same feeling coming from his thigh, which still made him very uncomfortable, there was no way, after responding to Luo Xian's words, Analu hurriedly put his hand into his trouser leg and took out the small robot that stopped on his thigh with one hand. When he saw the true face of this robot, a burst of anger instantly appeared on his face, just when he was about to throw this little thing on the ground. Suddenly, Emperor Tong's eyes on the side narrowed slightly, and he instantly became dangerous. Analu, what are you going to do? Emperor Tong looked at Analu and raised his arm that was stagnant in midair and asked. Hey, it's okay. Looking up and first glancing at Luo Xian who was standing not far away, Analu quickly lowered his arm and said with a smile to Tong Di who was standing in front of him. 
After casually handing the miniature robot in his hand to Emperor Tong's hand, Anila hurriedly raised his foot and came to Luo Xian, with a fawning smile on his face, and hurriedly lowered his head and asked. Well, Captain, you say, there is something for me to do. Oh! Seeing that Anila was so obedient, Luo Xian didn't want to make it difficult for him, he casually pointed to the abandoned building behind him that was specially found for Emperor Tong, and replied with a somewhat casual expression, there is now a little bug here who wants to wait for an opportunity to disadvantage us. Give you a few minutes and let me fix him right away. Feeling the picture that came to his mind, Luo Xian couldn't feel a little funny. It seems that Caesar has not been here for a long time. His subordinates who reformed and treated should not have had time to be treated, otherwise the current punk hasid should not be so deserted. Otherwise, he wouldn't be hiding behind the door alone and sneaking around, looking like he was going to sneak up on them. The other side. Caesar was hiding in a corner behind the door, sticking out ahead, staring dead in the direction of the gate, with a nervous expression. It's coming in, it's supposed to be coming in. What about people, why don't they come in yet? His expression was a little anxious, and his mouth was tightly pursed together, as if he was holding something. Click. Suddenly, the door rang. In the anticipation of Caesar's face, a figure walked in from outside with a big grin, without the slightest defense, that is, his expression looked a little weak, as if he had not had time to recover after some strenuous exercise. The person the captain said, is it there? Following Luo Xian's orders, Anila walked in alone, and threw the combination of ions in the air and seeing and smelling, the intensity he could perceive was several times more than ordinary people, and the range and clarity were several times greater. As soon as he entered the door, he already found Caesar hiding in a corner and preparing to sneak attack. Suddenly, Anilo's gaze suddenly turned to Caesar, who was hiding behind an abandoned instrument on the left. It's over, found out. After noticing Anilo's gaze, Caesar's heart tightened, and he didn't have time to think about it. Poof! He suddenly opened his mouth, and a mouthful of Vastin, who had already been holding his lungs, shot out of it, wrapped in an incomparably strong force that penetrated the air, in a straight line and shot fiercely towards Anilu, who was standing in place. This is. After sensing the opponent's attack, Anilu did not dodge at the first time, and his body was already concentrated by the gas laser cannon spit out by Caesar. Bang! Suddenly, a violent roar followed, and the door that Anilu had just entered blasted out a large hole in the surrounding wall. For a while, rubble flew everywhere. Even Luo Xian and the others standing outside the door were affected. Although Luo Xian had the foresight to give way to Caesar's attack range in advance, he was still a little discouraged. At this moment, the superpower of the tornado becomes extremely important. Always protected Luo Xian and her two people with a mental barrier at the first time, but Bangu and the others next to them were unlucky and covered with dirt, which they had never encountered before in the collision between Whitebeard and Luo Xian. Snap! Dragon Scroll, you are too partial, only caring about you and Brother Xian, but forgetting me and Mr. Bung Wu. Emperor Tong, who was standing on the side, complained while patting the dust on his body, and his tone was very dissatisfied. Bung Wu stood on the side and did not speak, just patted the dust on his body vigorously, and did not speak with a smile. Who is to blame for your slow reaction? For the little child of Emperor Tong, the tornado is not used to it at all. Seeing that the dust around her had fallen, she slowly put away the mental power shield that surrounded Luo Xian and her, and after casually glancing at Emperor Tong, she threw down a sentence with great disdain. Just when Emperor Tong and Dragon Scroll were fighting here. In the dilapidated building in front of Luo Xian and the others, there was a burst of laughter that made people want to beat this person after hearing it. Oh Luo Luo Luo. Die, hit my gas spray gun, now there is not even slag left. Looking at the empty ground in front of him, Caesar, who was hiding in the corner, walked out from behind the abandoned instrument table in front of him, and said with a rampant smile. At this time, 
the confidence in Caesar's heart was unprecedentedly expanded, and it had reached an extreme. What four emperors, what white-bearded subordinates, have not died under my men? Who else, let me see who else? I remember that it's not just this one person who came here, there should be a few fish who slipped through the net, let me find you. With that, Caesar raised his steps and prepared to walk towards the hole left by his attack. Ignorant boy, are you sure you killed me? At this moment, a faint sound suddenly came from behind Caesar, like a cold wind in winter, Caesar felt that his body was like falling into an ice cellar, and the whole thing became much stiffer. Probably not. Caesar, who had a somewhat dry throat, slowly turned his head, and looked behind him with a somewhat dull expression. Day. Suddenly, Caesar's eyes widened instantly, as if he saw something he shouldn't see in this instant. You. Without waiting for his words to come out of his mouth, Anilo's fist instantly enlarged in Caesar's pupils. Bang. In an instant, Anilo's pitch-black fist kissed Caesar's cheek lightly, as if it had hit cotton. Caesar's cheeks were faintly sunken a little, and it hurt to look at it. Poof. As bright blood flowers bloomed from around Anilo's fist, the muscles on Caesar's cheeks quickly began to vibrate. Floor after layer. Bang. In the next instant, with the sound of breaking the air, Caesar's body instantly shot out. Someone will help me take revenge. With this wail, Caesar disappeared from sight of Anilo along the large hole that had been bombarded by him earlier. Cut, waste. Ignoring Caesar's voice, Anilo looked at the direction in which the other party disappeared, his expression was extremely disdainful, and his body exuded a temperament called domineering. Sure enough, this is the strength he should have. The familiar god of the empty island is back again. Anilu, you're awesome. Just after Anilu showed his skills, there was a moment of complacency, suddenly, a figure suddenly appeared from the hole before, and behind this figure, there were several people of different heights. This voice sounded, Anilu instantly broke, and the whole person returned to his previous state again. Hee <laughs> hee, Captain, you guys came too timely, I just disposed of that person. He bowed slightly, hurriedly raised his feet and ran forward, with a humble smile on his face, and said to the figure who appeared first with some flattery, like a slave in a palace. The whole thing changed like a person, as if the domineering god who was before was not him. Meanwhile, in the sky that was still a general distance away from Punk Hasid, that is, the island where Luo Xian and the others were. Da Flamingo, who had just received Caesar's reign and was rushing towards his destination with all his strength, took out the phone worm with sunglasses that Caesar had called him before from his arms with a gloomy face, and pressed a special number to call. Hey, I'm Yan Calamity, Ember. Suddenly, a cold voice came from the opposite side, and his tone was filled with a murderous aura. Even Da Flamingo, who was one of the kings of the Seven Martial Seas and the Underground King, couldn't help but feel a shock when he heard it. Usually, it was the reckless man who was in drought, but this time it was the call that Yan Yan answered. Although there were some doubts, due to the urgency of the situation over there, Da Flamingo no longer cared, but hurriedly said. Is Kaido Sama here? There is a problem with my transaction with Kaido Sama. Da Flamingo's tone was slightly deep. What's going on? The other side of the phone spoke again, his tone suddenly aggravated, even though the two were separated by thousands of miles. Da Flamingo here can still feel the clear and cold murderous intent through the expression and voice transmitted by the phone bug at this time. It was as if if he didn't explain it clearly, he would surely die. It's Caesar, his lab is surrounded by white-bearded people. I'm speeding over there right now. Da Flamingo said very quickly. What? After hearing the white beard, the tone of the flame on the other side finally changed, and the voice became solemn. Long. Da Flamingo on the other side of the phone worm didn't hear a voice coming out, and just when he thought that the flame on the other side was no longer there, suddenly, the phone worm spoke again. The sound is extremely abrupt. I'll inform Chief Kaido. 
As soon as this sentence was spoken, the flame on the opposite side did not wait for Da Flamingo to react, and hung up the phone worm. Lean. Clutching the phone worm in his hand, Da Flamingo's forehead suddenly exploded, and his expression was extremely unhappy. Even if he worked very hard to get mixed up to such a point, he still had to act according to the face of his face. This is the case on the side of the world government, and the side of the four emperors Kaido is still like this, even if it is a subordinate of the other party, he still has to look up to people. What is the size of such a day? He's had enough. At the same time, just as Da Flamingo continued to sulk in his heart and continued to rush towards Punk Hasid. The other side. Surrounded by a sea of azure blue, a country full of ancient charm, very different from the rest of the pirate world. In a more remote room. A person who did not leave an inch of skin outside, and his whole body was wrapped in black, his arm trembled slightly, and he resisted the urge to crush the phone worm in his hand and slowly put it back in place. White beard. It was clear that this person was the ember of the previous conversation with Da Flamingo. Through the pitch black helmet with goggles, his naked eyes inadvertently emitted a solemn light. The drought has just died. The leader of Kaido went out temporarily. Now there are Whitebeard coming to stir things up, most likely trying to steal the results of their research on the devil fruit. Even if it was a hot ember, he couldn't help but feel a headache for a while. Standing in place, the flame ember standing in place, his eyes were abrupt and certain, as if he had made some decision, his toes lightly touched on the ground, and the whole person instantly broke the roof and flew out. Obviously, since Kaido could no longer be contacted, Yan Ember could only take the risk by himself. As for the only remaining plague, he decided not to take him with him. If there is no high-level combat power left, if the Navy knows, they will definitely not let go of such a good opportunity. However, Ember, Da Flamingo, and even Whitebeard and Caesar in the corner of Punk Hasid did not know. All the difficulties they are currently encountering are all because of one person, Luo Xian. This man who turned the Navy upside down. One of the largest rooms in the most central research institute on Punk Hasid Island. Luo Xian, who had stirred up nearly half of the forces in the entire pirate world, was lying on the boat, holding the game console that Emperor Tong had just baked, and was fighting madly with the characters inside. From time to time, he would open his mouth and take a bite of the tornado that accompanied him and handed it to his mouth, an apple that had been cut into slices. It looks like a landlord and old wealth. Even Emperor Tong couldn't look down, and on the grounds that the new ship had to hurry up and get it out, he left this room that made single dogs desperate and couples jealous. At this moment, there was obviously only one Anilu standing in place tense in the room, his head tightly pressed to his chest and his eyes staring at the ground, as if he could see the flowers on the grey marble floor above. As for Bungu, as early as before everyone entered this room, he was as cunning as a fox and left first. King didn't know why, but also left after Bungu, along with Poka's puppy. After hearing that Luo Xian and they were going to stay here for about a month, Poki instantly let go of himself, instantly transformed into Urha, one of the three fools of the sled, and directly disappeared. The room suddenly fell silent. Only a gunshot sounded from the game console in Luo Xian's hand from time to time in the room. The tornado sitting next to Luo Xian, I don't know what to think, every time he raised his head and noticed Luo Xian's side face that was playing the game seriously, as if he was electrocuted, he would quickly shift his gaze elsewhere. Her fair cheeks didn't know what was going on and two red halos slowly climbed up on her sides. People inside, hurry up and give me out. Suddenly, an extremely loud voice instantly broke the silence in the room, making everyone startled. Even Luo Xian, who was sitting on the side and concentrating on playing the game, couldn't help but pause. Game over. In the next second, a nice female voice came out from the microphone in the game console in Luo Xian's hand. After hearing the movement, Luo Xian looked down at the game console screen in his hand after flashing a few dazzling English letters, his eyes narrowed, his whole face instantly became cold, 
and the corners of his mouth slowly rose, revealing a smile full of extreme chill. The temperature in the entire room also dropped to freezing point in an instant. Click! With a crisp sound, in Analo's horrified gaze, the freshly baked game console in Luo Xian's hand did not survive for more than an hour, and it turned into powder in Luo Xian's palm and fell to the ground. It's the end of life. Syllable. Luo Xian landed on the ground with both feet, like an ordinary person, did not say much, just raised his feet and walked towards the door. He wanted to see who had eaten the bear's heart and leopard gall, dared to bother him to play the game. Seeing Luo Xian's figure disappear outside the door, after a few seconds of being calmed by Analu, he finally came back to his senses. Involuntarily, he slammed a spirit. As Luo Xian left, the temperature in the room finally returned to normal, and Analu looked at the direction where Luo Xian disappeared, and his heart could not help but arouse a pang of fear. It's terrifying. From now on, there is one more taboo in his heart. There is something about Luo Xian. That is, you must not disturb when Luo Xian is playing games, even if you are going to burp in the next second, you must endure it. Because, this man, is a demon, he will make you live worse than death. A few hundred meters outside Luo Xian and the other's house, two figures were slowly walking towards Luo Xian's location. One is Caesar with a pair of horns on his head, and the other is Da Flamingo who has just arrived from Dress Rosa and wears a pink feather coat. The two people had different expressions, one was gloomy as water, the other was smiling. The one with a smug smile on his face was Caesar, who was striding forward with brisk steps. From the moment Da Flamingo told him that Kaido had been informed, the smile on his face never dissipated. Because he knew that his real backer was definitely coming, and it was definitely not comparable to the little gangster Da Flamingo standing next to him. Because it was related to one of his most concerned studies, artificial devil fruits. He will definitely come. That's Kaido, the famous beast emperor like Whitebeard. In addition, Whitebeard has been away from here for a long time, and by the time the beast emperor Kaido comes, even if Whitebeard already knows that he wants to rush here, it will be too late. By that time, he might have left here with Kaido with his equipment. Just when Caesar was proud, Da Flamingo, who knew the three flavors of human nature, was in a bad mood because of special experiences since he was a child. Although Kaido had been notified, he didn't have any clues about when Kaido would be able to rush over. And that's not the most critical. What he couldn't understand the most was why the Whitebeard, who had always cared little about anything and was only focused on his group of sons, wanted to meddle in his and Kaido's affairs. What went wrong to cause such a confidential message to leak? Could it be, Caesar? Da Flamingo couldn't help but look at the body of Caesar, who was in a very excited mood on the side, with the afterglow from the corner of his eye, and a killing intent could not help but emerge in his heart. However, Caesar, who had a low emotional intelligence on the side, was completely unaware of all this, but he just felt a chill in his body, and then disappeared quickly. With a big heart, he thought that the weather around him had changed a little. Because of the asymmetric news, Caesar and Da Flamingo did not know at all, all of which was caused by Luo Xian's inadvertent choice. It was only because the other party kidnapped Ace and wanted Emperor Tong to build a steel behemoth that was truly invincible on the sea, which led to today's series of misunderstandings and troubles. At the same time, just when Luo Xian had just walked out of the door, he had already determined the location of Caesar and Dover through the perception of seeing and hearing the color, and he was just thinking of making a move. Suddenly, he stopped the movement in his hand. Luo Xian, there was a sudden roar in the sky that pierced the golden cracking stone, the voice contained endless anger and strong killing intent, wrapped in strong air pressure, and the robes of everyone present were blown hunting. Oh, hit the little one, the old one came to the door. Luo Xian looked up at the sky, watching a black shadow in the distance rapidly enlarge in his line of sight, and in the blink of an eye, it had turned into an overwhelming beast. The light scattered by the sun was obscured a lot and the entire punk acid became dark. 
Doflamingo and Caesar, who were walking in the direction where Luo Xian was, also subconsciously raised their heads and looked upwards after hearing this domineering roar. This is... After seeing the black shadow in the sky above, Doflamingo's expression was startled, his eyes were slightly condensed, and his expression became a little surprised. How did it come so fast? On the contrary, Caesar, beside him, although a trace of undetectable fear flashed on his face, but immediately after, an extreme ecstasy appeared on his face. Boss Kaido! Caesar couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. That's great! His backers are so powerful, they came so quickly. Sure enough, the leader of Kaido still valued him very much. Under everyone's sight, in the sky, Kaido, who turned into a dragon, immediately locked Luo Xian from among these people below in the image he had seen on the wanted warrant before. In an instant, his cold and emotionless vertical pupils became brutal. Die! As soon as the words fell, Kaido's huge figure entrenched in the sky slammed his limbs in the air, and his entire body instantly straightened, like a sharp arrow, fiercely rushed towards Luo Xian, who was standing below and had just come out of the room. Below. Luo Xian, who was standing in front of the door, looked up at the sharp angle of Kaido's knife that rushed towards him in the sky, and his hideous head couldn't help but reveal a touch of surprise. It's coming pretty fast. Ding, the most top existence in the entire sea, the beast emperor of the four emperors, Kaido, because the host killed one of the three major Kenban under his command, and Kaido, who valued the henchmen the most, came to take revenge. Option 1, no matter what method is used, let Kaido, who is the fourth emperor, submit to the host's hands. Mission completed, the system rewards the host with 5,000 summon points. Option 2, do your best to kill the other party. Mission completed, the system rewards the host with 4,500 summon points. Option 3, negotiate peace, forcibly take this island from Kaido's body, ask for it and let him take Caesar and the others to find another place. Mission completed, and the system rewards the host with 3,000 summon points. I'll go, that's the four emperors, how can it be so easy to accept? Luo Xian couldn't help but secretly despise the system, and then pulled his attention back and fell on Caesar above. Can't you let you destroy the laboratory I worked so hard to find? He whispered. Boom. Almost as soon as he finished speaking, before the voice could completely spread, Luo Xian's body instantly drew an afterimage in place. All the people present felt that the ground under their feet shook violently, and Luo Xian had disappeared in place, facing Kaido in the sky, and collided directly. Boom! The one that Luo Xian stretched out was exceptionally slender compared to the dragon claw that was comparable to the size of a person after Kaido's transformation like a small grass, and the pitch black arm and Kaido's powerful impact together. Suddenly, as if a muffled thunder arose on the ground, the sound of explosion instantly echoed in the ears of everyone below, making everyone's ears roar continuously, like a bomber, and the eardrums were about to tear. It didn't take long for the voice to come out, and in the next moment, without waiting for everyone to slow down, the real horror finally came. In the very center of the intersection of Kaido and Luo Xian's fist, a somewhat dim little white dot appeared. The sharp air pressure appeared, as if substance, and began to vent around, like a shock wave, a slightly white transparent circle of qi, seemingly slow but actually very fast. Heaven and earth, not a single place was spared, all were taken care of. Even the dark clouds floating in the sky and some impurities in the air were all dispersed and the sky instantly became much clearer and more transparent. The entire island that has been shrouded in poisonous fog and covered with dark clouds for many years, following a battle between Whitebeard and Luo Xian before, finally fully recovered and saw the light again in this collision with Kaido. The fish that had originally had a faint purple unknown gas escaped Whitebeard's blow and floated happily on this punk acid. But this time, it completely disappeared, and it was all blown into the air. So strong. Doflamingo below put his arm in front of him, blocking Luo Xian's aftermath, 
his face was a little solemn, and he didn't pay any attention to Caesar, who was crushed by the air pressure and rubbed the ground. Dover, pull me. Caesar, who was pressed to the ground, rubbed his face fiercely on the ground and slowly dragged his body towards the distance, with a grievance, and said vaguely in his mouth, trying to pull Dover's attention back. Unfortunately, it is useless. At this time, Da Flamingo was looking up with a solemn face, standing out of thin air, two figures, one large and one small. His attention was all focused on the small figure. Obviously, he had recognized Luo Xian. Luo Xian. How could he be here? Rao is a cunning fox like Dover, and at this moment, his heart can't help but feel a little messy. Doesn't it mean that the son of the white beard appeared here? How not a single one was seen. Instead, Luo Xian, who should not have appeared here the most, stood up. Also, when Kaido came here before, he shouted as if it was Luo Xian's name, what was going on? Just when Da Flamingo was at a dead end because of the wrong information provided by Caesar. In the sky. Kaido, who turned into a dragon, looked at Luo Xian who was standing opposite him with a relaxed face with a pair of vertical pupils. His right arm trembled slightly. In a previous collision with Luo Xian, he suffered a loss. Underestimate him. Until now, Kaido, the beast emperor who is known for his brutality, has finally begun to face his enemies for the first time. These two figures with royal level combat power finally began, and the war was about to break out. Meanwhile, in an island not far from the Chambordi archipelago, symbolizing the justice and majesty of the Navy headquarters, Marin Fander's Marshal Office, the withered Sengoku was looking at the dozens of documents in front of the table, and as time passed, his eyebrows slowly tightened, straight and finally, tightly crouched together. It can be seen that the warring states at this time are in a very bad mood, and it can even be said that they are a little bad. Syllable. After casually closing the folder in his hand, Sengoku stretched out his hand and rubbed his slightly tired eyes, and after cheering up, he looked at the adjutant standing beside him. This time, there are only so many conscriptions for the whole world. As soon as this sentence came out, it was clear that the warring states were not very satisfied with this conscription. Yes, Marshal of the Warring States. In the past few days, the warring states' injury is just right, plus the recent mess, there is a serious shortage of personnel up and down the army, which has caused various problems, let alone the warring states, and his adjutant looks at the headache. But there is no way, as the commander of the first army, the warring states must insist. For there is also justice in his heart. The adjutant did not salute the warring states loudly first as usual, he did not want to let the nerves of the warring states marshal be tensed to the extreme because of such a little thing. After this conversation, there was a brief silence in the room. It felt like after a long time, Sengoku with his elbows propped up on his desk, rubbing his eyebrows with one hand, as if he wanted to calm the messy thoughts in his mind. What happened to the civilian masters recruited over there by Lt. Gen. Karp? Finally, Sengoku lowered his hand on his forehead, and asked the adjutant standing on the side with a somewhat weak voice. Report to the Marshal of the Warring States, there is no specific news from Lt. Gen. Karp's side. The deputy replied. After listening to the deputy's report, Sengoku slowly got up from the chair, walked slowly to the front of the ship step by step. He looked condescendingly at the somewhat cold field below, and sighed with a complicated face. Alas, what an eventful autumn. I hope Carp can bring me some good news. Just when this side is lifeless, the other side. The center of punk hasid. Luo Xian and Kaido are fighting hotly. You punched me with a violent sonic boom, marking one after another after images in the air, the speed was extremely fast, making people dazzled, they couldn't see it clearly, and even Da Flamingo, who was standing below, was difficult to capture the figures of Luo Xian and Kaido. Dense explosions sounded one after another, so dense that they were terrifying, and they became one piece. Below them, the entire island was already a mess, like a spider's web, 
full of deep invisible cracks, and the ground was densely distributed with deep pits of different sizes. Except for the laboratory that looked abandoned on the surface that was protected by the tornado that Luoxian and Kaido could avoid, the entire island was smoothed out, and there were no buildings that exceeded one meter. Bang! With a loud explosion, two figures suddenly appeared in the air. After a dazzling blood flower fell in the air, the two people, with a touch of contact, finally stopped. After Da Flamingo and Caesar, who were below, saw this scene happening in the sky above, their brains went blank, and even there was a brief loss of concentration. Really fake? The backers they relied on were now on an equal footing with Luo Xian? No, it's a downwind. This Luo Xian, so strong. Da Flamingo looked up at Luo Xian in the sky, and his heart became jealous, and his eyes became gloomy. He had now forgotten about why Luo Xian had come to the back of his mind, and he now had a sense of foreboding. The cooperation with Kaido may end today. Compared to Dover, next to him, Kai was a little like receiving a huge blow, and the whole child was stunned. He stared blankly at the behemoth above, which was his biggest backer. Although he was a little afraid of Kaido, it was because of Kaido's protection that he was able to survive in this sea where every inch was stained with blood, enjoying peace and doing his own favorite research. Burst. At this moment, suddenly a voice that was not very obvious sounded, but it hooked the sensitive hearts of everyone present. Follow the prestige. At this time, Kaido, who turned into a dragon, had long lost his previous spirited appearance, and the whole person was embarrassed to the extreme. If Kaido before was a true dragon soaring in the sky and ruling a sea area, then he is now like a lapy snake. The scales on the body were no longer shiny, exuding a solid cold light, as if they had been gnawed by a dog, tattered. One blood hole after another, constantly oozing blood outside, dripped sparsely along the huge body on the ground below, smashing out plum blossoms, until finally, even flowing into a small stream. Even the two pairs of imposing longhorns on the head were broken in half. The whole person became lifeless. Hu <laughs> hu! Who? Kaido, who was half floating in the sky, gasped and looked at Luo Xian standing opposite him with a look of horror, his vertical pupils were no longer cold, and there was even a fear hidden in the depths of his eyes that even he hadn't noticed. He was afraid. The governor of the Hundred Beast Pirates, the behind-the-scenes controller of the country of Wano, wanted to retreat. This man, who had been tortured by the navy thousands of times and sentenced to death forty times, was the strongest creature on land, sea and air. Facing Luo Xian, he was afraid. Why, scared? Luo Xian, who was standing opposite, chuckled at the corner of his mouth, and his face was very calm. Immediately afterwards, his eyes narrowed slightly, and a cold light bloomed from them, if you don't make a move, then I will come. The voice just fell. Yikes! Like a transfiguration, Luo Xian quickly crossed the distance between him and Kaido in an instant and appeared in front of Kaido. The right foot was instantly wrapped in a thick layer of ink black armed color, directly pumping out the air, wrapped in an incomparably violent momentum and smashing into Kaido's head. Opposite side. For Kaido, who had always maintained his full attention, Kaido suddenly felt a flash in front of his eyes, and without waiting for him to react, he only felt a black shadow appear in front of his eyes vigorously, obscuring his vision. Not good. Feeling the strong warning from his brain, Kaido wanted to avoid it like this, but things are never what you want to be. Bang! Luo Xian's whip leg was pumped straight in the middle of Kaido's huge dragon head. Under the cover of the strong armed collar, Luo Xian's feet were like the hardest thing in the world. Click. With the sound of too thick bone cracking, Kaido's head was instantly splashed with blood. Under the strong impact, the whole person instantly smashed towards the ground below under the impact of inertia. Underscore. Bang. In just an instant, the ground seemed to turn into tofu dregs, and a huge deep pit directly appeared as if it had been hit by a meteorite that had brought Luoxian from outer space. Madere. 
Luo Xian's figure slowly landed from the air, stood by the giant pit, looking condescendingly at Kaido, who could not control the power in his body under the strong impact, and changed back to human nature, lying at the bottom of the pit in a large shape, with a slight grin at the corner of his mouth. Is this your strength as the four emperors? It's a little bad. Click, click, click. No one returned his words. In the deep pit shrouded in smoke, there was only the sound of rolling rubble. Knock, knock. A few seconds later, accompanied by the sound of heavy footsteps, Kaido's figure discharged the smoke and dust and walked out from the bottom of the pit. His eyes were a little scarlet as he looked at Luo Xian on the other side, with a fierce face, and said in a low tone. Boy, you're over. As soon as the words fell, a little scale armor began to appear on his body again, turning into a humanoid giant beast, and the momentum of the whole person was superimposed again, even more terrifying than the dragon that turned into a complete body before. Click, click. The ground beneath Kaido's feet began to crack rapidly, and rubble flew everywhere. Seeing this, Luo Xian on the opposite side narrowed his eyes slightly, the corners of his eyes showed a sharp light, and the momentum around his body also changed. Zheng 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 In an instant, Luo Xian's vicinity seemed to instantly turn into a sword domain, and a murderous opportunity appeared. I didn't see the sword body, but I heard the sword sound. Yikes! The ground under Luo Xian's feet seemed to have been cut by a sharp sword in an instant, and countless deep invisible sword marks appeared when he boarded. Really? Kaido, who can stand at the top of the entire pirate world and deter one of the four emperors of all pirates, how can it be so simple? I believe that the previous confrontation with Whitebeard was just a family affair. Finally used the whole cards. Luo Xian Huan looked at Kaido who turned into a giant standing on the opposite side, with interest, and after saying it with a smile, his tone changed. It's a pity, I was only a five-layer strength before. What? After hearing Luo Xian's words, Kaido froze, and his whole face was full of solemnity. For people of their strength level, either they don't say it, and once they say it, it's absolutely all true. However, even so, as the Beast Emperor, he also has his own pride. His arrogance did not allow him, so he retreated without a fight. So. Fight. With Kaido's roar, his figure disappeared in place again. Similarly, Luo Xian, who was opposite him, disappeared after a cold light flashed in his hand. However, Luo Xian's words, although the voice was not loud, but the people present were not fuel saving lamps, not only Kaido, but all the people heard it. On the roof of the institute, Dragon Scroll who was protecting him with his own mental power was standing there with a relaxed face, looking at this century-like battle very comfortably. Beside her were Tong Di, Bang, Wu, Pokey, and others, all of whom were here, quietly watching Luo Xian and Kaido who were facing off in the distance. Because the view here is good. But when they heard Luo Xian's words, their expressions froze, and they looked at each other one by one. Obviously, they mistook the previous battle between Luo Xian and Kaido and thought that the other party was going all out, but their brother Xian, Captain, was even better. What made them unbelievable was that even such a high-intensity battle could not be considered their full strength. What's even more egregious is that their Captain only used half of his strength, which is a joke. However, after looking at each other just now, Bangu Tornado and the others found the answer from each other's eyes. Their captain, never joked. To paraphrase a high school student in a certain drama, after eliminating all the unreasonable answers, the remaining one, even if it is impossible and unbelievable, is true. On the flat ground not far from Tornado and the others. Behind a shield made up of white lines intertwined, two figures with different expressions were standing. The one with a relaxed face was Caesar, who was clenching his fists with joy at this time, looking at the two figures in the center of the island with full attention, and his mouth was still chanting something. Kill him, kill him, Lord Kaido hurry up and kill him. Next to him was Da Flamingo, and after hearing this, 
his expression was somewhat similar to that of several people standing on the roof of the research institute. His face was a little surprised, his whole face was a little dull, the only difference was that on his facial features, he could still vaguely see a trace of gloom. Obviously, it was only today that he finally saw the true strength of this backer that he had been borrowing relatively comfortably. However, the more a person often knows, the more desperate he will be. This is even more evident in the careerist Da Flamingo. Looking at the two figures in the distance, in the deepest part of Da Flamingo's eyes, there is a trace of imperceptible murder, but in this hidden murderous opportunity, there is also a trace of helplessness. How many years have passed, no matter how he develops his power, he still has to improve his strength. Originally thought that he should not be far from Kaido, but today's scene completely erased all the unrealistic conjectures in his heart. He doesn't want to look up to others, but he has to rely on the strength of others to survive. This is the biggest helplessness in Da Flamingo's heart. Underscore. He hoped that Kaido would die like this, and then he might be relaxed. But he didn't want Kaido to die, because one died, and there were thousands of people coming up. He always needs to find a backer who can sleep in the evening, after all, he has not yet been able to build a house of his own, he can only hide under the eaves of others. In a strange sea. A naval warship with a dog's head logo on the bow is sailing smoothly on the sea, all of which seems very peaceful and quiet, and natural. Like a painting that is embedded in a frame, it can be mounted directly on the wall. However, all this was broken by a harsh voice. Ha ha ha, Warring states, I have recruited two very strong talents this time, and I can simply be directly qualified to be the Admiral of the Navy. Carp pulled out his nostrils with one hand and said to the phone worm in his hand with a smug look. What, what special treatment is there for special times? As if hearing what the Warring states on the other side said, Carp's expression instantly became unwilling, and he hurriedly persuaded again. Oh, okay. Okay, don't talk to you blindly, wait until I go back with these two experts found by the people, let's talk. As soon as he heard that the opposite Sengoku was going to fight with him again, Carp turned off the phone bug very shrewdly and casually put it back in his arms. Carp, I don't care about anything else, didn't you say that I can be a senior admiral of the navy as soon as I go? Why, it seems a little difficult to listen to what you mean. At this moment, an indifferent and haughty voice sounded from behind Carp. After hearing this, Carp, who was standing in place, quickly turned to look at the two figures standing on the deck behind him, smiled at one of the people wearing a green pair, and looked at the two and said, Ha ha, rest assured, there is absolutely no problem, with me Kapu as a guarantee, that guy from the warring states will not have an opinion. Carp patted his chest, very boldly. Mr. Carp, in fact, there is nothing to do, as long as he can fulfill justice, no matter what position he is in, the old man will not care. At this time, another man in a purple dressing gown spoke, his eyes closed, his hands on the crutches in his hands, and said with a calm expression. There were two deep scratches on his eyelids crossed above his forehead, and it was clear that his eyes were blind, and he had no hope of seeing again and he had encountered the kind of person who had special devil fruit abilities. Ah, put. When he found that two people questioned themselves, he was opening his mouth to instill some similar thoughts about believing in him and so on in the two people he had worked so hard to find. Suddenly, the phone bug rang somewhat out of place. Brew brew brew. Who, this is, it won't be that old yin commodity of the warring states again. Carp was a little dissatisfied and casually took out the phone worm that he had stuffed in before from his arms again, and pressed the answer button. Hey, I'm Carp. As soon as he finished speaking, a slightly young voice suddenly came from the other side. The other party's tone was slightly urgent, and he said very quickly. Hey, Vice Admiral Carp, Luo Xian and Kaido are fighting, on Punk Hasid Island where the research base abandoned by the Navy is located before. Are you sure? Carp's eyes narrowed, and his tone was slightly heavy. Sure, and as far as we know, 
Whitebeard has been here before. The phone worm in Carp's hand said with a somewhat exaggerated expression. Okay, I'll go right away. Quack. Carp casually hung up the phone, and after summoning the adjutant with a solemn face, the warship that was originally going to the naval headquarters turned its head, turned its direction again, and rushed to another place. I'm sorry, you two have to run with me. Carp turned back to the two masters he had just recruited sitting there, and said in a slightly deep tone. Although he usually looks very grinning, he can become a hero of the Navy by himself, not just by force. Haha, <laughs> it's okay, I just want to see if this demon lord Luo Xian, who has been in the limelight recently, is what you say. The man in green said with a smile, looking very arrogant. At this time, Carp was rushing to the place where Punk Hasid, Luo Xian and Kaido were fighting. It was no longer possible to see what it was, the entire island that was originally filled with poisonous gas was ploughed by Luo Xian and Kaido by more than one layer, revealing the hard rock layer below. But even the hard rock layer has also been pierced several layers. Now Punk Hasid is like a big bowl in the sea, with nothing but a lonely building. At this time, the battle between Luo Xian and Kaido was over. Kaido, who was half kneeling on the ground, was covering his other shoulder with one hand, where there was a huge blood hole, covered with dense sword marks, as if he had been cut by a thousand cuts. He lost an arm. And Luo Xian is now standing not far from Kaido, carrying the afterimage sword in one hand, and there are no obvious wounds all over his body. Obviously, Luo Xian once again had the absolute upper hand in this battle. Of course, this is a figure of the level of the four emperors, and if you want to achieve this level, you can't do it without paying a little price. Now Luo Xian's breathing was a little short, and his black shirt was no longer as intact as before, and the tattered drape was hanging on Luo Xian's body. Although his muscles were not as strong as those of Mr. Bodybuilder in his previous life, each piece was meticulously carved and angular, like marble. The other side of the island. Da Flamingo and Caesar, who were hiding behind the shields, together with Luo Xian's crew, and the people hiding under the protective shield of the tornado, their faces became very serious. This was the first time, and they felt very clearly the true strength from the Sea Emperor. In this battle, Luo Xian and Kaido both showed terrifying strength which can be said to have touched the ceiling of the entire pirate world. Even in the One Punch Man Heroes Association, except for the first place Blaster and the bareheaded Saitama Sensei, all of them feared Dragon Scroll's expression became grim after experiencing this amazing battle up close. Compared to Luo Xian, she is still far behind, but I don't know that just resisting the aftermath generated by Luo Xian and Kaido makes the tornado a little unable to hold on. Although defense is more laborious than attack, this is only the aftermath. A layer of fine beads of sweat had begun to appear on the smooth forehead of the dragon scroll, and the fine green tendons had already lifted her white and tender skin. This look makes people see it, but they feel a little distressed. It is worthy of being the strongest creature, after blocking my atomic slash head on, I only lost an arm. Kaido, your physique is really strong. Standing in place, Luo Xian carried the sword in one hand, and step by step he walked towards Kaido, who was half squatting on the ground on the opposite side with a painful face, and there was a wistful smile on the corner of his mouth. And this scene was once again captured by Analu on the side. He looked at the corners of Luo Xian's slightly upturned mouth, and his heart was cold, and he couldn't help but shiver. At this moment, he realized. The most terrifying thing was not Luo Xian's anger, but Luo Xian's laughter. Because, it was a fake laugh from the devil. Once this smile is about to rise, the people around you must be unlucky. Ahem. Kaido, who was half crouched in place, coughed suddenly, and blood flowed down the corners of his mouth. He raised his head, looked at Ying Xian with a somewhat pale face, showed his blood-stained teeth, and laughed miserably. Demon Lord, it's worthy of you, Luo Xian. Sure enough and the legendary one. At this moment, Kaido no longer has hope that he can save his life intact. 
Seeing Luo Xian walking towards him step by step, his heart couldn't help but tighten together. Even if he has always liked to commit suicide, when he really faced the coming of death, he couldn't help but feel a little sorry in his heart. And yet, right now. Once again, things happened. Rumble. With a strong gust of wind, the dust around Kaido and Luo Xian was blown away. A figure stood between Luo Xian and Kaido, separating their line of sight. Chief, how are you? This black figure looked at Luo Xian who stopped with a cautious expression, and although his tone was indifferent, it was not difficult to hear the concern contained in it. Yan Calamity, why are you here? Hearing the familiar voice in front of him, Kaido couldn't help but raise his head and look at the black figure blocking in front of him, looking a little surprised. In the face of the enemy whose combat power had reached the ceiling in the pirate world, whether it was Luo Xian or Kaido, they put their hearts on each other's body, completely unaware of the Yan calamity that was quickly approaching them. Even Luo Xian did not dare to take it lightly when facing the four emperors on the sea, because there was only one life, and the master's move only needed a momentary flaw. He didn't want to capsize in the gutter. Of course, if Yan Yan dares to attack without authorization, it will be a different result. I received a notice from Da Flamingo that there were white-bearded subordinates who wanted to covet this place, and the chief was not there at that time so I could only come over without permission to check the situation, but I didn't expect to meet the leader here. Yan Yan still did not dare to look back at Kaido behind him, and answered Kaido's question with an urn. There is no way, Luo Xian's person is too terrifying. Even their leader, Kaido, was able to defeat it easily without paying too much price. Not to mention one of his subordinates. When you're done, I'll send you on your way. On the opposite side, Luo Xian, who was relaxed all over, stood in place and said with a somewhat impatient expression. He said as he walked towards this side with light steps. Tread. Every step touched the hearts of everyone present. The Yan tribulation guarding Kaido's eyes, the exposed eyes showed grimness, and even in the deepest part of his eyes, a trace of death intent appeared. If it is who Kaido trusts the most it must be Yan Calamity. Because the entire Hundred Beast Pirate group from top to bottom, only Yan Calamity and he went from nothing to the present. Standing in the distance, Da Flamingo and Caesar's expressions couldn't help but become grim when they saw this. Could it be that there is going to be a sea emperor who will fall into Luo Xian's hands today? If that's the case, then the entire pirate world will once again usher in a major earthquake. All careerists will run away, and those pirates, who have coveted Kaido's Wano country for a long time, will turn the entire new world upside down. Underscore. In the limelight. Luo Xian finally stopped, about a meter away from Kaido and the Yan tribulation blocking in front of him. Looking at the scene in front of him, Luo Xian's eyes couldn't help but show a hint of playfulness, and he suddenly remembered something. How about joining me, I can consider letting you go. Just when Yan Yan and Kaido were waiting in a stern position, trying to think about how this could dodge the sword in Luo Xian's hand that demanded people's lives. Suddenly heard such a sentence. The two couldn't help but look stunned, and they were stunned for a moment. Followed, there were also Da Flamingo and Luo Xian's crew on the side. They didn't blame them, after all, even Dragon Scroll didn't expect Luo Xian to say such a thing. After all, after such a long time, she knew Luo Xian better. Luo Xian is the most afraid of trouble, and today I don't know what's wrong, he actually wants to recruit this person. Even the Dragon Scroll was a little puzzled, when did Luo Xian's temper become so good? You know, those who dared to make a move against Luo Xian in the past and had a murderous intent, without exception, would never be able to stand up, let alone recruit. This time, I don't know what happened to her brother Xian, who actually wanted to recruit this person on a whim. Is it because the other party's strength is high? The four emperors in brother Xian's mouth? Below, Luo Xian, who was waiting for Kaido's specific reply, did not think so much, just because just now he seemed to have a task issued by the system, 
although he might summon a talent like a sexy prisoner that he wanted to kill. However, it still did not delay his yearning for beauty. What if the number one S-class hero blast is summoned? Isn't that a surprise? After all, after watching the punch for so long, he also wanted to know what the hell this mysterious blasting looked like. The tornado that can make trembling is because he willingly joined the hero guild. After a brief loss of concentration, Kaido, who finally recovered, his eyes instantly became red. Ha 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 ha, Luo Xian, you underestimate me too much. After Yang Tian Chong laughed, Kaido pushed it away regardless of Yan Calamity's obstruction, stared at Luo Xian who was standing on the opposite side with a pair of eyes, and said in a low voice. Oh, that doesn't seem to be done. After being rejected, Luo Xian's face was indifferent, as if he had already expected Kaido to react like this. He raised his arm slightly, casually picked up the long sword in his hand, and with a cold sword at the corner of his mouth, he swung it down violently at the moment when everyone, including the nearby Yan Tribulation, did not react. Feeling the tingling pain coming from his cheeks, at this moment Kaido found that he couldn't hide, he couldn't avoid it, and in desperation, he had to give up the struggle. How to say, he is also the four emperors, he wants to leave himself the last dignity, and he doesn't want to let himself die so ugly. It seems that today, it is really going to die. After searching for death for so many years, at this moment Kaido finally felt what it was like to die. At this moment, his mood was very calm, there was no wave at all, and even his previous fear did not know when he calmed down. It turns out that this is what it feels like to be about to die? There seems to be nothing peculiar. When he saw the sword blade in Luo Xian's hand, suddenly, a figure suddenly appeared, and without waiting for everyone to react, the person came holding an iron fist with one hand and hit Luo Xian's sword body from the side at an extremely fast speed. Clang! With a soft groan from the trembling of the sword body, Luo Xian's blow was deflected by the incoming person. Bang! The sword in Luo Xian's hand grazing Kaido's body and slashed to the side. It stretched for thousands of meters, and even the sea water outside the island was split and could not heal for a long time. Kaido, who was half squatting on the ground, felt the power of Luo Xian's sword at close range, and a chill could not help but rise in his heart, and the whole person was like falling into an ice cellar. Carp. Ignoring Kaido, who survived by chance, Luo Xian looked up at the person who suddenly appeared in front of him, and his face became a little ugly. One after another, some people came out to disrupt the situation, no matter who it was, they couldn't help but hold out a stomach of anger in their hearts. You want to save him? Luo Xian said coldly. Haha, although I also want him to die, but now the sea has been messed up by you. If you kill him again, the consequences are unimaginable. Standing opposite Luo Xian, after Kapu laughed, although he did not answer positively, he also clarified the purpose of his trip. Although the current navy and pirates are elbowed by each other, they are also interdependent. The naval government looks weak compared to the four emperors as a whole, but because of the older generation of people, coupled with the suppression of the world government, the relationship between the navy and the four emperors will become ambiguous. The current navy's control over the sea has dropped to its lowest point in history because of the battle that Luo Xian came out of the advanced city before. At this moment, the stability of the sea is even more needed. Therefore, Kaido can't die, which is why Karp immediately shot after he arrived. After speaking, Karp's eyes stared at Luo Xian, his expression was a little complicated. There were surprises, surprises, and other unspeakable emotions. It had only been a long time, since the first time he met Luo Xian and them, it was still in the East China Sea. At that time, he had not completely put Luo Xian and the others in his eyes, but he only had doubts about the ability of one of Luo Xian's subordinates. However, in this short period of less than a year, the boy in front of him, who still looked a little immature, set off a storm on the sea and became famous all over the world. At this moment, Karp wished how good Luo Xian would be if it was the navy. However, 
it was all too late. Under all kinds of mistakes, the navy finally succeeded in pushing Luoxian to the opposite side of them. Then you can think about it, navy hero. Luoxian's face was slightly heavy, looking at this familiar and strange old man, his tone was inexplicable. Swish! Without waiting for Carp on the other side to answer, Luoxian made another move. His forearm was slightly raised, and the muscles on his arm instantly bulged, and the hole seemed to swell in a circle, and it was crawling with several thick and explosive green tendons. This time, Luoxian was really angry. The afterimage sword that he held in his hand cut through the air when it landed, and with a sharp, unstoppable momentum that split everything in this world, it slashed to the opposite side. Not good. Feeling the extremely sharp momentum released by Luo Xian, Karp's face changed instantly, and he hurriedly clenched his fists. Swish! After covering it with a thick layer of black matter, he tried his best to meet it. Bang! Like a heavenly punishment, a strong roar swept through the audience in an instant, and all the people's ears were distorted, and in a short time, no sound could be received. At the same time as this extreme roar sounded, Kapu, who had received Luo Xian's blow head-on, instantly turned red. Sting! Suddenly, Karp's feet slipped under his eyes, and the whole person instantly retreated tens of meters, and his feet pulled out two deep and long ravines on the hard rocky ground. At this moment, a naval warship with a dog's head hanging from the bow of the ship docked near Punk Tapsad, and two figures, one green and one purple, came down from the ship one after another. So strong. The purple figure noticed the miserable situation in front of him through the picture that was fed back by seeing and hearing the color, and his face instantly became much more solemn. Just as they were about to lift their feet and go to the place where Luo Xian and the others were, suddenly, the only remaining building on the island, Bangu and Analu on the roof of the laboratory, suddenly appeared intercepted them in place. Young man, you better stay here, don't disturb our captain. Bung Gu held his hands behind his back, looked at the two masters who had just been found by Karp from the people with a peaceful face, and said with a smile. Analu, who was beside him, did not say anything, but just stood there quietly, looking at these two people with a very arrogant expression. In this world, perhaps except for Luo Xian, Basically no one can let him lower that proud head. Opposite side. The two men who got off Karp's ship looked at the two figures that suddenly appeared in front of them, and after hearing Bong Gu's voice, they were startled. It was the first time they had seen someone selling old people in front of them, and they actually called them young men. Looking at each other's appearance, it seems that they are not as old as them. The two people looked at Bong Gu who had been regained by Boney with his fruit ability, and their faces instantly became unpleasant. Boy, didn't anyone teach you to be polite? The middle-aged man in a purple dressing gown looked at Bung with a dull face and said. On the other side, the center of the island. Karp, who was repelled by Luo Xian's blow, frowned, and there was a tingling pain throughout his right arm, and a drop of bright red liquid streaked across his loosened fingertips dripping on the grey ground, reflecting a dazzling light under the sunlight. However, Karp didn't care about everything, just looked at Luo Xian who was standing in his original position with a solemn expression. Kaido, what are you waiting for, do you want to die, don't make a move. He said without squinting to Kaido, who was crouching on the side. For the strength that Luo Xian now has, Karp has no doubt that if he fights with the other party like this, it will definitely be him who loses. After all, he is no longer young. And as far as Kaido's current state is concerned, Karp does not believe that he has no power to resist at all, to know that he can stand at the top of the sea, which four emperors have not all experienced countless tribulations, without two brushes, who dares to be that fuel-saving lamp. Okay, let's go together. Kaido, who was standing in place, slowly straightened up from the ground after hearing Karp's request, stared at Luo Xian who was standing on the opposite side with the same eyes, and replied without the slightest hesitation. Oh! After hearing the conversation between the two, 
the corners of Luo Xian's mouth couldn't help but show a hint of playfulness. He also wanted to know if these two people could force out all their strength. Bang! Opposite side. After hearing Kaido's promise, Karp's eyes flashed a sharp color, and after the solace of his feet stomped on the ground dozens of times in a row, the whole person's body instantly disappeared in place with a sound of breaking the air, and smashed Luo Xian fiercely with those iron fists. On the contrary, Kaido, just as he was about to follow closely, a hot current rushed up from his abdomen with a force under his feet. Poof! A mouthful of blood gushed out of his mouth and splattered into the air. Chief! Seeing this, Yan Ember who was standing near Kaido couldn't help but exclaim, and then, he quickly ran to Kaido's side with a worried face, holding the other party's arm, regardless of the other party's obstruction. Bang! A pair of black wings tens of meters wide instantly spread out from his back. Chief, let's go first. As soon as the voice fell, Kaido and the two standing on the ground disappeared instantly. Yan Yan supported Kaido with both hands, and quickly flew towards the distance without turning his head, flying farther and farther, and in the blink of an eye, the figures of the two had already appeared in the sky a kilometer away. On the ground. Kapu who was waving his iron fist to greet Luo Xian, saw that after sensing the movement behind him, his face changed instantly. Kaido, your uncles. A classic national curse couldn't help but spit out from his mouth. He didn't believe that the Beast Emperor, one of the four emperors guarding the New World, had been beaten to this extent by Luo Xian. Without the slightest strength, he was even forcibly rescued by a subordinate. But even so, it is difficult to collect the water, how can the fist that has come out be recovered unharmed, especially in front of Luo Xian? In desperation, Karp had to go all the way to the dark, and even, as soon as he gritted his teeth, he added a little force to his fist. There was no way, now that he was left alone, he couldn't be careless, especially in front of Luo Xian. As everyone knows, what is the fate of the two people of Red Dog and Yellow Ape now? Oh, the naval hero also has a day to be played with by pirates. Luo Xian, who was a little surprised by Kaido's action, glanced at Kai's disappearing back from a distance, and a trace of regret flashed in his eyes, not knowing what he seemed to be pitying. Immediately afterwards, he shifted his gaze to Carp in front of him again. By the way, stretching out the hand that did not hold a sword, Luo Xian clenched his fists and fought hard against Kapu who had defeated the prestige of a naval hero with this pair of iron fists. Rumble. Another roar came from the two iron fists of the two. The corners of Karp's mouth instantly revealed a hint of triumph. Syllable. The smile at the corner of his mouth still had time to converge, and suddenly, his feet tapped on the ground, and the whole person shot backwards with the strength of Luo Xian's iron fist on the opposite side. Following the direction he came, he retreated nearly a distance of nearly several kilometers. Seeing that Luo Xian was getting farther and farther away from Luo Xian who was standing in place, the solemnity on Kapu's face was still the same, and he did not dare to relax a little. There was no way, he was already old and could no longer be like when he was younger, plus that ungrateful Kaido left him alone. He can't put his life in the hands of another sea thief for the sake of a naval rival. On the way, he even had time to greet the two people he had newly recruited from the people who were confronting the two people on Bungwani Road. The good man does not suffer the immediate loss, quickly retreat. The two who stood in place, ready to move at any time, looked a little unhappy after hearing this. This has not officially become a general, just a deserter. This is just an opponent who looks stronger, where do you need to escape? But after all, it is a senior admiral who has not yet become a real admiral, a new recruit, and Karp, a naval hero, still has to listen to the words. Without any hesitation, the two looked at Bung and the others who were standing not far away who were watching them, and with the same force under their feet, they followed Karp and shot backwards towards the ships behind. Bangu and Anilu, who were standing in place, saw this, and after glancing at each other, they did not pursue but looked at Luo Xian, 
who was standing in the middle of the island and did not move. Come if you want, leave if you want, leave without leaving anything, do you really think that I have opened a good church here? In everyone's sight, Luo Xian stood in place, looking at the three kapu who were about to board the ship from a distance, his eyes bloomed with a cold glow, and a cold smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. He slowly raised the sword in his hand, and his movements were extremely slow, just like the Taiji sword practiced by the old man who loves to exercise in the park, in the eyes of everyone, it looked like a TV series where the original double speed was instantly adjusted to 0.5 times. Looking at people, everyone is anxious and uncomfortable. Distance As soon as the three of them got on the boat, they quickly ordered their subordinates to start the boat immediately, and by the way, they looked back to see if the people behind them had caught up. Crash In the hands of the well-trained navy, the battleship under Karp's feet finally started at the fastest speed, and he stood on the deck, looking at Luo Xian who was standing in the distance without moving a step. Even at this time, the solemnity in Karp's eyes still did not dissipate, but became more obvious, and even the adjutant standing beside him clearly sensed that something was wrong with his family's chief. He looked at Karp's already wrinkled face, and he couldn't help but feel fear in his heart. The adjutant withdrew his gaze from Karp's body and followed the other's gaze to the figure in the center of the island, which had become a little blurred because it was too far away. How powerful is this person? Demon Lord, Luo Xian. The hero in the navy who has been able to force Roger the One Piece into a cornered situation several times, Vice Admiral Karp is like a great enemy, and he is terrified to this extent. On the contrary, the two people on the side who had just been recruited by Karp and received the ship became a little contemptuous of Karp because of Karp's solemnity. For Luo Xian's understanding, they only stopped at the information they learned in the newspaper. Even if Kaido among the four emperors was abused before, Luo Xian showed his true strength, and they didn't see it because they came a little late. This also led to their understanding of Luo Xian's strength staying at a very low level. Even if their personalities are already good compared to others, after all, they are in this sea full of blood. How could they not have their own arrogance, from the scene of Kaido's escape before fell into their eyes, they couldn't help but look down on the four emperors a lot in their hearts. No need, Lieutenant General Karp. Seeing that the boat under their feet had sailed nearly a kilometer away from the island, the green shirt man finally couldn't help it, looked at Karp who was standing on the side raised his eyelids, and teased the other party. Karp didn't make a sound, just still looked in that direction, maintaining a high degree of vigilance, because now is not the time, these people have learned too little information, how can it be compared with the world government and navy with the strongest intelligence system on this sea? The other side. Luo Xian's sword finally swung down. Bang! The air suddenly seemed to be split and a white crack appeared. This way, after the battle with the two generals of the navy, finally came to life again, which is a completely different move from the previous one, this move represents the ultimate speed. Named, Rift Void. The white one visible to the naked eye, the split air slash broke away from the tip of Luo Xian's sword. Following a pop. Yikes. Gone. It was as if hiding in the crack in the air before and disappeared. There was no effect on the surroundings, not even any change in the surrounding airflow, as if nothing had happened before. However, they don't think about tornadoes. As long as their captain, Brother Xian, decides to make a move, it will definitely not be so ordinary and there will be no result. All of them, they quickly turned their heads to the other side, their eyes fixed on a black spot floating in the blue sea outside the island. That direction was exactly where the ship of Carp and the others was located before. Meanwhile, on the deck, seeing that he was getting farther and farther away from the island, Carp's heart began to slowly relax. After all, it's been so long, and if you don't chase after it now, it's very likely that the other party has given up. Lieutenant General Carp, or else. The adjutant standing next to Karp looked back at the two people who were sitting in the chair not far away, and after looking at Karp and preparing to look at the bustle, 
his voice was a little small and wanted to say something. Not good. Suddenly, Karp's face changed instantly, his eyebrows suddenly crouched together, and the whole person instantly became nervous. Although his sights and sounds did not clearly reflect any picture, his eyebrows hurt very much, as if he was targeted by something terrifying, and his brain issued a strong warning. After countless trials on the sea, his sights and sounds had long been trained to the limit of what he could reach now. Even the extent to which Bing Mom's second son has mastered a predictable short-lived future is only one step away. To be able to stand out in countless navies, and even get to where he is today, all thanks to his inexplicable instincts that he trusted. Saved him so many times in several dangers that he would not have lost his life. Whether it was the Rocks Pirates who destroyed the Rocks Pirates many years ago, or Roger, the One Piece King in recent years, this is the case. Similarly, the two people sitting behind him felt an inexplicable murderous intent that enveloped them. Just when they made a move. Suddenly. Yikes. A white blade of light suddenly appeared out of thin air, like a blow swung by a sword fairy, directly crossing from the upper realm. With a murderous intent, he went straight to the three of Carp. Not good. Seeing this, Carp, who had nowhere to dodge, exclaimed, quickly stretched out his fists, and crossed them on his chest. Moreover, in the process, his face was red, as if he had given up the defense of other places, desperately mobilizing the armed color of his whole body to frantically converge on his arms. The dark armed color thickly shrouded Carp's arms enough to make his arms swell in a circle, sticky to the extreme, and even a wisp of it spilled out to the outside world. You can see Carp's state at this time. Rumble. The blades of light finally collided with Carp's arms. Sting. There was almost no stalemate, and in an instant, Carp was quickly repulsed, as steady as the roots of an old tree, and the feet nailed to the deck were instantly deformed. It was hit by the light blade and shot backwards towards the rear. Suddenly, Kapu's body came to the two people behind Karp. All this seems to be fast, but it also gives time for these two masters who were summoned by Karp from the civil society to react. Zhang The man in the purple bathrobe instantly raised his cane, and a touch of black instantly spread from his arm to the foot of cold light pulled out of the cane. At the same time, the green-clothed man on the other side also raised his fist quickly, and like Carp, he hammered heavily towards the blade of light. Bang! It was accompanied by the sound of a hard object being broken. Burst! Poof! Three sounds of vomiting blood sounded one after another, and a thick smell of blood instantly filled the deck. Boom! After a huge roar sounded, Luo Xian's blow was finally caught by them. However, the cost is enormous. In this wave that was shaken by hundreds of Zhang, after the three joined hands to block Luo Xian's blow, their faces seemed to be scraped with a layer of putty, and they instantly turned miserable. The staff knife in the purple-robed man's hand was broken. Carp's hand bones were shattered, 